seen how much our lives are becoming some of us are just catching up and others have tested of this for a while but I want to encourage you every series every teaching just follow them the way they are don't try to tamper with any equation you are giving be that childlike and watch something happen in your life are we together I think it's quite arrogant for anyone to not have result and criticize anybody who has it Archbishop Benson Idahosa said um, you only have a right to criticize a person when you can do twice what he has done once our society is full of people who believe they know what they are doing and you see the trouble about this pride is that the nonsense will not show now after years of wasting your time you will find out that the Bible calls it shadow boxing but the apostle said we have not taught you cunningly devised fables the things you are learning here are not my ideas they are older than me the truths that come here represent the wisdom of God you hear me sing that song though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river there are people who have crossed this river we are not trying to invent something new there's nothing about the anointing that is new there's nothing about generational impact that is new so I want to encourage us pay attention to these things don't get so familiar and then don't listen no open up your heart don't just write don't just say amen don't just fall down don't just roll believe it receive it in your heart and be diligent be diligent to apply it listen I give you one guarantee let me tell you this and I've been saying this for many years you will never never fail if you listen to what I'm telling you believe me there are people who will think these things are just jargons and then after many years the danger is they will now have children and families yet they don't have an idea of the systems of God and they will frustrate a whole generation as a result of their ignorance please I'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and Do not take your word lightly. It is capable of changing my life. It is capable of bringing the anointing into my life. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever see It's your spirit that opens to me the treasures of your word. I will forever see your name. I will see, I will see all the wonders of your word. I will see how for joy. Last week we began a series that is aimed at giving us spiritual intelligence. Please listen. It is dangerous to live in ignorance as to the systems of the spirit. You hear me repeat some of these things again and again. Your victory and my victory in this life is not only dependent on what Christ has done. 
but dependent on our comprehending the same and applying the principles that will make it happen in our lives the disaster that occur in several lives regardless of what Christ has done is proof that the work of Christ by itself will not bring you results are we together there must be an understanding and we must know how to engage the word and um, there are a number of concepts that we discussed we took one last week which was the spirituality of life that was the first intelligence that the Lord began to walk in our minds and we investigated this very thoroughly life is spiritual how many of you were blessed last week yeah it is important for us to understand the spirituality of life life is not scientific life is not intellectual life is not emotional life is spiritual are we together and the earlier we understood spiritual things and how to navigate the path of life the earlier we came to this understanding the better the swifter our progress would manifest there are so many people who trivialize the spirituality of life and um, it is to their detriment everything about your life to this moment is spiritual so we'll continue we'll take on one just four concepts in this series that I believe that the Lord wants to burn in our hearts number two God is almighty write it down and then listen to me number one life is spiritual that's the first intelligence you need to have if you want to reign second God is almighty Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 media let's work together Deuteronomy 10 17 you will never be able to obey God listen carefully you will never be able to do the giant things that the Lord desires from you fulfill purpose and assignment if you do not have a revelation of the might of God you can have a revelation of his love you can have a revelation of his goodness but if you want to command victory in your life you need to know that God is not mighty he is all mighty deuteronomy chapter 10 okay verse 17 let me just read it from here if you have it let's read it together if you don't i'll just read alone one to read for the lord your god is God of gods a mighty and an awesome God who regarded not persons nor take it reward some version says nor take it pride it says for the Lord your God is what God of I've taught you what this means that every time one thing is compared against another is trying to show the all-surpassing excellency so he says this lord your god that you serve he's not just one of the gods he's not just one of the lords please listen this god that we serve is not just the best option of the many he is the only option available there are so many people who cannot obey god today there are so many people who cannot believe God. So many pastors, businessmen, family people are unable to receive the instructions of God. Are unable to take steps of faith. Not because they cannot read their Bibles. They do not know how mighty and how great God is. One of the things that you must burn in your spirit as you begin your journey to greatness is to know that God is mighty mighty Savior He can move the mountains listen to this song my God is mighty to save He is mighty to save forever 
is the author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. There is nothing the Lord will ask me to do that I will be afraid of. No. I have caught a revelation of how mighty He is. The reason why many people cannot obey God is not because they are disobedient. They do not know that He is mighty. Listen. Look at this. Come Sam. If, if I tell Sam I will buy you a car tomorrow, he will not just laugh. The first thing Sam will do is to look at me and evaluate me, my capacity financially, based on whatever information he has at his disposal. Is that true? So Sam will look at me. If Sam does not know me, he will go and ask someone who knows me. Is this guy wealthy enough to be able to buy you a car at will? If he receives a testimony of my ability, Sam will now stand and say, I can believe you. Is that true? If I, if I say right now, everyone in Koinonia, just be listening to me, welfare department, go and buy minerals, just pass it around. You will never look and say, Apostle, don't deceive us. How much is minerals? Are we together? So it's easy to believe me because subconsciously you have an understanding that I am able. Now if I say everybody just sit down, we are going to pass car keys around. You will say amen. But what you mean is the prophecy for car keys. Because you look around and imagine. So when God says I will bless you, your understanding of him will judge what he has said. And you say Lord, I trust you but it's well. I, you have a track record of fooling men. God is almighty so God can speak to you and say son do this do that let me tell you something God never gives you instructions based on your ability he speaks to you as though he's talking to himself so don't be surprised to hear how how challenging his instructions will come when God speaks to you he speaks to himself so he's not going to degrade his standards just because your mind is trying to comprehend him are we together? It's up to you by the ministry of the word and the spirit to rise in understanding and get to a point where you will count him faithful. That was the testimony of Abraham. The Bible says Abraham, although he was an hundred years, he counted God faithful. And so he wavered not at his faith through unbelief. One day God will stand up and say, son, it's time to build a big cathedral. Son, it's time to do this. I would be stupid to stand and say, God, don't, don't disappoint me. No. No. I have made promises to people as a man. And I've seen how they just rejoiced. Oh, I will give you ten naira. I will help you to pay your school fees. And they jump. I've not given them any money. Didn't give them any check. They just started jumping around. What if I change my mind? You don't think I will, so you are happy. Our unbelief is proof we do not know God is Almighty. So when He told you you will marry, you are still asking Him questions. Lord, can't you just give me date and let two of us rest? <laughs> I will bless you and you will prosper. Oh God, when? When? Do you know? Do you know worry is a sign of lack of faith? Worry, believe me when I tell you this, it's an uncomfortable truth. Worry is a sign of lack of faith. No. When he is in charge, when you are in charge with him, there is no reason, no reason, no reason. This is the revelation that is responsible for confidence. When you see people move around, it's not as if there is a charm in their pocket. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able. Looking at the great things that God has done today. Here now is not six years. It's just koinonia that is six years. The meeting here. But even at this, it is still a humbling experience. Watching the things that God has done by his grace. Seeing the many things. Seeing his word come to pass. Do you believe Him? Do you truly believe God? 
don't tell me you believe God until you know that He is mighty. Not just that He is mighty, He is willing to hold your hands. When a man is willing to help you, and you know that person has capacity to help you, you trust him. The word trust is from the word bata. It's best described, Pastor Alpha's son is not even considering whether his father's hand is tired. He's sitting happily and praying while the father takes responsibility for bringing the child here. It's called trust. The child has had a track record in his little life that my father loves me, but my father is also strong. Strong enough. And so he can afford to move around. Not minding whether the father is uncomfortable or not. Did God ever tell you he's tired of holding you? Did God ever tell you he, he needed assistance? His hand was paining him. God is not Moses. The keeper of Israel. The Bible says he neither sleeps. What kind of a thing is that? You don't sleep. Nor slumber. The Bible says there is no searching of his understanding. There's too much unbelief. There are very few people that believe God. You see it in their lives. Although they claim they trust him. But the, 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 the way we act shows we don't trust him. I believe. That's the song. He's able. He's able. He's able to bless you. He's able to keep you. He's able to bring his word to pass in your life. God is almighty. He's not going to borrow power from someone else and return it. No. He didn't store the power somewhere else. He's not signing like a church, like you go to the bank and plead with them to do a transfer. No. He's almighty. No man voted him into power. Listen, he doesn't store his anointing somewhere and he's insecure if they will take it. The Bible says, once have I spoken, twice have you heard, uh -huh, help me, that all, 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 he never said he's the only one who can use it, but he said it belongs to him alone. Witches can use it by certain manipulations of the laws of the spirit. But hear me, brothers and sisters, all power, the power to make wealth, the power for favor, the power for increase, the power for breakthrough, the power for children, the power that swallows up challenges, that power belongs to God. Know this. Listen, let me tell you. Ask anyone who knows me. I thank God I've taught you about the gift of men. I've taught you about the ministry of men. But God cursed the eye. The day I will leave God to put my eye in a mortal man. Believing that he's the one who will help me. Look, in my little life I have seen the inconsistencies of men. It is foolish for me to sit down and tie my destiny to the word of a man. No sir. No sir. No sir. I judge him faithful. I can tell you I want to help you and get angry tomorrow and say, Pastor Alpha, you offended me. I will punish you. I won't help you again. That's a man for you. I can say I want to help you, but me too, I was expecting help from someone, from somebody. How powerless that can be. You are standing in the middle of help to help. But there's no helper of God. He checked around and nobody was greater than him, so he swore by his name. That by these two immutable things, it is impossible. Listen, I'm speaking to someone here. You better believe God and say, Lord, if you spoke to me about your, my destiny, let's go. I believe. I like Joshua and Caleb. He said, let us go up at once. Look at David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? The, 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 this, all this fear about our lives fear about the future fear about ministry will I be rich will I marry will I have children how many will my pregnancy stay will I die will a plane crash will a car jam me all those things are resolved hear me 
Will crowds come for my meeting? What if they get angry one day and don't like me again? Those thoughts are a product of a lack of knowledge about how mighty God is. I sing that song again. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. He has conquered the grave. Savior. talk like this I, I know what some of you are thinking when you hear people talk like this you just say they are lucky I mean you have food to eat you have this thing they kept in front as though we were born like that let me tell you something very few people in this life even historically were ever born with any privilege it takes an understanding I remember clearly when the Lord would speak to me in the secret no results no results but i believe him i remember when he told me he would anoint me and he would do great things i remember when he began to give the blueprint of eni the blueprint of i remember those little instructions he gave on our way to crusade grounds hoping the world will work let me tell you something Jimmy. come come let me tease this guy small i love him he's my friend you see, when we started out, let me tell you something. That time, it wasn't like a crowd like this. There were few people. Now, I remember clearly, I told them that when we went to the crusade ground, we were going to meet all kinds of people. Blind, sick, and all of that. And I think he thought we were joking. And we had already planned that. That time, everybody was a minister. It wasn't like you are in welfare, you don't... Mm -mm. So when it was time to pray, you would just choose at random. You didn't have the privilege to know what was wrong until you stood in front of the person. Are we together now? And I remember very clearly, Ejimi then and Jakes. When I started saying all those things, Ejimi got troubled one time and he said, Come on, let's, let's really find out. Are we going to, how, you know, trying to find out, I hope this anointing works. I hope those devils are going to be cast out. I remember... I, I hope you can remember. I remember one of the, the first day of the crusade. Two of our ladies, they now went to meet a woman. You remember the story? They went to meet a woman who was deaf and dumb. You know, they came with all the zeal, had received impartation. We had fasted our lives. I mean, we're looking like skeletons. And then the ladies now laid hands, you know, oh God, you spoke to Joshua Selman. And I'm telling you, that woman was just looking like this. No miracle no healing it was so embarrassing the ladies tried how many of you know that when you try you go around and go around nothing happens i remember one person a jimmy i think it was a jimmy that wanted to minister to a young boy and the boy looked at him and said can you see that tree sir he said we have tight people on it he said he can go and call what did he say he wants to go to the market and call the other people that tight so <laughs> yes a very small child i remember the shock on a jimmy's face Listen, we didn't look like much then, but we believed him. The third day of the crusade, the deaf and dumb woman spoke, her ears opened. Remember, the first day nothing happened, it was so embarrassing, so embarrassing for the ladies. They came and met me, I said, don't worry, try it, do it again, your faith. And then on the third day, I just got angry. I said, okay, you people have tried. Look, this woman, let's deal with this thing before these villagers kill us here. See, you know why I'm telling you this and why I called him? It was faith. I remember while we were preparing for the crusade, he took his computer, his personal computer. He was the only one who had a computer then, not a laptop. A big screen computer. He took everything and put it on sale. 
to carry all the money and supply for the crusade. These are hidden stories that you may never, never know. Never know. I dedicated my scholarship 100%, 100%, 100% for the crusade. Sacrifices. Why? Because we knew God was mighty. At a point, we didn't have the money to pay where we lodged people. As at that morning, we were in trouble. So we went to greet the king. When we went to greet the king, we exchanged pleasantries, greeted him in the palace, and then prayed for him. We had a session with the pastors, a pastor's conference. It was a wonderful time. People sold some seeds, plus the seed the king sent. That was how we gathered the money. Listen, there was no assurance. No uncle, no auntie, no partner, but God. Everybody shout, but God. Thank you, Jimmy. I love you. God bless you. But God, when you bring God into the equation, the calculation changes. You have to know that. I have fainted, the Bible says, but God. But God. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been our help, now may Israel say, if the Lord had not been our help. Listen, every other thing should happen to you but God. I'm prophesying to somebody. The shame should come but God. The interceptor. Every other thing should come but God. The trouble should come but God. When you add God to the equation, the calculation changes. God is not a man that he should lie Nor the son of man that he should repent One of the mysteries that are responsible for fearsome results Responsible for the strange breakthrough in the lives of men Is absolute trust in God Based on an understanding of who he is He says be strong in the Lord And in the power of his might the revelation that he is mighty be strong let your stability be upon that I know I do not have the rent but God is faithful I don't know how it will happen but one thing I know is this God will help me he said I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help he says my help cometh from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth apostle my father is dead I understand but God is still alive apostle my mother is dead my sisters have vowed that because I became a Christian no sponsor apostle there is there is no helper no there is a helper He's the one who can help men. Look, when God decides to come into your life and help you, you will be scared at the result. There is something called the help of men. We are products. Ebenezer, thus far, has the Lord helped. He says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. There are many people who remove God out of the equation of their lives. So they look at you and say, but I'm more intelligent than you. Why is your life making progress? Because I, I kept, I didn't add God. I put him in front of me. There are many arrogant people believing they, they do every calculation by themselves. Then they say, God, where are you? Just come and join the queue. Some of us have learned. We put God in front and we foolishly follow. Foolishly follow. If he moves this way, wherever we are, we turn back and say, God, let's keep going. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what will happen? I shall fear no evil. Why? Not because I'm masculine. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then he says, thou preparest a table for me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Do you trust God? Do you believe God? It's a little teaching, but let me tell you something. Your life will be challenged by circumstances that will require your faith in God. No matter how hardworking you are, a day will come the only person you can cry to. I 
want you to glue this understanding hold his hands and never let him go you're all i want you're everything you're all have ever needed you're all guarantee to your journey of life is his presence and his word his presence and his word men will fail you not may fail will fail prepare for it the best and the most reliable of all of us will still fail brothers and sisters please listen to me so that you stop yourself from receiving heart shattering heartbreak i don't trust men no i don't I receive of their ministry but only as accredited by God I have pledged my life that anything God cannot give me let no man claim he can give me no sir no sir if God cannot lift this ministry I will be a liar together with any other person who joins me to believe no he said which of you by worrying can add one cubit one cubit one strand of hair Is God blessing us? Everybody say God is almighty. God is almighty. In, my life. in my life. Say it again. God is almighty. God is almighty. In my life. Lift your voice in one minute and say Lord I permit you to show your might. I'm tired of doubting you. I'm restraining your hand. I'm restraining your hand. Uh, there is more that you can do. There is more. There is more that you can do. I have restrained your hand through my own belief. Shedas halabariyakata. He limited God by saying, "Can God? Can God? Can God bless me in Zaria? Can He bless me in Zaria? Where are the helpers? No." The God I serve is dependable. Dependable, dependable. Hey, dependable God.
sit down but in one minute i want you to look at the mountain that has threatened god in your life and i want you to prophesy say my god can handle you lift your voice and pray say my god can handle you i may not have what it takes but my god can handle you no my god can handle you No one above him. No one above him. Thank you, Sam. He says, Great is our Lord and of great what? Power. Then he says, His understanding. This is the mystery behind his power. His understanding is infinite. Now, when you meet such a man, never leave him. His understanding is infinite. Great is our Lord and of great power he says his understanding his comprehension is infinite I trust him I believe him you know we, when Ogun we came in um, left this morning and um, while I just passed the whole Lagos about an expressway down I kept seeing different camps prayer camps belonging to different ministries and I thought for a while one day all of them were in their rooms and God came to them and said I will make you great do you believe me and they were stupid enough to say yes some could not speak English but they said yes <clears throat> had no connection some no education but they said yes it is when the results happen people start admiring you no the mission is follow me if you can have that rugged faith to follow him you will return with a testimony please i want you to burn this every time challenges overwhelm you every time you come to a point where you don't know what to do meditate on the might the might of god i like angel michael when they started fighting with lucifer over the body of Moses this is what he said he said I will not bring any railing accusation against you but this is my verdict the Lord I invoke a power greater than me the Lord rebuke you you've been trying to fight many battles on your own it will soon kill you there are some battles that will eat you up on your own there are many young men 
trying to fight the battle of finances by themselves. I'm brilliant. I'm not daft. You will soon die. The, 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 the reality of the economy will swallow you up. You better humble yourself and say, Lord, lead me. I'm not ashamed to declare that I do not know if you don't lead me. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. 6 says, and lean not on your own understanding. Right? It says, in all your ways, verse 6 now, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes. It says, fear the Lord and turn away, depart. All this, do you know why many people don't trust God? This macho man, bold face thing that they want to do to life. Listen, it's good to be bold, but we make our boast in the Lord. When you remove him out of the question, you are boasting and you must defend yourself. Indeed, we make our boast all day long, the psalmist says. Your confidence in life is not just because of your intellectual capacity. Your confidence in life is not just because you think you went to school. Go and find out how many graduates are moving around as if they are holding a tissue paper. Your confidence in life is not because you think you can speak English. Your confidence is not because you think you look good. There is one mighty, strong, strong, mighty. You threaten me, he will answer you. Hmm. You will hear my voice in that equation. He will echo. And when God speaks, everything, if you speak to me, it's only me that will respond to you. But when God speaks, everything will answer. Everything. Please tap into this understanding. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. Don't ever say they are basic. Leave God out of your life and watch the way the enemy will eat you. Leave the understanding of the almightiness of God and show me how you will ever build a house. Show me how you will ever build a ministry. Show me how you will ever build a business. It will, it will so shock you. Take God away. That is a, a, a mountain that cannot be surmounted. But bring him into the equation. And he will cause it to tremble before you. Now the thing is men don't see him. They see only you. So they think you are the one doing it alone. It's up to you to be smart enough to keep his presence by being an usher and pointing men back to him. And say look I know you saw only one person walking but we are two. And actually I'm only the second of the two not the first. There is one in front of me. I am a product of his wisdom. I am a product of his leadership. There is this treasure, he says, in earthen vessels, that the excellency of power might be of God, not of the vessel. Please repent from this unnecessary, vain confidence in yourself. I will do this. I am smart. The way I'm anointed, it's impossible for me to not have an anointed ministry. You are joking. Go and find out how many people see Jesus almost every day and don't have up to 10 people in their church. It's not because they are going to hell. If he does not give you these keys. He says, a man can receive nothing except it is given. If it is not given to you, you can't have it. It's impossible. What an awesome... God you are You're an awesome Awesome God What an awesome God you are You're an awesome Number three Ready? The third key. Man will always have a role to play. Man will always have a role to play in fulfilling God's word in his life. Man will always have a role to play. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence so you don't waste your time asking why things are not happening. Man will always have a role to play. Someone is being delivered already from this statement. Your role is not taking the place of... It 
just through prophecy but it controls manifestation between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass you have a role Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 man will always always the love of God is unconditional but his blessings are conditional the love of God is unconditional but his blessings are conditional here's what it says and it shall come to pass if thou shalt uh -huh, listen diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe pay attention then number two to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will do what set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee what's the condition if thou shalt hearken verse 2 just stop there if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God it didn't say if God speaks he will set you on top as powerful as his voice is it requires a partnership are we together how many believers sit down there is a very sad statement that is used especially around the north that's to mean it was so prepared by God no I believe in the sovereignty of God there are things that are written there is how God can veto in a man's life but it is not in his character to veto over everything are we together so if I'm poor it's the will of God if the ministry refuses to grow is the will of God no 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 the will of God is not hidden he has made known unto us the mystery of his will it's clear I know the thoughts that I think towards you Jeremiah 29 11 thoughts of peace and not of evil not of evil not of evil not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end that means if my life is not bringing me a future and an expected end I know that something is wrong I can't sit down stupidly say no this this has to be God no 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 I know his ways it's not a mystery I know there are challenges I know there is a fullness of affliction I know there are seasons but I also know that the times are in the hands of God he said until the word of the Lord came to him the word of the Lord tried him right but when that word came he prevailed over it in the dealings of God with man you don't suffer forever no sir understand the ways of God so that you don't sit down giving God thanks over things you should be rebuking hallelujah if the membership of koinonia begins to reduce I won't sit down and say it's the will of God he's driving wrong people that's nonsense we know that there is a spirit destroying men because it is the will of God that all men might be saved all men there's no such thing as the crowd does not matter it does the ministry of the kingdom is a ministry of multitudes when you understand your partnership you will know what is demonic you will know what is a process you will know what to give thanks for and what to cast and bind there are too many believers who just sit down and say whatever will be will be unfortunately it's what you don't like that will be are we together everybody hates me they are not nice to me say well maybe that's how my life is it will continue like that you have not sat down to say could there be the manifestation of an evil spirit in my life that is bringing this rain of bad luck I'm such a nice personality but why is it that people cannot help me when you begin to probe and look at things then the Lord will show you your own role and say this is what you have neglected this too and you will see the hand of God everyone say I have a role say it loud I have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny say it again I have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny say it one last time I always have a role to play in the fulfillment 
of God's word over my life and destiny. Never allow anybody, listen, never allow anybody indoctrinate you into believing you will sit down and cross your leg and things will happen. No, sir. Even science refuses that. Even science refuses that. Nothing moves by itself. Right? Yeah. The first law of mechanics, science people. A body remains in a state of uniform motion or a static state till an external force acts upon it. Otherwise, meaning if I leave this here and there is no force acting, it will remain there forever. Your destiny is like this object. It will remain in one place. The day God wants to change, I know my God, He will arise. You know your God, but He will not arise. You provoke His hand to arise for you. God will deliver me. You people should just keep watching. No. There is what you must do. Good master, what shall I do to be saved? That's why the man was rich. What shall I do? He knew he had a role to play. Not all God save me. That's what the other guy said on the cross. We are here. It's true. We are thieves. But what did he even say? And Jesus looked at him. The other one said, look, we are sinners. Lord, we take responsibility. Say, you, you will be with me this day in paradise. The other guy, still on the cross as a thief and a criminal, was not repentant. I'm somebody who is obsessed with a sense of responsibility. I, I detest irresponsibility of any kind. Especially spiritual irresponsibility. If my life will rise, it's up to God in partnership with my cooperation. Still on this point, I want you to write this down. Are you getting blessed tonight? Just listen to what I'm telling you and you'll be surprised to see how your life will change. Write this down. Still on that point. Three. Your path will have to be based on knowledge and understanding. Your path will have to be based on knowledge and understanding. In as much as it is important to take action, that action must be based on knowledge and understanding, not emotions, not suggestions, not guessing. You see, the thing about God is He clarifies what role you have to play. Moses, stretch forth your rod. It is say, Moses, just do whatever you want to do. I'm just there. No, stretch forth your rod. Jericho, Joshua, tell the people to go around Jericho. Specific instruction. Once, every one of the six days. And on the seventh day, they go seven times. After that, together with the priest, they raise a shout. Specific rule. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. We we'll look at two scriptures. So many people are attempting to cooperate with God. But they are doing it in ignorance. Now when you, when you walk in ignorance, you alienate yourself from the possibilities that are, that are contained in God. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Let's look at it. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Let's turn it here for time's sake. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Then it says, and with all thy getting, do what? Get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you to cook. Understanding tells you how to combine the ingredients. Wisdom tells you you have a great destiny. Understanding tells you the path to take. That's why he says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. There are similar rules, but they are not the same. A light to your path. Direction. A lamp to your feet. Guidance. A light to your path. Direction. Listen, if you come and you're looking for direction, I'll tell you, okay, go left. You're going to see two roads follow the left one turn that's direction but when i tell you let's walk together and we get to a place i say okay move with me that's guidance the word of god both guides and directs 
Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So God shows you where to go and guides you on how to go there. Make sure that you understand what to do before you start doing it. Don't just say, wow, this tight. Let okay. Since prosperity is tied to tithing and all of that, let me just tithe. You may be taking the action, but is it based on knowledge and understanding? You can frown your face and come and squeeze an envelope and stand as if you are going to stone God with money and drop it in the offering basket as though you are bribing a man and go back and find out that your heaven still remains closed. Because it is not the substance, it is the understanding. The insight is what gives life to the action. Are you seeing that now? Yeah. So you are praying for the sick and you are saying in the name of Jesus be healed. But you think it's just about speaking. So you are saying be healed, be healed, be healed. And the person is not being healed. You are still mentioning the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be anointed. The power of God will touch people right now. Everybody, you ask them to shout everything. I receive, shout Jesus, shout fire, shout water, shout. And everybody is just looking at you like a rock. I say, you are such a bunch of unbelievers here. You are, you are trying to insult the grace of God on my life. Then you start making reference to meetings. That's what people do when they don't have results. Did it not you that came in 1991? Remember that meeting? Bible says Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't bring Jesus of yesterday for us. We want to see the Jesus of today. Alive and strong. But that's what happens to people. Let your action be based on knowledge. Knowledge. Okay, what is the revelation behind tithing? Why does tithing open the heavens? Wow! Tithing is my spiritual circumcision. Tithing is my proof of obedience. Tithing is not a proof of love. Giving is a proof of love. Tithing is a proof of obedience. Tithing does not mean you love God. Tithing just means you are obedient. Because an exact figure was given to you. So I begin to study it. I see those who gave their tithes and the results that followed. And then light breaks out. And now I package my tithe with understanding. So I come and while I'm singing I'm in the worship team And I'm trusting that every time I lift up my voice People get blessed I know that it's not just a nice voice And beautiful melodies I go and begin to study What is it about music and worship And I begin to find out Ah, this is how it works Now, on the strength of that understanding When I lift a song I'm lifting that song from an understanding that understanding will allow a dimension of the grace of God to flow through that song and you find out that people become a reflection of your understanding never do things because people are doing it spend time to seek knowledge and understanding then you take an enlightened step take an enlightened step everybody is doing business to prosper you too you go and do it no what is the purpose of it Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible talks about those who are alienated. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Through ignorance. Through ignorance. Are we together? Yeah. There are people who, although they are supposed to be walking in certain realities, they exempted themselves. Through ignorance. Being alienated from the life of God. And the Bible says through ignorance. I am always passionate about a revelation of the areas where I do not know. I am not too proud to learn. I always want to know what am I doing wrongly. What, when I find knowledge that is relevant to me, I jump at it with all my heart. I know you have been taking action, but is it based on insight? Is it based on revelation? You saw people anointing themselves. You went to go and buy Goya oil. And you brought it. And all of a sudden, you opened a bottle and drank small. Rubbed small on your head. Rubbed small on your hand. Went to sleep. And the spirit sat on you ten minutes later. And he said, my God, with this oil, yes, with the oil. 
you carried your Bible and put it under your bed. And while you slept, you had the worst dream. Even the day you slept watching a film, you had a good dream. But now you put your Bible because it's not in actions. Revelation. There are too many people who don't pay attention to Revelation. Revelation. Ephesians 1.17 Paul speaking says, For this cause I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light, that you may know, come into a comprehension, come into an understanding of a reality. It is important for us to know. I like it to say in the name of Jesus, Lord, take away ignorance from my life. Say it again, take away ignorance. You know, let me tell you something. The little understanding that God has given me about certain kingdom realities, the mysteries of the kingdom, I watch how people break these laws every day and want to succeed and want to do well. I watch pastors break the laws that bring success in ministry. I watch business people break the laws that bring success in business. I watch leaders break the laws that bring uncommon results. I watch people who want the anointing break almost every law that brings it. You see, enlightenment is very powerful. Because when you are moving in darkness, you don't even know. And so you keep trying. This is not working. But I fasted 30 days. I thought at the end of 30 days an angel will appear to me and say from this day I give you a mantle. Receive it. You collect it and, and nothing happens. And yet you see how effortless certain people move in the grace and the power of God as though God owes them his presence and power. You've got to find out. It's not just in saying the power of God is moving. It's not just in saying this and that and that. No. As I passed Lagos about an expressway today, I saw the predictability of the results of the people. You know, most of those fathers of faith came from the same background. The same background. The Apostolic Church, Aladura, CAC, that background. Regardless of what they have now. So, certain foundational things were functional, regardless of what the ministry is. Crowds, Space, they got a revelation of space. They don't buy small things, they buy kilometers, not plots, and expand it. I've had the privilege to see photos of some of these ministries in some nations that are racist nations, yet they gave them land. It's a grace. Now, they may not have as much revelation as you do, but sadly, they have more results. Which do you prefer? The end of everything, brothers and sisters, is results. Hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. Not that you learn about plants, that you bear much fruit. You can learn all you can about plants, but if you cannot bear fruit, you are not glorifying the father. Your action must be based on light. And that means you must contend for light. Let me tell you how I study. I write out the areas of my life where I have seen some measure of result and I celebrate and thank God. Then I write out the areas in my life where I'm trusting God for results or greater results. And then I begin to study from the word of God and secondly from the life of those who have commendably produced results in that area. That's how you get results. That's how you get results. I'm not going to study somebody who is not working in the anointing if I want to work in the anointing. I will love the person. I will respect the, part, the fact that he is part of the body. But he has nothing to teach me about the anointing. He's not working in his life. So I will find somebody who represents the hand of God to the degree to which I desire. And humbly study to the degree to which I desire. There may be many of them, but I must find the one that reflects my expectation. Then I study. Follow them, the Bible says, who through faith and patience obtain, not are obtaining. They have obtained the promise. Hallelujah. 
Run away from ignorance. Run away from it. Start acting blindly. Don't just act emotionally. The moment you panic, blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost fire. Honestly, Holy Ghost fire. Hey, these demons you are hearing, Holy Ghost. You don't know what the fire of the Holy Ghost does. You don't even know whether it exists. You don't even know whether the blood of Jesus is there and what it should have. So you are just praying, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Blood of Jesus. It will never, I, I refuse to believe it. Then you start crying. Even you, you know you didn't believe what you said. Because at the end, you just start, stop praying and say, God, is this how you leave me? May people of confidence arise who know. You see, when you are walking by light, you will not stop regardless of the result because you know the result will show. It's like driving, right? When you are driving somewhere, you don't get tired after five minutes and say, we've not reached, let me park this car. You keep moving. Why? Because you know you will get there. When people start practicing certain things and stop, it is because they don't have a revelation that that is the key. For every door, there is a key. You have a bunch of keys in your hands. The Bible calls them the keys of the kingdom. You have to painstakingly find out which one opens which door. I can have a bunch of keys in my hands. That does not mean the doors will open. How many of you have different doors in your homes that have different keys? You can see one small and then another one big. The keys don't replace themselves. You have to know which one. There are certain padlocks, you open them in a very interesting way. There are others you can close your eyes and just shook it and turn and it opens. All in the same house. So there are things you can just come and effortlessly solve. But there are others you have to look at it with the eyes of the Spirit. Ah, this is what I do. This is what I do. And I get results. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. May the days of shadow boxing come to an end in your life. Efforts that are not done out of knowledge, efforts that are not done out of out of accuracy, you will begin to be circumspect, and every action of yours will start producing strange results in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take two more and then we'll pray. Is God speaking to you? Thank you, Jesus. Number what? Number four. Evil still exists. Write it down. Evil. The reality of darkness. The depravity. The existence of wickedness. The existence of darkness. Is a revelation that you must comprehend. If you want to walk in victory. Walk in triumph. And have spiritual intelligence. Listen. It is not only weakness. It is foolishness. To ignore the presence of evil. Evil. Still exists. First John chapter 5 verse 19. Let's turn here. Write it down and turn here. First John 5 19. Jesus, thank you. Can you play the guitar too for me, Binga? Just follow him and play. God wants to do something in this place. First John five nineteen. It says, and we know. That we are of God. And then it says, apologies for the projection issues. I'll just read from here. You listen to me carefully. And we know that we are of God. Then it says, and the whole world lieth. It didn't say receives visitation. The world is lying. Like you say, this pulpit is lying on a, a rock, a carpet. Then it says, the whole world lieth where? The wickedness. Listen, I want to give you spiritual intelligence. The condition to be a victim of any attack from the devil is that you are born. Not that you do anything wrong or right. The moment you find yourself on this side of God's kingdom, immediately there is a contention. Every human being on earth is a potential battle axe. 
Satan will not wait till you become one. He starts attacking you from birth. He knows that everyone born of a woman carries the potential to be used by God. Are we together? Yeah. Apostle, what have I done? Who did I offend? Have you heard that, that culture-driven terminology? God, this one that demons are against me. Nothing works in my life. I didn't offend anybody. You don't have to. There is a story that predates your existence. Listen to the teaching, Pulling Down Strongholds. And a number of other teachings, Warfare Series. I teach there very extensively on the reality of wickedness. Many of us trivialize it until it attacks you. No. The Bible says, Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Scripture clearly tells us that this world, living, is a warfare. Living is a warfare. I think it's Dr. Paul Enenche who says that the world is a battlefield, not a playing ground. It's a real battlefield. Just start getting blessed and watch people hate you for doing nothing. You are trying to show you have money. Who did you offend? Nobody. Lie down and sleep and let someone not be able to sleep. He wakes up and is angry. Why are you sleeping? This is the world we live in. You have a neighbor who looks at you and sees you dancing, giving glory to God. And he says, all these arrogant people, I will deal with you. That begins attacks in your life. Please, listen to me. I'm sharing, I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. I have factored in my life that every day of my life until Jesus comes, somebody somewhere hates me enough to want to see me dead. Somebody somewhere hates me enough to go. Only God knows how many people are in a herbal shrine now. Calling my name while I'm sleeping. Only God knows how many people are saying, let him have a plane crash this year. Let him have a car accident this year. So that all the mouth is making about the word of God. So that people will be discouraged. The problem is never the enemies. The problem is you. But to ignore their presence is a joke. <laughs> the psalmist, listen, Judas, one who was close to Jesus, used a kiss. A kiss is supposed to be a good thing, a sign of love. But to someone it was a sign, destroy him. Brothers and sisters, hear me. I don't mean to insult your civilization, but I'm sorry to inform you that witchcraft is real. Say it after me. Witchcraft is in everyone's village here. Everyone is in the city, is in Zaria. Somebody somewhere is looking for blood and they are hoping that your own will be the one they are finding. <laughs> you better grow up fast enough to believe what I'm telling you. The whole world lieth in wickedness. A man goes out in the morning and returns back with a sack letter. That was the happiest day of his life. But he returned back. Ask Job. Job was minding his business. And consultations were happening in the heavenlies. And all of a sudden, everything began to fail in his life. Brothers and sisters, I can look at a life and know that this life is under attack. I have seen marriages under attack. All of a sudden, love dries up between the husband and wife. For no reason. The man is angry with the wife. You ask him. Many times I counsel them. I say, sir, what exactly did your wife do? He said, apostle, I can't tell you this is exactly what she has done. But I'm tired of this woman. I have to look for another one. Then you know that hell is breaking loose. Madam, why do you hate this man? I'm tired. I've not enjoyed my marriage from the day. We've been married for 17 years. Not one day of joy. Madam, you didn't laugh on your wedding day. Not one day of joy. Not one day of joy. <laughs> Yet you see videos of happy moments when they dance together. Not one day of joy. And she's planning to leave that guy. By Jesus, for sure. A man prays for the arrival of a child. And have you seen people who look at their children and regret that they were married? Not because the child did anything. 
from the day this child came, our finance doesn't stay again. What sort of a child is this? I don't need a word of knowledge to know that your life is under attack. All I need to know is, did you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you mean business about your destiny? Then your life is a project for darkness. How can we make the word of God fail in Pastor Alpha's life? How can we make promise not become that thing? How can we frustrate the purposes of God upon Benga's life? That's the devil for you. Let me tell you something with Satan. He's a patient fellow. Don't take his patience as foolishness. He can be patient and wait for 20 years until the ministry expands enough for you to not pray again. Then he comes just like he said he would and destroy your life. Are we together? There are many of us right now. I know your life is under attack by your prayer life. I see it. You don't need a word of knowledge. I know your life is under attack by the bitterness. Things you never would conceive before are now at work in you. I see the anger and the resentment. You hate everybody for no cause. It's not you. Peter, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I look at a man and know his life is under attack. All doors of finance is closed. Then four children become sick in one day. He's coming. The thief cometh not but to steal. You always see his signature. When he comes, he leaves the traces. A family that were once happy, all of a sudden, from nowhere, you will see the lady will just come with one kind of trouble somewhere. The guy will come with one kind of trouble somewhere. The guy will start smoking. He will come and speak to his father and say, from today, I'm a man. You talk to me, I slap you. Just when he's doing that, they sack him from work. Just when he's doing that, something happens. His car packs out. Brothers and sisters, it is not a test. It is oppression. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, mysteriously, people start dying within a region. Have you seen that happen? Just like in three weeks or one month, men, fathers of people just go away. Mothers of people just go away. Brothers and sisters just go away. Just like that. Five people lose their jobs within two weeks in your house. Don't tell me it's not an attack. Someone promises you I will give you a job. Even says complete everything. You travel around the last page. Someone just wants to sign and say, what did you say your name is again? Femi? Me? I said I will help you. Call this person for me. Did I say this guy was part of them? You say, sir, we even drank minerals that day. He said, look, I can't remember drinking any minerals. Leave this place. I have seen witchcraft life in the lives of people. I have seen families under attack. No one rises. You rise beyond certain limits. The devil will not stop you. But one day something happens and it crashes you. There are ministries within certain regions that don't reach three years. Zaria is one of those places. The lifespan of any ministerial impact in this city is three years. After three years, a scandal must arise or something must arise and destroy you. If you survive three years, you are truly anointed. You see it happen. A musician comes into the city. They are inviting him to every church. They exhaust your grace in two months and dump you. They are looking for the next person. There is such evil like that. There are men of God like that. There are seasons where they are relevant. For one year, two years, they are the talk of the town. Almost every church invites them. After that, you see them walk upon the street. There are names in this nation and around the world I cannot even begin to mention. People who were inspirations, when you mention them, they represented certain dimensions. Now they are as silent as a dead body. Wickedness is real. Evil is real. One of us here showed me the picture of his father. I think it was last week. And I saw the man's legs. Like half of the leg, you could see the bones. Sorry for 
painting a graphic picture no flesh it had eaten what happened to the man he was sleeping oh went to bed at night and all of a sudden someone fired an arrow to the leg he saw it and woke up just a slight pain a slight pain started eating up when i saw the picture it was irritating i said this is your father's leg just imagine dividing my leg by half imagine the toes means you are seeing the bones that somebody's leg alive today hiv people who receive their hiv not by a bad living but from dreams are you aware do you know when the enemy rises against you do you have the discernment to know or you just sit down and say we are all like that it's just nigeria you know i've shared with you a, a story I'll, I'll, I'll share it here one time i was praying i think i was in a fast and then i was praying and I, i've shared it here a number of times my the, the ceiling just disappeared like disappeared like that and all of a sudden i saw a big creature big like as tall as this from here up the eyes alone were like the head like my head imagine two of my head that's the eyes and then the tail was like a snake imagine another animal joined to another animal the tail had life of itself it could detach and live its life independently you know how you cut a wall and then the parts are, are, are active that's how it was and then he looked at me with fierce anger and this is what he told me he said so you think you can bring the people of god into abundance that was a conversation red fiery eyes and after that the vision disappeared you think the devil is happy every time you are being transported you think the devil is happy every time you are being delivered you think the devil is happy every time you are being saved being healed you think the devil is happy with this information you are receiving that your life is being changed you think the devil is happy that now you have been taught not to cry at challenges in times of famine you should dance and rejoice you think satan is happy with that mystery so imagine how much he would try to come against me let's do something to this man imagine how you would try to come against koinonia let's do something against koinonia who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roar to the lord of lords who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the Listen, when you find out that there is a pattern of pain and tragedy, I want you to know that hell is about to break its back over you. And that is the time to arise. Before the throne, there is the cross. And you must know how to fight your way to victory. This is where spiritual laziness has cheated many of us. This is where the ministry of prayer has been absent in our life the ministry of engaging the world for victory too much carelessness and people never rise they die at the cross there they die in the grave and there is no resurrection for them hallelujah when everything in your life goes haywire please hear me i understand that here and there one aspect of your life you may be trusting god but when every area of your life is zero if you have been finding out whether it's the devil i answer your prayer now yes he is yes he is i know his signature everything cannot go wrong at once something is wrong somewhere and so it is important to acknowledge it and then you lock your door and find out what is the mystery of deliverance not what is the mystery of prosperity what why am i not getting a job no job no money 
no favor, no open doors, no anointing, no breakthrough, no help us. You are under attack. Don't wait until it kills you. You finish treating yourself now. Two weeks later, it comes back. I guarantee you, you are under attack. The moment stomach pain is getting you, your eye starts. As you are taking the last drug for eye, your ear starts. All of a sudden, you hit your leg. You are on your way going to your room. That little hit you for two weeks. There is no balm that cures it. That was not a stone. That was more than a stone. I remember one day I was praying and I was praying for someone, a particular person in this ministry. And then when I was praying, the Lord led me to pray for that person. And immediately I was praying. You know how you blow somebody on your back physically, like I stand behind you and blow. That was what I felt physically when I started praying for the person. Do you know, sincerely speaking, I had to kneel down and lay my hands. The pain was too much. And I knew that person's life was under attack. Ah! I said, my God, you have to arise and help this one. I laid hands there. No praise and worship. Let me tell you this. There are prayers that prevail. There are different kinds of tongues. There are tongues for warfare. It's not the tongues for just edifying your spirit man. You do you know it will change. Believe me. It's because you don't pray. That's why you will never get there. Just speak anything and even you, you know it didn't rise. The day you lock your door, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. You lock your door and say, I'm not going out until there is a change. I'm blasting tongues. The Spirit of God, you will feel your tongues changing. You will know this is warfare prayer. You may not know what you are saying. Your mind is not fruitful. But at the point your spirit, the anger of your situation is added to your prayer. You are not laughing, praying nonsense. You are thinking of who is calling. No. You are praying because you know that you are breaking through. And at a point, joy. Mm -hmm. One of the signs of the manifestation of the kingdom. Joy comes to you. And for reasons you cannot explain, you know that victory has been wrought. Peace comes to you. And it gives you a sign. I tell you, when you get that sign, start dancing. No power. Hear me. This is how I live my life. When I pray. Listen, let me teach you something. Hold on, please. When I pray, I don't stop until that joy comes. I don't do all this and pray for 30 minutes, one hour. If it is in five minutes, the joy comes. That's when I stop. Pray. You hold the universe. You hold every one of us. Listen, there are people here. The moment a man appears in your life, those spirits arise. The lifespan of that relationship, it will not pass two months, no matter how virtuous you are. You thought it was just because you were bad. No! The best people in your family have gone through the same thing. Please, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm giving you keys that will give you victory. Evil is real. Hear me? If you see crowds like this gathered inside and outside by the grace of God, brothers and sisters, victory was commanded in the realm of the spirit. It didn't just happen. You sit down there and allow Satan to keep blackmailing what you represent. Every time you want to bless people, people say, don't trust Benga. I'm still suspecting him. Don't you know there are spirits that plant deception? You blast them out in prayer. Someone wants to marry you. All of a sudden, a stranger arises. She does not know she's under the influence of a demon. This lady did A and B and C last year. No, sir. The moment he wants to bless you, he wants to do business with you. And a night before signing the contract, what million somebody calls him and says, Who did I hear you are doing business with? Be careful. You see that? Let me tell you, there are spirits. I told you life is spiritual. You keep watching things happen in your life, you will never rise beyond some levels. There are some of you, the moment you hold money, finances, everything will go haywire till it finishes. When it finishes, everything dies by itself. It's an attack. 
is an attack. There are times some of you have received calls from me, even in the night. You were sleeping and you just had me call you. And I say, Where are you? What are you doing? Oh, Apostle, I'm in this and that and that. All right, let's pray. Some of you have, have received calls. I just call you. I, sometimes I don't even know you. You don't ask how I got your phone number. I just call you and I say, Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, A and B. I see the numbers in dreams. And the Lord says, Call this person. There is an attack over their family. I just call you and off the phone. You don't even know what happens. Some of you, when the devil is about to prophet you, the Lord uses my face in your dreams. Here he comes, shows up. I tell you, if you see me in your dreams, start dancing. I'm not a harpalist. Believe me, it's a mystery. God used the voice of Eli to speak to Samuel. God uses a grace you honor that represents a ranking that can solve your problem. So when he shows up, he shows up with his covenant of possibilities. It's not Joshua Selman. It's the lamb, the lamb himself using the face of his servant. Listen. Don't mind people who preach nonsense around. Say men of God use charm and have a little man. Do it if it's easy to, to make charm. There are men of God I have prayed to command certain miracles in this ministry. And while I went to sleep, certain faces that I respect with respect to the dimension of the desire. Here they come, they walk up. Just like I come to you too. They come and sometimes they just speak a word. Sometimes they lay hands. When you get up, don't just laugh. You get up and receive it. This is where you miss it. You just get up and say, I saw a puzzle. And you are smiling. You missed your miracle. That's the time to dance. Shada Katai. It's done. It's over. It's done. It's over. It's done. It's over. Listen. Before this ministry entered a supernatural dimension of prosperity, I remember I was sitting, I've been praying and practicing this principle, but I knew that it, it's like there was a resistance. A resistance. And that night, I prayed my heart out as I was sleeping. All of a sudden, I was preaching somewhere in Canaan land, and Bishop Oyeriko was sitting down, David Piome was sitting down close to him. Two men I respect their voice when it comes to the aspect of kingdom wealth, territorial wealth, and they were watching me, just like supervising a student on project. I was standing on the stage, I could not stand very well, it was shaking. And afterwards, I came, and Oyeriko asked me to empty everything in my pocket on his feet. When I dropped it, he said, no, there's still some more. I put my hand, I dropped everything, and he laid hands on me. Somebody took me to a room, I opened the room, and I saw dollars, I saw pounds, I saw naira. That was the beginning. When that happened, Koinonia exploded like a charm. There are mysteries. You don't have spiritual intelligence, you will never rise. Never rise. Some of you were this close to your breakthrough, but you did not know what you saw. You thought you had a dream. Only if you dance for 10 minutes, that would have been the end of that problem. But you did not know. Help those under the anointing. You were the universe. You were January this year, I was praying and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision. And then when I was caught up in a vision, the second time I would see Papa Adeboe in an encounter, not a dream, not lying down to dream. The first one, it was a pastor's conference and then they were serving food in a tray and I was sitting and he pointed me, he said, come. And then I came, I saw pastors looking at me with anger and envy. And he said, sit down here, let's eat. I said, I can never do this. I've been trained to respect. He said, I said, sit down and let's eat. Two of us sat on the ground and we were eating. When I got up then, January, this one happened like 10 years ago. January this year. When God declared that it's a year of triumph, I had that encounter again. He finished doing something, and then I came to him, 
and I can't remember what happened. And then he, I, I have, the, I have it written down. And he looked at me and said, "Okay, I'm going to pray for you." And he started praying, and he was laying hands, and he was singing a song in Yoruba quietly, just laid hands on me, and he was singing a song. And then when he finished singing, he says, "Now, I open up the gates." You know how he's just talking. I open up the gates of influence to you. Walk in it. And he told me, Baba, like you tell somebody in Yoruba, go, you can go. I've opened the road. Brothers and sisters, this is how this is what we call encounters. You don't know it. How many encounters have you had and you missed it? Because if it is not perfected in the realm of the spirit, the same way you call somebody and shoot an arrow in the spirit and leave him quietly. Then in the physical, two weeks he's still moving alive, but he's dead. He doesn't even know he's dead. You see him and greet him. How are you? He said, in two weeks is my birthday. And you laugh at him. You killed him two weeks ago. Yet he's still walking. And one day, anything can kill him because he's already dead. Anything. That's the same way when you are blessed in the spirit. Anything can prosper you. It's not about what you do. It's about something that has entered you already. You are the universe. You are shedding it on the something about the operation of witchcraft there are only three ways witchcraft operates i will be teaching you next week and then i will teach you the last point on how to command victory but someone has learned something tonight you have been wasting breakthroughs you finish koinonia and sleep you finish your prayer and sleep and things happen in the realm of the spirit you get up and you don't permit them to happen in this realm don't you know a man must speak for things to manifest You saw your marriage, but you got up and you were shy. You were embarrassed. And you just laughed and said, ah, don't mock me. I'm not talking about these demonic things where you are moving around, no. Listen, it's not every encounter in the spirit that is demonic. Some things God is telling you, the season has come. Especially when it's, it is emphasized. Two is the number of emphasis. Three is a short, is a witness that God has decreed that it should happen. But it never happens. Never happens. Because there is no spiritual intelligence I don't waste opportunities in my life The greatest of my battles are fought in the realm of the spirit The realm of the spirit The realm of the spirit That's what happens You've not commanded victory in the realm of the spirit You are pasting posters everywhere Come for my meeting You are just wasting your money for nothing Believe me The victory Miracle service is always finished before Friday. Koinonia is always finished before Friday. You don't come and finish Koinonia here. It's risky. Risky. You don't come for miracle service and stand on stage and say, it's time to be healed. Foolishness. That's not, it doesn't happen that way. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Then it was possible for him to be slain physically. If he were not slain in the realm of the spirit, he couldn't be, be, be saved physically. It always happens first in the realm of the spirit. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. I, I feel, I feel, I feel the air of some warfare prayers. We, I, I just sense in my spirit that we need to pray some warfare prayers. Listen. In the next five minutes, I know our time is up. But in the next five minutes, I release my faith with you and I want us to pray. We are going to force doors to open it. You are not praying to edify your spirit. No. Every pending breakthrough. It has been declared. It's my season of triumph. I have seen it in dreams. The Lord has confirmed it. I should be blessed. I'm not asking. I know it. It is a season. It's a season of encounter with the anointing. I cannot remain at this level of grace. There is a dimension. I have seen it. He can be a witness. He can be a witness. Is my signal breakthrough? 
am intelligent. I will not waste the dreams. I will not waste the vision. I now understand. I now discern. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You were the people's crown. You are the top. You are the top. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You were the people's crown. two more prayer points and we are done the bible says withhold not good from thy brother when it is within thy power to do it say not to him come today come tomorrow god has it now did you hear what i said now i want you to lift your voice and say now break through now break through now break through not next week no not next miracle service now take off now take off now anointed now anointed now play
stop bad news. I stop bad news. It's not a suggestion. It's not a negotiation. You have declared it's my year of trial. I stop bad news. Lift your voice and stop it. Lift your voice and stop it. Shake it down ever closer. Tired of bad news. Tired of disappointment. I stop it. I stop it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Have respect, oh God, to the covenant. I stop bad news. If anything will happen, you will make it happen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. If you have never believed a prophetic word for any year, believe it now. Believe it now. Thanks be to God who causes us always, always to triumph. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Every vision you have seen that represents what God wants to happen in your life now, and was hijacked by any power. Katalatos kabaya, zebres kafas kela zebra kato na mayata. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I command the expectation of God for you as revealed to you. I command it to manifest now. I command it to manifest now. I command it to manifest now. Hear me. Any human agent that partnered with darkness to hijack any aspect of your destiny, let the fire of vengeance. You see, we've been praying vengeance here in the last two weeks. Just follow what God is doing. I command it that has stolen anything from your life, from your family. And brought you disaster. May the God of vengeance arise in judgment this night. May the God of vengeance arise in judgment this night. Whoever will not let you go must go for you. Whoever will not let your destiny go must go for you. I release vengeance. The fire of vengeance. The fire of vengeance. The fire of vengeance. The fire of vengeance. I declare 
and declare every power that closed your means of breakthrough in the name of Jesus I declare tonight let there be a warfare in the heavenly we deploy angels we deploy angels the angels of God we declare are they not ministering spirit sent to minister to the earth of salvation angels we release you war a good warfare release destinies release lies release favor release breakthrough in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. I decree and declare whoever is behind God's schedule for him, God planned that by now there are some realms of anointing you should have entered, some realms of breakthrough. Anyone behind schedule here, I want to push you by prophecy. Go take a path. Pay attention. There is a grace for speed. I decree in the name of Jesus upon everyone here behind schedule. In the name of Jesus, I command you, catch up now. Catch up now. New favor. Now. Someone is entering it right now. Is a realm. Is a realm. You can enter it. Take a path. No matter where you are inside out of it. All those who the word is of love. I will put the word upon your skin. Anyone the devil has found. To all the What you are receiving in the name of Jesus, Jesus. what is more than a miracle? I decree and declare receiving a new vision. Break now! Hey, don't break now! Hallelujah! Hey, don't break now! The Bible says it again and again. The anointing does not make it. Happen. I pray for you. This night as you sleep, may my God show you a sign. Your life is only in the name of Jesus. You don't have to change anything around you. God is a God of damage. 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 This is how to receive your one more prophetic word. Anything less than this will be engaged. This is how I'm hearing in my spirit, and the Lord will look at it. The will not sounds of joy. No, sounds of joy. The anointing will look for you. The anointing is like an address. Sounds of joy. Where are they, oh God? Sounds of joy. You must hear that sound. Sounds of joy. For joy is a force in the spirit. Sounds of joy. Sounds of joy. Sounds of joy. Sounds of joy. Hallelujah. Please sit down if you can for a few minutes. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Please pay attention I told you there will be impartations all through All through, all through Even while the word of God is coming When I saw the visitation God gave me in the secret place I knew he was up to something today How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth With the Holy Ghost Listen And with Power. And then the Bible says With that Holy Ghost and power He went about Doing good And healing all they that were oppressed He didn't just heal them with compassion Listen, listen, listen He didn't just heal them with desire 
he didn't just heal them with talk he healed them and did good because he was anointed you must be anointed for everything zeal is not enough results are at the mercy of the graces and the anointings that are at work in you our lives are defined listen to me brothers and sisters our possibilities in life are not defined by our backgrounds they are defined by the kinds and the dimensions of graces that are at work in us it is on the strength of this that men are different they are not different in their biological makeup they are different on the strength of what they are hosting within them this is what creates a response your environment does not respond to you physically your environment has never been disobedient what is on you controls the extent of the response of the things around you how god look at the extent to which jesus was anointed and the bible says he went doing good the measure of good he did was proportionate to the grace that was at work in him you don't do good just by desire please listen while I was leaving home to come here, my heart was so heavy because there are thousands of people gathered and thousands of others from different parts of the world following. And now I'm wondering, these people have challenges. Listen, these people have mountains. I got a text. I think there's someone here. Is it a five-year-old child or something with cancer? Right here in this place tonight. Five years. That's the woman, right? You are the woman. No, no, it's not a word of knowledge. Just sit down. They sent me a text. Look at that woman. No matter what you sing and preach, that woman has brought a child, five years old, with cancer. What did the child do? The child does not even have an opportunity to say anything. The Bible says that good that this woman wants cannot be done just with zeal and desire. Listen to me that good because there is a spirit sitting on that family and that baby it takes more than nice talk to set them free i will never be a man of god who will be a noise maker the problems of people are more than noise people need results in their lives look at that woman left adamawa because she came for an encounter right here and her father who had an accident was walking brothers and sisters hear me i repeat your possibilities are limited only only the little walk with god and my walk in the spirit i have come to the conclusion that your limitations are never a limitation caused by mountains they are limitations based on the extent of grace the kind and the dimension of grace at work in your life is what defines everything literally everything from favor to breakthrough to healing to speed regardless of what the problem is believe me when i tell you there is a dimension of grace that can solve it so our challenge is not to discuss obstacles our challenge is to contend to dimensions where every obstacle that is prevalent to man is under the jurisdiction of the grace we carry at that point you become a blessing when you love god and you love people you will stay in the secret place till you become anointed because that's the only thing you have to give people you can give people stories after this meeting now you will forget everything i've said just like you forgot what i told you during the miracle service the only thing you remembered were the prophecies i told you and the miracles you had as powerful as the teaching was last miracle service you frankly cannot remember it entered your spirit but it's hardly in your mind but you remember the pain you came with you remember the hunger you came with now we don't live and serve god just for miracles but brothers and sisters my simple teaching tonight and this is what the lord put in my spirit to share with us that miracles you receive listen listen this is you have to get this tonight the way you maximize miracles is not by experiencing them alone you must discern what those miracles mean 
because miracles are a code they are a language the voice of god is upon every miracle that he performs he is speaking something and it's important you understand what god is saying are we together now the miraculous every manifestation of the spirit of god signs wonders healings breakthrough prosperity favor open doors whatever they are you have not maximized a miracle if all you live is with the experience of it you must discern the voice of god upon that miracle and the language that he through that miracle is speaking to you that's how we are blessed by miracles every miracle is a language just like laughter just like tears these are different languages in the realm of the spirit and tonight god is using the miraculous to say three things to us number one I will say it exactly as the Lord asked me to say it. Hmm. Number one, the first language that miracles, signs and wonders, healings speak is the language of God. But the first thing God is saying through miracles is, I am not the author of sin, sickness and pain. That's the first language of God that miracles reveal. The moment you experience a miracle in your life is a language. God is saying through it that I am not the author of sin. I am not the author of sickness. And I am not the author of pain. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not. In other words, you never find him around except to do this. To steal but for to steal and to kill and to destroy but jesus made clear his manifesto he said but i am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly so when you experience a miracle in that miracle god is speaking and what he's saying number one is that by this miracle let it be confirmed to you that i'm not the author of sin I'm not the author of sickness please listen you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the cause of sicknesses you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the source of pain God through a miracle is speaking a language my son my daughter you came with a door that is closed now I have opened that door it's a message to you that I am not the author of sin of sickness and of pain two scriptures quickly mark chapter 1 please give us 38 to 45 very interesting reading mark chapter 1 i just want to put this foundation and speak the things that the lord has asked me to speak to us through his word and then we'll pray there are already miracles happening already miracles are happening mark chapter 1 38 we are reading down to 45 listen it says and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that i may preach there also for there came i forth 39 and he preached in their synagogues throughout all galilee and cast out devils did you see that next verse please and there came a leper beseeching him and kneeling down to him just like many of you have come to find out lord is this how my life will end or do you have another plan here's his reply to you he's saying he kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou will thou can make me clean in other words i know you have the ability i just need to verify your willingness and this is what jesus says 41 and jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him read on I will be thou clean. I will be thou clean. When you read from verse 45 down to 45, you will see that the man was healed. So, miracles are languages. This is what Jesus is saying through the miracle. I will. I will. You know that I am. But it's important for you to know that I will do it. You know I can make you blessed. But it's another thing for you to believe I will do it. 
the Bible says what things soever thou, des thou desire it said when thou prayest believest that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it miracles are a language James 1.17 James 1.17 I tell you the presence of God is so strong I'm just seeing a fog outside. I'm not even seeing people. That's all I'm seeing. Like a fog. Thick fog. All the overflows. That's what I'm seeing outside. And I believe that that glory is doing something in people. Hmm. No matter where you are. Whether you are sitting in the gutter on the fence on a tree. Wherever. It truly does not matter. Now I know that it's difficult to believe that because you're outside. You think you are not seeing me directly. It's not necessary. James 1 17 everyone please read one to read every good gift uh-huh and every perfect gift is from above coming anywhere so God clarifies coming down from who because there are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so God says no so so you are not confused that I just said above it comes down from the father of light in whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning he won't say this today and do this tomorrow so every miracle you will receive some of you have already received is a language you must not only experience it but you must discern the language God is saying look my son my daughter this dear family no matter how much you have cried and all of that he's telling you number one that know this because there are many of us here who are angry at god right now god you are the cause of my problems god you are the one who has not done this and that god is saying to tell you through the miracle that you will receive that he's not the author of pain he's not the author of the closed door say amen the second language that miracles speak the language of God spoken through miracles number two that I am a loving compassionate and merciful God the second language of God that's revealed through miracles is that I am a loving comma, compassionate and merciful God Matthew 35 verse 36 the love of God is a revelation that we must have listen 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 the little time I have walked with God I have been amazed I know that preachers have preached about the love of God I have also read about it but I am amazed at the love of God for me my revelation of the love of God only climaxes at the substitutionary work of Christ but there are things God has done here and now in my life that makes me know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God loves me and now I'm not just speaking about general things oh you are preaching you are standing you are not in the mortuary all those things are general things that don't give personal revelations I have seen God arise to do things in my life that I, I, I sit back sometimes and I fight tears the love of God it's a revelation that sponsors the release of power the love of God his compassion compassion is an adjective that qualifies love it, it attempts to add emotions to love when you add emotions to love it becomes compassion the expression of it revealed many times in scripture you see the Lord move with compassion Matthew 30 35 verse 36 okay we can't have it projected Matthew 35 36 sorry let me just open it here so that we'll hurry up
Oh, I think that's a mistake. I said 35. Forgive me. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John 4 19. I think I skipped scripture. I made a mistake there. Pardon me. It was a revelation of the compassion of Jesus. First John 4. Are we there? 19. Please let's read. Let's hurry up because of time. One to read everybody. We love him because he did what? Who first loved us? The Bible says God had commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners. Right? In duties in Christ died for us. We love him because so what we are giving to him as love is only a reflection of his benevolence how that he gave it to us psalms 145 i found a very interesting scripture you'd want to listen to psalm 145 8 and 9 psalms 145 8 and 9 are we there Psalms. It says, The Lord is gracious and full of what? Say it after me, full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. It says, Slow to anger. The word there is patience. The New Testament calls it long suffering. Slow to anger and of great mercy. In fact, NIV says, Rich in love rich in love the lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and of great mercy verse 9 the lord is good to how many the lord is good to he says and his tender mercies are over all his works so the condition to qualify for god's mercy is that you are created by him the moment you are god's creation you qualify powerful revelation mm. so regardless of what the cause of the sickness regardless of what the cause of the challenge is are we together now whether it was your fault whether it was carelessness it was a mistake regardless of what it is the bible says in god's economy there is a system where his mercy can work you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Do you know why we need mercy? Because there are people here the challenges that you are facing right now in your life there are some of us the challenges are self-inflicted it, it, it was it was certain carelessness that gave room to demons they advise you not to sell the house you were looking for money immediately you sold the house and now you are houseless are we together that's carelessness but the mercy of god are we together you know sometimes we feel so bad and we feel can god show me mercy and rewind the hands of time and bring me out again the mercy of god was expressed in the parable of the prodigal son the bible says the boy looked he was eating with pigs and says come the bible said he came to himself and said how many hired servants have enough to eat in my father's house and i am here you know paraphrasing eating with pigs he said i will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not even worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants the Bible says while he was afar off the moment the father saw him he ran to him put the signet ring he didn't even say stupid boy you are finally back never discuss as, as far as is recorded in scripture never discuss the only thing the father said is my son was once was lost but now he's found i prophesy to someone here those who are concluding against you because the challenges in your life were caused by you you know it was your fault 
there is still a bailout system in God's economy. It's called the mercy of God. Tonight may that mercy reach you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles are a revelation by God that He can give men a second chance again. God does not just have a second chance. As many chances as your sincerity can receive. The Bible says he's slow to anger. Slow to anger. The distance between where he is and his judgment. He slowed it down to give you room to tap into his mercy. There is no mercy in the realm of the spirit. Mercy is only in this realm. That's why you cannot pray for Satan to repent. Mercy is only a function of time And only those who walk with time Can experience his mercy So he tied mercy to the morning He says your mercies are new Every morning Every 24 hours is renewed again ah, So that he showed you yesterday Does not mean he cannot show you tomorrow God is a merciful God Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are families that are probably damaged here because of carelessness. There are many families that are in financial bankruptcy. They didn't listen when they would have listened. There are many things. We are humans. It's, saying, it's, it's a popular saying. He says to err is human. Is that true? All kinds of self-inflicted things. But tonight there is a system in God. I know you have even concluded yourself. But there is a system. After Samson's hair was taken away And they were using him to mock God in the temple They thought they blocked his eyes And the hair would never grow back again And Samson lifted up his voice to the God Who was full of compassion And all of a sudden his strength returned And the Bible says he killed more people in his death I'm speaking to someone here They have not seen speed yet Till you experience the mercy of God I know that for weeks now you've not been yourself but God is about to show you mercy and when he shows you mercy listen with mercy comes restoration naturally it's a sequence that follows don't sit down meditating on what you did wrong what you did right there is a provision for the mercy of God that's the language of a miracle so if where you were living in the world you got yourself involved with all kinds of things and then you had HIV now you are born again and you love God does God have to leave you like that to die? no sir no sir no sir every time sin was cured sickness followed if God has forgiven you your sin that is spiritual he should be able to heal HIV do you know there are too many people who believe things are not working in their life because of certain things that have happened. It's a different thing if you are a rebel and your heart is not broken and contrite because the mercy of God only follows and, and is applicable to those who have a broken and a contrite heart. Rebels never experience the mercy of God. So when your heart is broken and contrite, you are about to receive something that will change you. Hallelujah. I was supposed to go for the job interview but I stayed overnight playing games and I slept I woke up by 10 the interview was over I've missed the job now the mercy of God can still speak for you I told you mercy comes with restoration if you were supposed to be employed 3 years ago even if they employ you now it's not restoration it's just advancement God must find a way of bringing the balance of 3 years so that when they check the graph of your life they don't see where the lag was that's restoration restoration is not progress restoration is an, is an acceleration to catch up with where you would have been had the obstacle not come let's hurry up number three the third language that miracles speak signs and wonders now this is very important the third thing God is speaking tonight and always through miracles is I desire that you trust me enough to follow me wholly. When God brings miracles, He reveals His sovereignty, not just His love. 
so he tells you that i am a god of love and compassion but i am also mighty i calm the sea i calm your life i am worthy of your trust i am worthy of your handing over your entire life to me listen i am convinced that any man who is afraid of handing over the management of his life now listen it's a very different ball game to be born again and it's another ball game entirely to hand over the management of your life to god there are many people who are born again you are praying in tongues but you have not handed over the management of your life to god come and learn of me he says take upon me he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light when it is killing you it's not of god hallelujah is god dependable enough for you to suck to hand over your whole marriage to him is god dependable enough for you to hand over your finances to him and his ways is god dependable enough for you to hand over your life with him do you know when you see people carry talisman carry charm carry arrow and all these things they move around with to aid protection do you know what they are saying even that act of stupidity is also a language god i don't trust you enough to depend on you mm. esther said if i perish So when you see the sovereignty of God quarter to shame He steps in for you It's a language He's saying I am that mighty And as a result Hand over everything You know My concept of born again Is not that you recited um, The Lord's prayer Salvation prayer Reciting salvation prayer for me Is not born again enough You are born again When I look at your life experientially and I see the influence of the government of the kingdom in every aspect of your life. You give God academics and leave finances, you are not born again. You are a rebel in that area. Do you know Satan only attacks the area that is not covered by the kingdom of God? He cannot attack an area that is covered by the kingdom of God because you are numb to it. Your job is to apply the principles of the kingdom and leave God with the responsibility of manifesting His word. Our fears, our insecurities make us to come out of alignment. So when Jesus came, His message was repent. Go back. You've trusted God concerning every other thing. When you thought the carryover will come, you saw it change. Now for job, you are trying to maneuver your ways. There is somebody somewhere and you keep disturbing him. Hundred missed calls. His foolishness is a sign that you do not depend on God. Tonight I'm encouraging you. By the miracles that God will do in this place. He's speaking to you and saying, can you not see that my life, your life is safer with me than it is with you. Are we together? Protection. People are afraid of dying. Listen. The world is so vulnerable, you don't have to be outside to die. People have sat down inside, about to take the first spoon of food, and they collapse and die. Mysteriously. There are arrows that fly by day. You can only rebuke the ones you know. What of the ones you don't know? The safest place to be is under... The Bible says, He that dwells. In the secret place of the Most High, it says, shall abide under the shadow of His wings. Like a hen covers the children. A hen, may, you can slaughter chicken, but not when children are under it. You can catch it when it's roaming around. But when a real responsible hen has the children under it, you come near there, you lose your eyes for it. Have you seen a chicken that violent? Yeah. So God is a merciful God to you But wait and see what he is To those who want to trouble you That's why the psalmist said How, He said many are they that trouble me Many are they that says where is your help He said but thou O Lord You are a what? Shield First God will shield you so that you calm down And then now turn and deal with anybody Who is causing him in your life That's what will happen to somebody I'm not motivating you Believe me, if you believe in God, 
and you believe in miracles most people who believe in miracles have not settled down to discern what they mean so all of a sudden if in a few minutes now the pain suddenly disappears you don't just go back saying wow this this koinonia is powerful no you have experienced the miracle but you are not blessed by it because you have not discerned the language that comes from it if god suddenly by tomorrow someone calls you and gives you a land opens up a door for you untold wealth within one week if you just get excited and say finally i am rich you have experienced the miracle but you have not discerned it you must know that god is speaking here and saying it is my might that one is not love you are seeing that one is my might i can compress time and bring your desire of one year to one week can you depend on me that's why you see most people pastor jakes don't discern miracles that's why they keep receiving miracles and their spiritual life keeps going down because they are receiving miracles and not discerning from it i have learned from every dealing of god in my life a dimension of him like mike said it so powerfully there are names god wants you to know not the ones you've read in the bible he uses miracles to write his names upon your life so that by the time you are 30 years you are 40 years you have known certain names of god enough for you to build a foundation so that no nonsense will just come around and shake you if you have been born again for a while and you shake and fidget over everything there are some names of god you don't know are we together listen if by the grace of god let me just give you an analogy for many years we have been transporting people the bus services so you know by experience and by revelation that we are kind-hearted and we love you is that true now if on your way coming for koinonia sir somebody quickly rumors to you and says after service this night the way i've been feeling or apostle told me or i had a vision or i had a dream that we are not going to use bus this night the experience you have had with me will make you to trivialize that nonsense so when satan speaks and you pay attention it's because there is something about god you don't know so he will look at you and say hey, you better just be laying hands on your stomach because barrenness for sure is your own you are seeing it with everybody and at first he say no it's not my portion and then every day your whole prayer time you are laying hands on your and say oh god no i can't be barren i can't be barren it's no longer prayer you are only spiritualizing unbelief that one is not prayer again Do you know there are many things we call prayer that is not prayer that you are using prayer language does not mean it's prayer it's simply a spiritual way of communicating unbelief that's why it doesn't get answered to you you are consoling yourself but when it rises up is you are not asking god for anything you think you are asking oh god are you not the one who said this in the realm of the spirit what you are saying is god mercy i'm afraid so the only thing you get back is is mercy not answer because you thought you were requesting but god is listening to the voice of your spirit you are you are ramp you are wrapping scriptures just to vent fear and god is saying if you trusted me you would have been quiet by now imagine that you are still praying for this chair to hold you by now pastor alpha and mike you are just moving and then later i tap us out and say and you stop praying let's pray lord in the name of jesus gravity is still working i i know this is that is that are you are you a, an intelligent physics student no that there is a level to which we understand but there is a level to which it's unbelief and somebody will now ask you and say what you need is not prayer what you need is revelation and an encounter an experience that makes this real so someone will say jump up and match it when you match it and it does not fall do you know sometimes god does not call, cause trouble but he gives you strength by exposing you to your fears and then you find out that they didn't do you anything you thought you will die but you are still standing and so you laugh at what made you cry yesterday that's how we grow in the spirit doctor's report said two weeks you are still five years and you've not taken panadol they said this hepatitis is, is just at best so if you reach 21 glory to god you are now 45 you were not thinking about it you have you reached 45 because you forgot about it now that you have started remembering you are wondering whether you reach 48 you will reach even 100 no. see i have constructed my belief system such that believe me when i tell you there are some things that cannot enter my mind again 
If I pray with you, you'll be very frustrated. Because while you are rapping and ranting requests and say, Oh God, Baba, this and that and that. There are certain things you know about God that gives you rest. That's why I say, Come unto me. You have been moving, you are going on to anybody. You are moving, he said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary. What wearied you? Running around like a roaring lion. That's the spirit of Satan that makes people. God, he, listen, listen. It's Satan that moves around like a roaring lion. God only moves his eyes, not his body. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run it to and fro. Satan has to physically run up and down. And you are down joining him. So he said, come unto me. This running around has wearied you. I will give you rest. Have you seen somebody rest? When you say rest in peace, is the person moving around? Have you seen somebody dancing and you are about to bury him? You are wicked. You bury people who are quiet. Be still. Stillness. Stability in the spirit is a great sign of faith. Turn and prophesy to someone and say, be still. Say your running around will not bring you the, the, problem, the answer. Say it. Say be still. Your phone calls. Go, say it. Your phone calls. Text messages. And running around. Will not bring you the answer. Be still. Your lack of sleep. Continue. Will not bring you the answer. Discussing your problems with everybody will not bring you the answer beating your wife whether you are married or not say it say beating your husband too will not solve the problem harassing your children will not solve the problem committing suicide will take you to hell look do you know People who claim they don't have energy, I'm surprised that they are wasting the remaining one doing useless things instead of them to go to the presence of God and die there and say, Lord, this thing, whether or not it is answered, I'm already in trouble. There's no other trouble to enter. So let me stay in your presence and die there. There is a way you put pressure on the integrity of God. When He knows He's the last card truly in your life, you'll be surprised to see what He will do. Many of us have options. You must follow him. He said, if you will not believe me, believe me for the work's sake. Believe that I am in my father and we are one. There is a oneness in us. I handed responsibility to my father and I submitted to his authority. He gave me rest. Brothers and sisters, any miracle that does not draw you closer to Jesus listen even if that miracle was produced by the power of God if it does not draw you closer to Jesus you have not really received the real miracle you have received the experience but you have not discerned it to make you grow I am surprised that the more people receive miracles they now run away from God when Zacchaeus had a miracle he dropped down from the tree gave up his, his um, tax collecting work and immediately walked with Jesus when Peter saw the miracle of the fish he said go away from me I'm a sinner and Jesus said no come 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 and sit down let's eat together miracles draw people you are a drunkard you don't spend one hour without taking a bottle of of Gouda you have been sitting here for hours now the urge is not there that's a miracle the miracle is not so that immediately after koinonia you quickly go back and take one more before you sleep you have frustrated the grace of god you know let me tell you something by god's grace i believe in miracles but i also believe the message that miracles give we don't discern the languages we only gyrate in the experiences that's why satan corrupts when a native doctor gives you a miracle he, he attaches a message to it he says by this miracle know that this small thing this horn you are seeing is powerful and when you receive that miracle you will go back to the man again there is nobody who runs away from results when you receive results in an area you stay there if the result is consistent you camp there 
so that you visit God's presence, receive a miracle and run away and only go back now that you have acknowledged that he's the only one who can produce the miracle, stay there tell your neighbor, stay with God please prophesy, say stay with God there are people here as they are saying stay with God, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you because I don't care whether you are born again or not the kingdom is not a priority to you you probably just came here because the sickness or the challenge or the bills or whatever is eating you up yes God will touch you but if all you get tonight is prophecy so that you can build a house you have not discerned it, miracles genuine miracles produced by the spirit to draw men to God so when you see the favor it brings tears in your eyes and you say Lord I will walk with you forever I've tried every other thing but I've settled with you say Amen the last message that miracles produce there are many more but let me just stop here oh scripture for the third point John 10 30 to 38 just write it and you go and read it later our time is gone John 10 30 to 38 the next point what God is saying tonight and what he will say always with genuine miracles listen this is what he's saying my servant is my representative he represents my voice to you hear him the last message that miracles produce is that God is speaking to you that if I can come to you and prophesy to you if you can get healed if you can get blessed God is saying something He's saying the man you are seeing the ministry you are part of are a representation of my program on earth here and now so have the confidence to not just listen to me listen to them miracles are a language that demonstrate that the man speaking to you the one with whom God will use to produce the miracles I know people say in meetings we have not come to see any man we came to see Jesus that's true but listen to what father Abraham told Lazarus he said they have he said let somebody come you know return from the grave and he said no they have the law and the prophets they should listen to them in other words there are people that represent what the out of body experience would have given them listen to them a man who can tap from an unseen realm and bring an anointing to touch your life it will be stupid for you to believe that he's not at, in touch with God so if he tells you Jesus Christ wants a relationship with you and you don't listen to that one you have not discerned the miracle are we together now if I come and stand on stage here and I'm just standing and you are falling and shouting and receiving an impartation that is a message it's not just it's not about really about a man but it's the fact that god is speaking and he has found a vessel he's speaking with so you listen to the man speak as though you are listening to god forget about the imperfections that will come you are not alone the holy ghost is there to see through it what if i listen to everything and i fail no how did they write the bible How did they write the Bible? All kinds of people wrote the Bible. Temperous people. Bad people. But in the midst of it, the purposes of God were still preserved. Holy men wrote. Regardless of their imperfections. Let me tell you. There is a degree to which no matter how much flesh you have. God will veto it to make sure certain things will pass to these people with the level of purity that they need. Whether it is intellectual limitation. Hear me whether it is spiritual limitation that is why a donkey can talk do you know what it takes for a donkey to learn english when men of god pray for utterance utterance is not oratory utterance is the ability of the holy spirit to superimpose your flesh and grant that your communication be full of light that it be accurate and with minimal if any corruption as it gets into the heart of the receptors that's utterance utterance is not the ability to speak english that's oratory utterance is a spiritual thing the capacity to communicate realities such that regardless the spiritual level of the listeners they will receive that one you have to pray for it 
you go to school to get oratory but you stay with the spirit to get utterance hallelujah Hebrews chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 the Bible talks about the man Jesus he said he was approved Hebrews 2 verse 4 can you give it to us quickly God also bearing witness he talked about the man Jesus and how that it appeared unto certain people and those people now haven't commissioned them to go and represent him the Bible says God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will so God confirmed their word you may doubt their English but you may not doubt the result the same way some of you will not doubt what you are about to experience you know I watch people receive miracles and sometimes I know even them they don't agree have you seen somebody falling under the anointing and he's shocked as he's going down what's happening to me but he's still going down anyway that's the same way your life will change you will sit down and not know what is happening to you you will just walk out of this place and my God like the chains of Peter fell you will see chains just fall and leave you he says God bearing them witness so what are miracles instruments of witness God validates the fact that this person is my servant listen to him he has been approved like you have NAVDAC registration number on water now there are those who produce water at the back of their house and don't have NAVDAC registration number when they catch them you find them whether they are sincere or not they were not approved we're about to pray Isaiah 44 verse 25 and 26 two scriptures and then we'll begin to pray that staring is happening again Isaiah 44 25 to 26 listen talking about God now the God that frustrated the tokens of the liars and naked diviners mad the Bible says he turned wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish listen to what he does 26 that's what he does to them but this is what he does to his servants that confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers what is the confirmation of the word you are blessed if it happens it's a confirmation what is performing the counsel be healed and immediately you are healed that's a performance that's creation like a woman is in her, her father is in Adamawa and she's here in Zaria and a word comes and all of a sudden she goes back and the man who had an accident now is walking he performed the counsel so if there is no proof in your life among the many variables you have to check is whether you are approved they, no 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 you can be a servant of God but not yet be approved being called does not ever mean being approved approved means you have been released to begin to dispense the realities of the kingdom many people think the opposite of being approved is being fake no the opposite of being approved is being real but unapproved there are many unapproved genuine servants of God unapproved genuine servants of God in ministry for many years as Isaiah he was prophesying but he was not approved 6 verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died Isaiah saw the Lord a call was taken and given to him is that true he said here am I send me God didn't say I'm already sending you that was when his ministry started you can be doing a lot of things the opposite of being approved get this the opposite of being approved is not being fake fake is in another category you can be real yet not accredited like you are a student but you don't have a certificate yet you are in school you are intelligent you may even be on IT you may even be doing projects but it doesn't make you a graduate there is a certificate do you have it many people just stand and say the bible says this sign shall follow i am a believer be healed we keep mocking ourselves with nonsense because when you read the bible intellectually you will get 
not uh, Sophia, human wisdom. You must read it from the Spirit. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. He had told them many times. Do you know before he said tarry ye? He had sent them one time. He said go two by two. What happened to the power that is now saying tarry until ye be endued? What happened to the power that they came back blind? I saw. He gave them his name. They were not yet approved. They only went in his name. That's why I said, don't rejoice that miracles you didn't do anything there. If I tell you the dynamics of the result, you didn't participate. The most important thing is that you must be a part of this family. Your names be written in heaven. Approved. When you are approved, it's like a register in the realm of the spirit. So when God is paying approved servants, you receive your share. You are not receiving salary, find out whether you are employed. That's why the Bible says, those he called, he glory, he, um, those he predestined, he called. But he has not glorified them yet. Those he called, after a season of building, he now glorified them. If a man will punch himself, that man will be a vessel unto honor. He can stop there as a vessel unto honor. Comma, meet for the master's use. Believe me, many approved singers not mistrust in the spirit they sing and twist their tongue and they think the secret is in minor songs and you sing all kinds of minor songs you think the secret is in clashing cymbal because Joshua Simon is doing it you harass every drummer to clash every cymbal no show me the certificate let no one trouble me Paul says for I bear there is a batch demon said Jesus I know we see his certificate a man approved of God approved of God approved of God Paul the apostle was approved of God let me tell you every true servant of God who has worked with God and has a dealing with God is approved and when he's approved immediately whether you are called into the ministry of helps there must be a sign from heaven when Jesus was born he was approved of God there was a sign a star arose on the day of Pentecost that experience was approved of God there was a sign every time there is approval there is, there is a sign where is your own it could mean you are not even in the school completely or you can be in the kingdom and not be in the school of the spirit there are two different things like there are people in ABU some are selling rice some are, uh, some have some some are selling um things you are inside abu but you are not in any faculty so you can be in the kingdom but not in the school of the spirit only those in the school of the spirit access power and command the grace that will keep nations still i like you to pray in one minute and say lord i'm in your school oh nothing is taking me out of here i'm not only in the kingdom i'm in the school of the spirit the place where men are made with power the place where men access the presence of God superior dimensions of spiritual reality pray in one minute thank you father for being in the kingdom I gave my heart to you and I'm there but Lord I walk with you consciously in obedience he that endures to the end he shall be given a crown and a white stone there are rewards not everything in the kingdom is a gift brothers and sisters there are rewards that's why there are diversities of results if there are no rewards everything will be possible for everybody at the same time because the Lord is rich unto all why are there disparity in results is disparities of trainings just like you have a professor you have a master's holder you have an undergraduate you have a secondary school certificate holder different seasons that provide different accesses to graces lift your voice and pray hallelujah Second Corinthians will rise up to begin to pray now. God will do a quick work. Second Corinthians 12 verse 12. 
by this little teaching I, I like you to desire more in God more in God greater grace a time will come your talk will weary people they will be tired of you when you speak and there are results your words become heavy they look like the word of God 2 Corinthians 12, 12 Paul was speaking about his credentials you used to know me as a scribe but I had an encounter I was in the wilderness of Arabia for over 19 years he was in the kingdom but he was in the wilderness of Arabia after 19 solid years of stringent building with the Lord a testament came truly the signs of an apostle there are signs called the signs of an apostle the sign is not the name I am Apostle Jeffrey I am Apostle Joshua Selman no I am Pastor this I am Reverend this the word apostle there does not just mean apostle like an office the sign of an approved and a sent one when Navdal approves something no matter what the drink is there is something they stamp there no matter what it is check somewhere even if there is no space they create space and stamp it it is based on this brothers and sisters that we can gather people like this by grace and say come this is not the issue of my personal faith this is the issue of a NAFTA number koinonia is registered this is like you have jam center there is jam center that is for crooks when people go there they don't even write exams is that true you pay money but there's what they call uh, what they call it approved centers when you go there you sit down there are tables they have gone through a, tra a training by the grace of god by the election of grace and by our determination to take advantage of it truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you all in what was the first thing the first sign is not miracles the patience to endure till you access it the first sign of an apostle a sent one it's not signs and wonders many foolish people deceive themselves the first sign is patience for many years you will walk with God and not see one result the first sign is patience you will prophesy nothing will happen you will pray for the sick nothing will happen but you are still in the school so patience then in signs notice the progression signs trickles then it now moves to the next realm wonders then the apex of your apostolic ministry is called mighty works that one is not personal miracle that is territories elijah stands and said there shall be no rain look at the progression these four levels if you don't enter this level in ministry you will never be fulfilled there are people this where they are patience 10 years they will not move others signs here and there somebody is testifying you, you are let me tell you how you know it's a sign you are not even sure whether it came from you they just say pastor prayed for me and sincerely you cannot tell when there is no predictability a sign shows direction that's not it if you see a sign to abu that sign is not abu it's pointing you there wonders a realm of predictable results you begin to see certain things and then before you reach the apex he called it mighty works the only other person that title was used for was jesus he said what wisdom is this that such mighty works were wrought this is where we are going where you shift systems so don't just say i'm born again i will enter here you are joking it's the same way saying i have admission i'm a first class student they gave you admission you walk your way to first class the options are there he gave on to one five two one according to their several ability not his desire for them several things will be happening tonight brothers and sisters i want you to trust three things tonight as we pray one listen 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 number one believe in your faith in god and God's faith in you. Two, listen. Believe in the covenant that we have with God. I told you that our work with God is based on relationship, but kingdom advancement is based on covenant. 
there are covenants that men have with God. Let me tell you, listen. I can take one bottle of beer here and come up and minister. I will minister by the covenant. My relationship with God is something He will deal with me with later on. But as far as the covenant of using my life, my grace and koinonia to minister, not even me can stop it. That's why when Elijah died, the covenant was still on. His bones, Elisha, his bones still raised the dead. Because the grace on him was authorized to do that. Not whether he was living or dead. That's the basis of mantle transfer. That's the correct basis of mantle transfer. That when you touch a man or shake a man, you are going not with a material. You are carrying a covenant to your home. God stops dealing with you now based on you. It is on that basis we can say the God of peace. When you say the God of Isaac, there's something about God and Isaac that makes him hear you. The God of Jacob, there's another thing. I don't encourage people to say the God of Joshua, Selman and this, but brothers and sisters, there are covenants. There are men, God, enter the covenant with them like Joshua. No man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He didn't say where you do well. That's the covenant. This house you see is a mystery of covenants covenants here and there that's the reason why we make certain bold claims i truly believe that if all i use is just my personal faith i will be afraid i have eyes i'm a human being you can see cases that you know are impossible but there are higher dimensions eyes up on your feet let's pray i've convinced you enough to believe that you can walk out of here free Please lift your voice and in one minute blast in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Lord, I believe that by these two immutable things it is impossible for God to lie. Are you praying? For surely the signs of an apostle were what were wrought in patience and signs and wonders and mighty works. Listen, in one minute, please, young old, just walk with this instruction. Mention clearly the issue of concern and say, Father, visit it. Don't just say God bless me. That's not a very wise statement. Be very exact. He said, Give us this day. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Please pray passionately. Emmanuel, we want to see you. Pray. We want to hear from you, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we want to see you, we want to hear from you.
your hands. I want you to begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. There's such grace in this place. Such grace. Listen. Listen. There are spirits. You've heard me say it. That tie down men. There are spirits that tie down destinies. There are spirits that tie down families and are responsible for the predicament of people. When you come into the presence of God like this, some of you are lovely, innocent people. You love God with all your heart. But certain things are not going well with your life. Those spirits must give way. There is an anointing. Don't be afraid. Don't ask whether it will happen. It's not just your personal faith. You have believed God. That's all right. Leave the rest to Him. Whenever I call you, you will answer me. My altar is calling you. Oh God, my altar is calling you. Oh God, my secret place is calling you. Oh God, my sacrifice is calling you. I pray, oh God, take my prayer. Will you take my prayer? Take my prayer, calling you. All right, we're ready. Let's go. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you that every spirit. And every force, my God, I see so many people, so many people who will be delivered. So many people who will be delivered. I want you to bring them out. The anointing is here, it has come. Lift your voice. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus, inside and outside. I come against every spell, every enchantment by the power that is in the name of Jesus that as God's people shout in the name that is above all names let every dragon crumble are you ready now at the count of three one two three take it take it take it my God charms 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 I'm seeing charms I'm hearing in my spirit charms bring them out charms charms divination instruments of wickedness divination I cost you outside the angel of his presence outside sweeping like rain that view divination instruments of wickedness I command you to leave I command you to leave this is the place of his power Lift your hands, my God, my God, my God. Listen, I'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit. This thing that they count, there's this thing that they count one by one. In the name of Jesus, that's what I'm seeing. And the Lord is telling me that there are instruments of divination. People are about to be set free now. Lord, I don't know where they are, but like fire is visiting at least 21 people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, let it go. I release that fire now. Help them right now. Right now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. No devil will stand it. I assure you. No devil will stand it. Whether you are inside or outside. There is grace to set you free. I command divination. I command your broken. Lift your hands and pray. I'm seeing a number in the spirit 74. And the Lord is telling me that's the number of people 
that must be delivered from the spirit of delay. Lift your voice. This delay is a wicked spirit. I want to pray. You may not know you belong to that category. It's the anointing that will fish you out. Guys, be sensitive, please. Please. In the name of Jesus, 74 people, Lord, wherever they are, I stretch my hands right now. The spirit of delay at the count of three. I'd like you to shout, Jesus, one, two, three. Let them go now. Let them go now. The cause of delay. The spell of delay. Outside, only those outside lift your hands. The Lord is directing me. Those outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. First overflow, second overflow, and online. There are certain people that will be picked by angels. Strong delay spirit outside. In the name of Jesus, are you ready? Just those outside. One, two, three. Command that spirit. There's fire outside. He must go now. He must go now. Leave that sister. Leave our destiny. Hallelujah. Faith. Faith. F A I T H. Faith. Who is faith? I'm hearing a name, Faith. Are you Faith? Hold on, hold on. Don't match the people here, please. Faith. This person is outside. It's a small girl. She's wearing a white something. White like white. Is there someone like that? Come. What's your name? This is the girl I saw in the spirit. I'll pray for you. Come. What's your name? Your name is Faith. Come. Where are you from? Let's hurry up. Please, if I mention your case, I don't have to mention every case. Don't worry. Our time is constrained. We wanted to make it a big deal, but we are off to Lagos tomorrow. Just Faith. Let them come. Are you an usher? Usher, lift your hands. You are the first person to receive the miracle that I'm praying for. I'm looking at you and I'm not seeing an usher. God is saying he's visiting your family right now. Receive that grace now. Right now. Let that devil leave our family. Go. Delay. Out of our family. After that you can do your ushery work. Look at me my dear. Where are your parents? Huh? Where is home? Where do you stay? You are faith too? Huh? Let me pray for you. Hold my hands. It's not just you I'm praying for. Look at me. I want to pray for your family. Your family is being greatly oppressed. Huh? Go and tell your parents that a man of God prayed for them. I'm seeing a family that came from Abuja. That's what the Lord is showing me. Abuja. Not just a person. Like a family that came from Abuja. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle. Supernatural miracle. Miracle. All of you, your names are faced. Hold on. Please hold your hands together um, so that we can save time. We still have sick people to pray for. We are going to be very fast. It won't take long. I want us to finish very fast tonight. All the faith. I'm going to pray. Your name is Faith, too. No? Osha. You are an Osha. You are a worker. You will receive your own differently. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's giving you beauty. 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 In the name of Jesus. Beauty. All the faith. I'll just lay hands on one person as a point of contact to you. Father, I don't know why they are out, but may the anointing flow from this one lady right now. To every one of them. Right now. Right to all of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that we will save time. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I see a family from Abuja. Where are you? Please let me speak to you. From Abuja, try for Jesus as they come quickly, please. Hold on. Who is sick? Who is sick? 
who is sick your chest has a problem you sleep in the night and you feel as if there's something on it this is witchcraft but someone else is sick I'm saying where are you from Abuja all of you hold on all of you I didn't say if you are from Abuja please you are a family from Abuja hold on hold on if they are here don't push them let's be gentle on them why is he there okay no you don't have to those under the anointing listen listen when people are under the anointing especially for deliverance there's a reason why they are out don't just lift them and push them you can shift them there's a reason why we ask them to come out it's not to show they are falling you already saw them fall there you are the one from Abuja lay your yes. hands come let me lay my hands on you you are scattered you are all the same family all of you the ones at the back are you the same family you are on your own you would have sat down there my brother my sister two of you you are together i will pray for you what do you want god to do for you please we don't have time if you are not sure i'll just keep you aside so that we can deal with it. i need employment employment yes, sir. you love yes, god sir. yes sir huh? yes sir seriously yes sir what of you I want to follow my education, sir. See, it's not everybody. I'm just speak on behalf of your family. We don't have all the time. I have to pray for you, my brother. Huh? God will heal you. And then for you. What's wrong? That, I said there's somebody sick. You heard me say there's somebody sick. He's having chest pain, but this one... Leave chest pain. Chest pain is not... This, this one is witchcraft. It's not sickness. This... We have to pray. Huh? I'm looking at this and I'm seeing these things that doctors used to check organs of people. I'm seeing that he has a wound. He has a wound inside. And the wound is not healing. We have to pray. Father, heal that in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. I'll just lay my hands on you very quickly. My major focus is to pray for the sick. That breakthrough, we can prophesy that one, but I, I want to pray for the sick. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed, my brother. Your chest from healing. You go and get a job. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's done. Go back to your seat. Please come quickly. Let me pray for you. It's done. I pray for you. Why are you here? Huh? I saw him here. Can go to check me. God should what? Set you loose. Set you loose. Distraction. You are distracted. One, two, you are very disorganized. Look at me. Your major problem is not demonic. You are very scattered and disorganized. You need your life to get some level of order. Lift your hands. And you, you want to do ministry. You, you don't need you. You heard me say approved, right? You settle down. You don't just run around. If you are disorganized, you will not get results. Father, grant him grace. Supernatural grace. Something is leaving you and something else is coming into you. That thing that must leave you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe that I'm going to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Why are they here, your children? Come. What's, are they sick? What's wrong with them? This one has a heart problem. Heart problem? Yes. Oh my God. And this one has breathing. Breathing problem. They are all your children. They are all your children. Hold them. It's you I should pray for, not them. The, the children are just reacting to something. I have to pray for you. Eh? Things are not going on well. Where's your husband? He's abroad. He's abroad. How long has he been there? Definitely. What I want to tell you eh, is not something I will say in the open. Are you hearing me? But uh, I pray for the grace of God. That's, that's all I will say for now. Eh? And I'll pray for you because you see, any success. No, let hold my hands. Let's pray. Why are you holding her hands? You are sister. I'll pray for you. Huh? You want to marry and what again? Are you married? Uh -huh. Marriage is one. What's the second prayer point? Job. What's the third one? Financial breakthrough. These are the three things I brought you here. There's one more. There are four. Ministry. Ministry. So there are four. I'm seeing it like that. That's why I'm telling you. Did you show me? Did you tell me? That's what I'm telling you. Marriage is number one. Then job, finance, and then 
you have the call of God. You are a woman of prayer and God shows you dreams. Is that true? Where's the mic? Yes, sir. God shows you dreams. Yes, and you are wondering, you don't know whether you should wait for your husband or start ministry now. Because that's your fear. You see the anointing is on her? That's your fear. You don't know whether you should start something now or you should wait for the man God will send into your life. And it's because you are a nice lady. You don't want to do anything that looks antagonistic to his ministry. This is, I'm hearing you discuss with a friend. Huh? And that's so God is going to solve that problem for you. But you, let's pray. Hold my hands. Father, what God has joined together, the Bible says, let no man, whether whoever, man also includes woman. Man doesn't just mean a male figure. Man includes man plus every Jezebel that represents a system. And I'm using, I'm not saying your husband, are you getting me now? This is not something I'll say here. I want to prophesy. Any marriage, any couple that are married now, and there's anybody looming around to reap where you did not sow, in the name of Jesus, we scatter that nonsense right now. You will hear testimonies from this thing I just... This little prayer has delivered somebody right now. Father, let there be miracles. The spirit of infirmity, I command it to live your life now. In the name of Jesus. Bring the children, please. Where's the one with the heart problem? Uh, okay, and look at this adorable baby. Heart problem. Heart. What did they tell you? He said there is a swelling. A swelling in his heart. Hold it for me. It must go down. Because this baby now will not grow well. How many of you know that the baby will not grow well? You may not know what is wrong until he grows. Then certain things that should happen to other people will not happen to him. I know a lady that I prayed for. She doesn't have a womb. I'm not saying it's not developed completely. No womb like that. Usually it's these kinds of things. Um, you know, at the point of conception, several things happen. Jesus, in the name that is above all names, I pray in the presence of your people. This is why you sent me. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let this heart become normal now. You see, you see what is happening? I told you it's the mother that should be prayed for. I'm praying for him. And see the person falling under the anointing because that's where it came from. It returns to hell now. I can't hold this one in speak. In the name of Jesus, supernatural miracle. See the anointing is on her too. Somebody come and hold her, please. Hold her, hold her. God is healing the baby and healing her. Too. Two of them. Hold her. The anointing is on her. God has removed something from your family related to this. There's something you would have suffered that is related to this thing. You are an usher while you held him. That's why the anointing touched you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to prophesy on two people. They will come under the anointing now. Please bring them out. Just two people right here. Indoors. There's an anointing that is coming on two people right now. Thank you, Jesus. The, the Lord is just giving a word. We are going to pray for the sick now. Two people. You can't stand it. It's like fire to come on you. Please bring them. August. Is it Augusta? Augusta. August. Augusta or August. Something that looks August something. A name. Augusta or Augustina or something like that. Please, anybody with that name. Augustine. Sir, this man, come. This this fair man, come. Your breakthrough has come. There's a lady outside that of God something. You are outside in the overflow. There is another one. You are wearing chain. Chain. Like uh, this thing they wear. Is there someone like that? Not you, sir. You? There's somebody you're wearing. I want to pray. Uh, ah! Look at you. Lift your hands. Look at me. Shout, I avoid trouble. Shout it. I avoid trouble. You are speaking English. Shout it. I avoid trouble. Because I'm seeing the devil planning to really frustrate you December. And we have to pray against it. 
and this is something that is, is something you are vulnerable to but in the name of Jesus no trouble by the power of the Holy Spirit no trouble in the name of Jesus you don't stop them you just guide them in the name of Jesus sir I want to pray for you God is about to change your life you are a man look at me sir two things will happen to you I say it in the open you will come and stand here look at me one look at me sir a level of financial breakthrough you have never seen in your amen. life amen amen is what is going to come upon amen. you amen i want you to believe it sir it's not just because maybe uh, i'm talking to you because all of that that's number one number two is that i want to pray for you i'm seeing a thermometer rising up and down your chest this is bp huh yes sir. you have bp yes sir. did you tell me no, sir. i have to pray on it if i don't pray on it you are going to have serious problems because i'm seeing you go to a doctor maybe now or in the future and the doctor is specifically telling you not to eat salt right, salt like completely i don't know what that, but i think something that has not to do salt so i have to pray for you i'm going to pray for you and any other thing you came here with hold my hands sir, with both of your hands i want you to believe father there is a grace for prosperity receive that grace in the name of jesus is there is an anointing that makes men prosper look at me sir in the name of jesus i release that grace god gave it to me i pray for you again in the name of jesus that mantle and unction that can cause a man to prosper may it come upon your life in the name of jesus christ god bless you sir and bp come sir let the bp be healed now in the name of jesus Huh? What's your name? Linda. What's his name? Augustine. Augustine. Augusta. Augusta. Yes. Thank you. Come. You are the one who needs deliverance. I'm going to pray for you. But lift your hands. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing. Uh, now, this is not death. But I'm seeing. You know how a place has been deserted, like a wilderness. That's what I'm seeing as I'm looking at you. And I have to pray for you because. If I don't pray for you, are you married? Huh? No, if I don't pray for you, number one, you will not get any reasonable man to marry you. It's all these foolish men who will loiter around and come and not be serious. Huh? In the name of Jesus, for you and your family, be set free right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I open up those doors. Jane! 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 You are a fair woman, looks like an evil lady. You are wearing a, like a sleeveless. Jane, sleeveless, something like that. Who is that? Huh? I'm there. Look at, she's surprised. You think I'm a herbalist? I've been talking to people. Why are you looking like, um, one, the first miracle is there's something in your stomach. Yes, is that true? Yes. Did you tell me? Something is biting you physically like a snake. It moves down to your breast region and comes down there. Everything. That's the first thing God is going to do. Stand up. Number two. See, she doesn't want to stand up. Stand up, madam. Mm. Ah. Kai. You are a good woman, but you have suffered. I have to pray for you. Somebody came into your life and did something I cannot say in the open. You have been crying till now. You gave this man everything. Is that true? Yeah, right. Everything you gave this man, he rubbish your life into zero and went away. When I was preaching about mercy, God was talking to you. Huh? Don't worry. The man even said you are a fool. God will use the foolish things and confound the wise. Stand up. Three. That man that appears in your dream is going to leave you now. Stand up. This, this wicked spirit. Stand up, my dear. Hold my hand. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love the power of God. That person lifting that picture, lift it high. Right now, the power of God will touch you. Lift both of your hands. There's anointing coming on you right now. That's it. Your prayer is answered. It's done completely. The miracle for which you are lifting that picture for. Completely. It's gone. May your life turn and change like day and night. 
in the name of Jesus I close every door you have opened in your life and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be a miracle for you in the name of Jesus Christ one two three four four months there is someone you're a businessman you've not done anything for four months it's like you are, I don't know if it's a project you are doing or you are supposed to do something four months you have been completely grounded I don't know if you are inside or outside please run God wants to pray for you why are they here Jane I want to pray for you and then we'll pray for the sick Jane. Madam, I finish with you. You can go back rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be breakthrough for you. Let there be breakthrough for you. If I pray for you, please go back. If I don't speak for you, uh, upon you, it just means I'm not hearing anything else. Jane, your name is Jane. You are the businessman. Lift your hands where you are. Just lift it there. Lift your hands where you are. I said keys were given to people earlier on. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands on you. And everyone who relates to this miracle too, may they receive it. I release an anointing upon you right now. Right now. Everyone who relates to this, in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, you need wisdom, you need strategy, and you need connection. These three things. These are the things you came for. I release upon you grace. Don't be confused. Things are about to turn around in your life. Come. You need a helper. Somebody helped you. You did not thank him. You didn't thank him and this thing has affected you. Doctor. Doctor. I'm seeing a doctor. I don't know if you saw this. Please come sir. I want to speak to you sir. Sorry I'm having to call you. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. Go and write it down. This is what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. Even me, I don't understand what I'm saying. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. It will bring three things. One, envy. Number two, I see your superiors angry with you. And the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. And he's saying it is because this kind of speed is not common. Koinonia, I want you to witness this thing and write it. You will see it happen. Sir, I pray for you. Shade, you are a witness to what God is doing to your husband. God is going to give him such a dimension of speed. Sir, this will start from now till June 2017. You will see speed that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, do you know why you are stranded? Only one reason. You violated the law of honor. The law of honor. This is not just witchcraft. Don't, don't act as if you don't need people. You always need them for your business to rise. Huh? Why am I seeing piles of clothes? What do you do? I sell clothes. You sell clothes. Honor is what you have violated. Hold my hands. Let your business grow now. Go and excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. What is Abba? Well, I go to Abba too. You go to Abba yes, sir. to buy clothes there. Yes, sir. But favor has closed there. Yes, sir. The person who used to help you, something happened between you and him. Yes, sir. You didn't honor him. He was very fair to you. Huh? Yes, Let me just tell you the truth. That's why I say it's the law of honor. Yes, sir. After I pray for you, he's yes. going to call you. Amen. The business will start again. Grace for you. I'm not revealing, I'm making it happen. This is not revelation. The word will make it happen. I place the word of God upon your life and I declare that things will change. In Jesus name. Why are you here? What's this? Project. Project. What are you doing? I want to run your school. Huh? You love children. Huh? And you want to teach. I'm seeing you doing something with a blackboard. Huh? Blackboard. Yes. Ah, you are strong. You want to establish a school. That's what I'm seeing. Nursery school, primary school, secondary school. That's what you want to do. Who told you it cannot be done? Huh? It can be done. You believe that? Hold my hands. Go and honor somebody who is already in having a school. And God will open that door for you. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
Now we are going to pray for the sick. Please listen. I want this is the last miracle service for the year. I want everybody to receive. There will be such a heavy mantle transfer after the prayer. I just want us to, in the next few minutes, to finish here. So I want you to please cooperate with us. I prayed for you. You are all blessed in Jesus' name. Now please listen. All those who are sick in this venue, listen please. This venue and uh, the, the overflow by the roadside. I want you to just move to the front of your projector. Your projector screen. All of you who are trusting God for a healing miracle. No matter how many you are, we will pray for you. That's why we are here. Those outside, move to your projector screen outside. Now listen, part of those outside can come in. Not everybody, a few of them, maybe at the back, you can come in. Then those trusting God for miracles here, for you and your loved one. Now please come up. Come up quickly. Come up believing God. Come up believing God. We want to do a thorough work tonight, please. We want to do a thorough work tonight. This is what will happen. Now, those outside is okay for those coming outside. Um, Pastor Jakes, Pastor Jakes will help me handle the one by this pro, uh, the projector stand outside, and then a Jimmy will go outside. Please, guys, let's trust God for grace for people to really get miracles. Hold on, please. People need. L- let me just pray with you guys. Let's let's do a thorough work, Father. Grace in the name of Jesus. Let your healing power flow. Let that healing grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let it work. Let that healing grace be at work. Let there be results in the name of Jesus. Please come, Pastor Alpha, come, Benga, promise, Michael, come. All these hands, I will tell you where to. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you. Let there be a very thorough result. Thorough result. Thorough result. Thorough result. Thorough result. In the name of Jesus. Thorough result. Pastor, um, you are Michael. Please, you can go outside and help Jake. Um, Benga, you are promised. You can go outside there with a Jimmy. Please, just go outside. Let's see. I will try to handle the ones here um, very, very fast. We need so many more people by God's grace. Pastor Femi, come, 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 come. You are here and you are hiding. Come. Come and hold my hands. Let that anointing come upon your life and then you will help me here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he will help me here. Jesus, we release your healing power all over this place. Listen, please. For all those who are here, please listen. By the grace of God and it's not pride. God has given us a healing ministry. God has given us grace. Please be patient. We are going to hurry up. If I don't mention your case, don't worry. I'll just lay hands on you. I want us to cover grounds as much as possible. I would have just prayed for you, but that's not the instruction God gave us. Maybe if the ministry becomes too large, we can pray. But now I want to lay hands on everyone. There are people with cancers. There are people with all kinds of things. Just trust God. Worship Him, please just create the atmosphere for us. If you are tired, maybe the media can play something, a worship song, so that you rest too. Especially if you want a healing miracle. Come. Lay your hand on your stomach. Father, you heal her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your voice. If if they are if the worship team, if you're tired, then the media can play something. A worship song. Let's be very fast. Please, as soon as I lay hands on you, I want you to believe God and go back. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be miracles. Now, those of you who are hold on. Those of you who are seated, please, I permit you to put on your phone, call your loved ones, whatever their requests are. I want to pray. This is our last miracle service for 2016. Anything that has not been done, that must be done before December 31st, I want you to write it. Call your loved ones, those online, submit your request. We are all going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. You do a miracle, a miracle today. Miracle worker, you are a miracle worker. 
moment to a miracle, a miracle today. You will do a miracle. Restoration. A miracle. Restoration. 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 Now. 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 You are a miracle worker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. You will do a miracle. A miracle today. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is Yahweh. All over your body, this thing, everywhere. How long? One year. It just started coming. Hold my hands. Let it go now. I cause the spirit responsible for this. Now, let her go. Be healed. Now, this wicked thing, it disappears from your skin and lives your life forever. It is done, darling. God bless you. Your name is Hey, your name is Yahweh. Hey, miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Mama, say after me, I curse every witchcraft. I curse every witchcraft. From the village, from the village, over my life, over my life, in the name of Jesus, in the name of that's where your problem is coming from. What I pray for you, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Ah, Mama, something is leaving you. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you. You're with her. Help her, help my mom. You need favor in your life and you need speed. These two things. You need favor and speed. Ah! The anointing is still on our mother. Favor and speed. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead, guys. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is
to have your attention tonight. I have a lot to share tonight. Every time I'm sharing something that I consider to be important, my prayer as always is that we place the same value on those informations. In this kingdom, we are glorified not just by the will of God alone, but our access to the truths of the kingdom. Acts chapter 13, please, and verse 36. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Last week we started with that scripture as our text. Let me just open it from here. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. The Bible says, For David, reading from the King James now, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. The verse of emphasis is the A part. It says, For David, after he had served his own generation, Amplified says that he served the purposes of God in his generation. And we began to consider last week how that it is not enough to serve God alone. You must serve God within the context of your generation. Please, if you do not have the teaching, do well to get it. It is very important that um, you lay your hand on that teaching and listen to it. And um, we stress the need to not only serve God, but to serve God in our generation. It is possible for a man to serve God and not be relevant within the context of a generation. Are we together? That you can serve God with your all, well-meaning, sincere, but not be able to serve God in a way that inspires a generation. And I think my goal as a person, much more than being in ministry, is to be able to inspire a generation to love and to passionately pursue after God. If I'm able to achieve that in my lifetime, then I think I was able to contribute significantly to the program of God on earth. We must be able to inspire a generation and that cannot happen outside of influence. I told us that to serve God profitably and to inspire a generation to do the same, we must contend for the requisite level of kingdom influence that it will take to represent the purpose of God on earth. If you are with me, say Amen. We took the A part last week, just uh, we have I have five points for you here, and point number one was that you must know God. Are we still together? Dust your notes, let's look at it, let's get to work. Daniel 11.32, the Bible says the B part, it says, but the people, Daniel 11.32, but the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God, the Bible says that they shall be strong and shall do exploits. There is a relationship, as we established last week, between the knowledge, the personal revealed knowledge of God and your depth and degree of exploit. And we said according to Psalm 24 and verse 6, just doing a quick recap, how that Jacob for us is the scriptural portrait of what God's idea of seeking him is. That every time God says we should seek him, he doesn't leave us to guess how to seek him. He exemplifies um, his desire, his intention, and how his pattern of pursuing him in the person Jacob. The Bible says there is a generation that should seek the Lord in the similitude of Jacob. Are we together? And so we'll take from there point number two. Now please pay attention, pay attention. When the word of God is coming, Satan is also at work to steal from people um, the implanted word, the word that is able to profit them. 
you don't just rise in life by your desire and intentions alone. It is the quality of the word that you receive within your spirit. The second key in contending for generational relevance, the second key is that you must be transformed. Write it down. Transformation is the second key we are going to be dealing with tonight. That no man is able to influence a generation. Please play the strings for me. No man is able to influence a generation effectively, effectively, except they are transformed. Are we together? Yes, please. So it matters that we are transformed. And the Bible says in Romans, when you read from verse, um, chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, um, I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed. Listen very carefully to this word. The word world, there is the Greek word aeon. It means the mindset, the stronghold, the thinking pattern that comes with the age. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Transformation is a key. If you want to sustain a position where you are able to influence a generation, you must be transformed. In this sense, to be transformed means to have a superior belief system. Write it down, please. Let's deal with belief systems a bit. It is the one reason why many of us may never be used by God in a very notable way. We are very well-meaning, we are very sincere, but we have been unable to sustain a superior belief system. Everyone say belief system. Say it again, belief system. Believe me, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that if you want to serve God profitably, especially in the 21st century, you must sustain a belief system that is higher than the cultural background, the limitations that you have come from, the territorial background that um, comes with your geography, etc. You will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom efficiently if you do not sustain a superior belief system let's discuss this a bit now many of us come from backgrounds where because of our our upbringing we have sustained thinking patterns that may be well-meaning but are not consistent with the ways of god are we together i have taught us extensively on mindsets we have discussed strongholds um, but then it will never be too much to continue to teach us until we bend to that formation that the word seeks to bring in us with respect to transformation. Your belief system must be higher than your background. Your belief system must be higher than your failures. Your belief system must be higher than your current level of exposure if you want to contend for relevance. There are men of God, women of God and churches whose relevance cannot be outside certain geographic regions. Because although they are anointed, although they love God, the biases that come with their belief systems, be it cultural, be it um, sociological, the biases that come with their belief system will not afford them the opportunity to expand, to be global in perspective. To maintain or sustain a superior belief system does not mean compromising on your kingdom standards. But it means to have the flexibility to be able to adjust, to approach life from a global view, though from a kingdom perspective. You must be global in your mindset. As I'm talking now, there are people following from different nations and you must be able to communicate Christ in such a way and manner that in spite of their cultural limitations, in spite of their sociological differences, you are able to present the purposes of Christ in a way that is understood and received by them. Anyone who cannot do that will not be relevant. It's as simple as that. Is God speaking to us? 
the mistake that many of us make is that when we start out something in life, we keep scrounging around for people who relate with our geographic experiences as though they are the only ones we are called and sent to. Are we together? I, I come from Plateau State, for instance, and I can start ministry and my entire, the design of the ministry was only for those who come within my geographic context. Anyone who is Igbo or Yoruba or from Ghana or from Australia will not be blessed by that service because the program was so designed to only minister to whoever has my kind of geographic context. That's a very dangerous understanding. You can be anointed but then God will not anoint you to be able to bless people because the limitation, you do not sustain a superior belief system. Your paradigm has not been so constructed such that you can minister to people of all races and communicate Christ. Are we blessed? It's the reason why many businesses don't rise beyond certain levels in Africa. Is because is the reason why many ministries do not go out of their localized environment. It, like I said, it doesn't mean to compromise on your standards, but to sustain the flexibility to know that you are dealing with a generation that has come from a backlog of belief systems. And that in as much as you define what you want to be your primary belief system, you must have the flexibility to be able to adjust to different cultures, are we together? To adjust to different doctrinal approaches to spirituality without being compromised. I preach in different churches regardless of their doctrinal beliefs. I am able to maintain my convictions but to be able to navigate through the tides of doctrinal and denominational differences such that you can preach Christ in a way and a manner that does not end up offending and destroying the people you are ministering to. A transformed mind. Satan prefers you healed. In fact, Satan prefers you anointed without a transformed mind because he knows the oil will remain small for as long as the vessel is small. Are we together? The increase in the oil is not dependent on God's will alone. It's dependent on the size of the vessel. When the woman was saying the oil is small, the oil was hearing her. And you can imagine the oil saying, I am not small. You have only hosted me in a small vessel. And the prophet said, I know where the problem is. Go and borrow vessels. You don't need another oil. The oil you have has infinite potentials. Expand capacity for that oil to find expression. That's why you see that some of us that are carrying the anointing of certain fathers seem to look more anointed than them. We are not more anointed than them. The anointing just came on a superior mindset. So it gave it more room for expression. Are we together? A prophet who never had the opportunity to go to school. A prophet who never had the opportunity to learn a number of languages. A prophet who never had the opportunity to travel outside of Nigeria, outside of his physical environment. There is a perspective that even the knowledge of God cannot break. So he will communicate Christ with the limitation of that perspective. If you come now and receive that same anointing with a renewed mind, you now give the anointing a broader perspective to be able to manifest itself. You need a transformed mind, brothers and sisters. You don't just need anointing on your head. You need a transformed mind. The law of the mind is a principle that I have taught us again and again. I watch people, did you know? I honestly watch people and many times I feel sad. I don't even know how to start praying for them because I know that the prayer I want to pray for them will not be answered. The, 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 the faultiness of their belief system will necessitate that that answer never arrives to their life. Are we together? There are people who, they may be attacked by demons, yes. They may be doing a lot of things, but the kind of result they are crying for requires a certain level of renewal and transformation. 
and because they have not contended for that level of renewal, you know that that prayer will never be answered in their life. And it's a very frustrating thing for a man of God because you, you, you can't tell somebody who is crying and saying, Ah, Apostle, can God show up for me in this area? You already know that that thing will not be answered. As far as that person remains at that level of thinking, that prayer will never be answered in his life. It's a very difficult thing. That's why sometimes when I'm counseling people, I just pray for them. Because it's very difficult. You look at the person talking and you see the backlog of limiting belief systems that empower the gates of hell over the life of the individuals. And then you see the, the intention, the sincerity, the purity of their heart. You know what they desire. You see how true the desire is. But you know that that desire will never come to pass that way except they contend for a superior belief system. You look at people and you know that this guy is already pegged to his loyalty to cultural beliefs. Cultural beliefs that are not kingdom compliant. And you know that as far as this international context of ministry that this brother or sister is desire of... You of. You can have visions in the realm of the spirit of yourself having branches all around. You will not go anywhere. Many of us do not have the level of adjustment that allows us to be global in our approach. Are we together now? Just because you see a lady look like this or a guy look like this, it, it, it can get you so offended to a point that you cannot communicate Christ to the person. And now that's the person who wants 10,000 members. You cannot have 10,000 members who all believe your context, your cultural context or doctrinal context. That means you are going to create a system of bias in that church that will be clear to a certain group of people that you are not sympathetic to them. And very soon there will be all versions of revolt coming from their frustrations. It is not God nor his inability to reach us, but that our level of transformation has not ascended enough to be able to capture that dimension of spiritual possibility that we seek. If God is speaking to you, say Amen. Many people want finances. And they think all there is to finance it is business. You hear them pray and fast. They even write, oh God, I'm trusting you for one, one million per month. And they have no respect for money. They just call it one. Whereas their thinking level, notice, even financially, look at the, the figure that recycles around your life. It's a reflection of the only amount your mind can host. If they bless you higher than that, your thinking will reduce it to a cycle. Some people will never go past 100,000. Give them 10 million. In two weeks, it has returned back. Because your mindset is like a calibrator. Like a thermostat of an iron. It pegs at a level of thinking and stops there. There are pastors, the moment they cross 100 members, something must happen in that church and return the members back to 100. It's, it's not about any bias for growth. It's because they have not yet contended through transformation to the level of leadership that can make them to be able to pastor and lead that number of people. Before you cry that heaven releases something to you, find out whether you have created space through a transformed mind to host that dimension of spiritual reality. Otherwise, you are going to waste resources. Are we blessed? transformation. I've taught us that you are a reflection of what you think about. Now, please, don't think this is some positive thinking teaching. No matter who you are, you will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom above and beyond your level of understanding of God, of life, and the transformation that your mind gives God. You see, the danger of serving God without a transformed mind is that because some measure of anointing will still be on your life, though you are not transformed, the limitation of your mindset will rise along with the anointing and make people think it's the anointing that is making you behave that way. If koinonia is not excellent, for instance, you will think that the kind of anointing on Joshua Selman 
is what makes for you to not be excellent. So now I can use my imperfection in the area of excellence to mean just because the sick are getting healed through my life, it must be the anointing that is making me trivialize the need for excellence. And when you receive the anointing from my life, you will also receive the impartation of the limitation to a life of excellence. And so you see people mentor after mentor, impartation after impartation, and the lapse that lack of transformation brings will continue moving and we will make it look as though it was God or it came with the anointing. No. A transformed mind will produce a transformed life. A transformed life will produce a destiny that is worthy of emulation. Nobody will emulate you just because you think you are born again. There are many people who are worthy of being listened to, but not worthy of being followed. That, you are li that people are listening to, you, listening to you does not mean that they can follow you. It takes more than good preaching to be emulated. They must look at the construction of your belief systems to be superior enough to be worthy of them to mold their life after your belief. You're not just going to come with one Greek and Hebrew word, one suit and one watch, one car and one house, and then believe that people will follow you. You cannot inspire a generation that way. Your belief system must be so superior, and it will tell on the kind, the quality, and the frequency of results that you get. And then it will cause someone to say, look, I will follow after you as you follow after Christ. Nobody just follows you because there are all kinds of men of God moving up and down, yoking young people in the name of sons and daughters. You must follow me. But the son and the daughter is seen in an inferior life where the life you are living does not reflect the dimension God is showing him. Yet you are still pressing him and saying you must follow me. And he said, Mr. Man, I will follow you if you transit to reflect how my future should be. Be transformed. You can never truly rise above your mindset. I meet people all the time. I travel to several places. And most times, the people relate with me within the context of their cultures. And I am grateful to God for teaching me the ability to have flexibility in belief systems. Otherwise, I don't know how many churches, how many regions I would hurt with statements, not knowingly. I would hurt with behavioral patterns. You see Reinhard Bonke and all these evangelists, when they come to Africa, they try to look for African attires and wear. They try to learn thank you and God bless you, even in Yoruba. You think they like it like that? They are trying to create a system that makes them look sympathetic to that territory so that their voice will be heard. Are we together? You must sustain a superior belief system. You can go to a church where they don't allow you to move up and down around the pulpit. Do you have a superior belief system to stand and conform with the way that church believes in the operation and still teach Christ? There are churches that you may not be allowed to pray in tongues openly while you are preaching. Don't just say me, I'm like this, so you don't know my encounter with the Holy Ghost. We live with everywhere. They must know that I'm an addict then you are, you are going to remain small. You will keep impressing the small people who think like you and never become global in your perspective. Is God blessing someone? You must be flexible. We are excellent people, but we are not fools. You see, during the miracle service, sometimes someone is healed and maybe you are taking the testimony and the woman cannot speak English. You are not going to yoke this woman and say, when is he going to learn English? Just because she didn't have the opportunity to learn English, you yoke her? No. Are we together? We are global, but we are in Zaria. Madam, speak house Are we together? Speak what you can speak and let someone interpret it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. But at the same time, I'm not going to travel to Lagos or travel outside this country and go and I'm speaking and I'm giving examples that can only be understood by people in Zaria. Many of you carry your background everywhere. God is saying depart from, from AI to a land flowing with milk and honey. We carry that background. 
you go somewhere and stand and raise a tongue that only you know. And then you are lo- watching and seeing the like, class that symbol. And they are watching you and say, what in the world is going on here? And you will be so impressed with yourself until you are no longer invited. They have a board meeting and say, no, don't ever bring him again. Is God speaking to us? You must be kingdom in your, pers- your, your approach, but you must be global in your perspective. When you want to become a voice to your generation, you must understand that you are not a voice to Yoruba people. You are not a voice to Igbo people. You are not a voice to Hausa people. You are not a voice to Africans. You are a voice to as many as God will call. And your, the way you behave must be able to adjust in a way and manner that of course you will be sympathetic to the soil where you are domiciled in, but at the same time be flexible enough for people of all races and cultures to be able to find a place for themselves. A global approach to life is superior mindset. I say it with all humility. Most, most men of God usually are invited within certain regions and certain contexts and no more. If I'm a northerner, chances are that all the churches that should invite me to preach should only be northern churches. Why? Because I relate and am most sympathetic to their sociological context. But that's not the case. There is nowhere in this nation and outside of this nation that God has taken me to that have not been received with joy because I have mastered the art of upgrading my understanding, my paradigm and my approach to life in a way and manner that is able to help me communicate Christ effectively. I've gone to places where an interpreter is needed. I just stand up and I think the guy is coming to tell me the time and then I just see him with a mic too. Whatever I say, he repeats it. Automatically, I know that, okay, we have to be wise in that approach. How the power of God will move with this kind of limitation, you have to find a way to walk through it. Greet the man, smile at him, and the people are already laughing because they know that that's not how you preach usually. So they are extra blessed because of the fortitude to make that adjustment. Are you seeing that now? People already know how you are in your default state. So when you go out of your way to make that adjustment, they, they, it's a show of spiritual maturity that you have the ability to have revolted and say, you invited me, please, Mr. Man, walk out of this stage. But you are able to limit yourself to create a context that allows you to minister Christ. Powerful revelation. Be transformed. Be transformed. Brothers and sisters, be transformed. Live where you are. Don't let your background, don't let your background cause you to think in a way and manner that you think everyone is from your village. And every time you see people behave in a way that is not consistent with your cultural context, you are tempted to insult them. No, sir. No, sir. There are things you cannot do as a northerner. You know, northerners, we are fairly conservative in our approach to life. There are things that you may not be able to do normally. Are we together now? But then you go to certain regions and you see them do it. There are places that, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm somebody who is very organized and excellent and I, I, I like things in decency and order. But there are churches that you can go to that... Um, just a young guy from the choir comes to just tap your back as if you are his mate and gives you mic. Say this, this one is nice, and you can try and say, ah, Mister, go on Facebook. Are you crazy? Is there something wrong? I am Apostle Joshua Selman. No, sir. You have to have the flexibility to understand that gentleman is not rude. He is only a victim of the context of his culture. That's why many Nigerians go abroad and look like thieves. They carry all kinds of siren and move around, and people say, Who is this guy? This is a man of God. He just drops down in a hot afternoon with a suit and a collar and a big chain and stands. And while he's talking, the people cannot connect. Not because they are bad. It's strange to them. And then he begins to speak. Ah, I, I, I hope, I hope um, you are using generator. And they say, no, no, they don't take light here. And you embarrass yourself. And you are spiritual. You are born again. But the limitation of... Now listen, some of you are laughing, but what I'm saying is very serious. The limitation of your context. There are homes you go to as a leader. They don't eat on the, 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 the chairs, the sofas there. They all go to the dining table. 
Are we together now? And one day God is going to open doors for you and then you go there and they sit and say, what are we doing there? Say, we are going to say, say for what? Me? now. I hardly eat. How many times do I eat in a week? I'm always fasting. So what? So what? You must sustain a superior belief system. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Remember that I'm on a project to helping you becoming, to, to become men and women of influence. Not only spiritual people. You can persecute me now because you don't understand what you are yet becoming. Until you get to the future and you turn back, you say, Apostle, thank you. Thank you. You are not going to carry yesterday into tomorrow. And I want tomorrow to clap for you for bringing yesterday into it. Now, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he says, um, let us lay aside every weight. Weights are not sin necessarily. They are backlog of information and mindset belief systems that may not be appropriate for the context that God is taking you. Are we together? Superior belief systems. There are churches, and I say that with due honor, please, I don't mean to be sarcastic. There are churches where women are not given any regard for any reason, including the pastor's wife. And the pastor's wife is comfortable with it because she grew within that context, so she doesn't expect anything. So doing what I just did to appreciate Pastor Petro's wife, a board can call a meeting and say, no, let's sit down. Something is going on in this church. What the, They've never clapped for us. And a woman, not a, a woman. So what if it's a pastor's wife? Context of culture. So you will go somewhere and find out that they are introducing people. The anointing is boiling in you for the mic to be given so that you preach. And they are saying, let's take our time and appreciate our mother in the Lord. She is a this. And you are saying, what kind of carnal believers are these? No. You must have the accommodation. Because not a thing may be weakness to you, but it's not weakness in another culture. There is a culture where a father and his child cannot eat in the same place. It's impossible under no circumstance. There is a culture where a father eating with his child is proof of love. So you don't go somewhere and see a son eating with his father and even feeding the father and you say, my God, what taboo is this? Let's be careful. Preserve your belief systems, but have the flexibility to give the world you live in a chance to know Christ. Give people a chance. Give people a chance. Don't turn everyone to look like you. Give people a chance. You must have that flexibility. Hold a superior mindset that allows you to be able to accommodate people's limitations. Or people's context. Sometimes it's not a limitation. They are just different than you. That's all. Are we together? Next week is my birthday. I thank God for it. I don't celebrate birthdays. Listen, listen. I never saw any of my loved ones celebrating birthdays. In fact, sometimes my parents used to forget their birthdays. We just remind them and say, Ah, it's your birthday. They say, Oh, glory be to God. I came from... A background where celebrating celebrating things at all and then because of my approach to life my standards to life on many fronts are very high so even when I've done something that is worthy of commendation I sometimes find myself rejecting any any drive for commendation to say look we need to aspire I'm, I'm a very visionary person once you do something is done glory be to God let's face forward what is the next thing are you seeing that? Some come from families where they come back with results. 17th position and they cut chicken for you. 17th. 17th position and you eat chicken. Are we together? Now, God calls you with that person to work together in ministry. You take first and your father says, Why do you have one in punctuality? As if he didn't see first position. I'm not concerned about first. What is first? What is first? And someone is taking 17th and the father will say, I never went to school. Thank you. Court chicken. Those two people working together 
if they don't create a system of accommodating their limitation, there will be a lot of problems. And the Holy Spirit will be blamed for it. All of them are spiritual. Remember, this guy will say the Holy Spirit that trained me that way. This one will say the Holy Spirit is a spirit of celebration. With joy shall you draw out of the wealth of salvation. This one will say one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. All of them, it's still scripture they are bringing. But their belief systems are different. This guy tells himself, I want to buy myself a birthday gift of a watch. He said, what kind of thing is that? Do you waste money and celebrate yourself? Are you the only one doing this and that? And you see that those people can be anointed. And then they never go global. Imagine that I am such a leader. And I see you celebrating something. I say, Pastor Alpha, why are you celebrating your son? I say, well, we just glory. I say, what nonsense is that? There are souls perishing. There are lives. There are mission agencies. How can you spend 50,000 on your child? Is he the only one that is coming? What kind of attitude is that? Now imagine what I'm presenting. And it's as soon as I talk to him, I lift someone out of a wheelchair. So you may use the result of the wheelchair to think it's the Holy Spirit that taught me how to be that. And then this guy, on the other hand, keeps celebrating everything and finishes the church money. God gives them 100,000. The 100,000 goes on celebration. Are we together? Today is his day of being born again spiritually. Tomorrow is the first day he encountered a book that transformed his mind. Next week is the first day he met his wife. It's not anniversary, the day he met his wife to celebrate. And all is the church that pays for it. And at the end of it, his life looks loud and carnal, and some members say something is wrong with our pastor. Are you seeing why members sit down and group themselves according to their mindset and create whatever trouble their mindset can identify? Have you noticed that they don't sing local songs here? This one says, Have you noticed that it's just American? We don't sing American songs. All those things are reflections of limiting beliefs. Are we together? I once gave someone 10,000 naira to buy something. What he was going to buy, there is 2,000 of it. I gave him the money intentionally because I wanted to prove to him that his mindset was not yet upgraded. I gave him the money and said, buy it. I, he didn't even, even the 2,000 one, he didn't buy it. Because just felt, how can I carry this and do this? But it was a gift. I just gave him money to do it. May God deliver us from the limitation of an inferior thinking. Look at me. Let me explain something to you. Two people come. Happy come. Stand here. She won't stand here. These are two different people. Listen. Coming from two different cultural contexts. Do you know that the danger of not having an upgraded mindset works twofold? Number one. This lady now, because of her just an example eh, my dear an inferior mindset that she may be sustaining listen carefully it can make this lady to fall into the hands of a bad man because intrinsically because of her mindset she has believed I am not good enough so that low level thinking of not knowing you are wonderfully and fearfully made can make her fall into the hands of a wicked man who will kick her like a football every day are we together now? Because she already sustained a mindset that says, I am weak. It's a privilege. Dangerous. Then, I wish it's another lady. You go back. Another lady come. Stand here. This other lady, because of her awareness of how inferior her mind is, will become aggressive in her approach to life in a way to prove that she's not, she's not just a... a a low level lady are you seeing that two of them are behaving it's the same mindset is informing different behaviors this one now just settles for just anything in life i don't mean it has to be married just anything in life someone can come and bully her and just collect her phone collect anything and you don't have a voice this other person you come don't think i'm not you know i'm doing that i'm one of you carefully all those ranting is as a result of an intrinsic low level esteem that she's having and she uses aggression to fight it. Both people need deliverance. 
from insensitive aggression and from giving yourself shift to life. There is a mindset. Is God speaking to us? I'm dwelling here because if you understand what I'm teaching you, my life changed. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, and I say it with all humility. I never went out of Zaria to be renewed and come back. So wherever you are, it's enough for the transformation to come. All this lie of saying, I must go to Dubai first and America. Exposure is important, don't get me wrong. But it's a lift from where thou art, lift up your eyes. You can start from where you are and say, look, we came from a family where when rain falls, the, we don't know what part is according to the, the, the heaviness of the rain. That's where it determines which location rain will fall, um, the water will drop in. But from there you can start thinking, in the name of Jesus, I will be a blessing to nations. In the name of Jesus, I'm upgrading my mind by the Spirit. I have Gary, that's all I have in my wardrobe. But in the name of Jesus, I will feed nations. While you are doing that, we live in a very sarcastic world that will want to intimidate you. You don't have to revolt in weakness, but at the same time, you maintain a healthy perspective constructed by the Word of God. That's why it's important to know the Word of God. You need to know what God has said about you so that you will not listen to what God did not say about you. When you know what God has said about you, it doesn't matter what another person says. Is God speaking to us? Which of these two are you? As a result of limiting beliefs. There are many of us who have the call of God upon our lives. But as you are like this, you would dare not say yes to the call. Because you've never seen anyone rise in your background. The, the, most, the most educated person has SSC in your family. SSC, that's all. And so God says, I'm going to use you and you are like, ah, it's not for people like us. Oh God, I will gladly be an usher in whatever church it is. And God says, no. According to my predetermined counsel, you are the one I will use. Is God speaking to us? Brothers and sisters, I bring you a word. As limited as you look, you are still the one God is talking about. When God talks about an army that will rise. Listen very carefully. When God talks about men and women who will rise and shake the gates of hell, He's not talking about someone somewhere. I have always maintained the resolve that anything good I see in the Bible, I say God is talking about me. Listen, if I didn't have a superior mindset, I wouldn't be in ministry now. Because our world is full of sarcastic people who will bully you psychologically. They will make it look like, what is the basis of doing ministry? What is this? What is that? Where will you get money from? To hell with the devil. I came to preach to someone that in the name that is above all names, whatever God has said you will become, you must become. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. I don't In my life, replace the old ideas. Let the kingdom come. Ah, let the kingdom reign. Let the kingdom reign. Listen, if you will allow God to change your belief system. I promise you, there is no devil in hell that can stop where you will go to. They will just keep criticizing while you are rising, like an infernal of fire. No devil will stop you. Listen, let me teach you something. 
be inspired, be challenged, but never intimidated. Don't let any man born of a woman stand and bully you emotionally, whether because of finances or because of looks or because of education. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, every voice you have been listening to that has made you to reject the purposes of God in your life, I silence that voice over your life now. Sit down. A dream is here. Asking when the Lord began to speak to us about what the messages will do around the world. I didn't sit down saying from Zaria to the whole world, Haba, is it people like us? When there are great men like the Oyedepos and the Papa Ie Adeboes, I honor them, I respect them, but not to the detriment of my revelation of God. Come on now, please. Don't love Joshua Selman so much that you look down on yourself and your destiny and your anointing. Love him and give him the honor that is due, but say, I'm coming too. There is an anointing upon my life. No, sir. And sometimes we pastors love it. We love it when people demean themselves to prove that we are great. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. There is no good leader that will not want to see his people rise up and even be greater than him. We started that message and I announced to them, I said the Lord said we should not sell any one of the tapes. That I told him, I said I saw the message on the wings of the Spirit going everywhere. Ejimi was the one who designed the logo of e and I. Ask him, he will tell you. Ejimi almost cried designing that logo. I couldn't design, but I told him, you must design what I saw in the spirit. He would do this. I said, no, sir. This is not what I saw. I just did. He was so tired. I said, this logo you are seeing is going to the nations. Design it well. Ask him. I saw the vision. I said, your hand, you must find a way of seeing what God showed me. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemy. Is it because I came from a background where we don't have light? Is it because our house was made with mud house? My mind is not mud mind. No, sir. No, sir. Listen, I have proven with my life that you can break any barrier. It's true. God has used me as a statement to prove to you that this race, Ba, my brother, if God holds your hand, let the people keep talking. You just move. You just move and watch with shock and wonder. Who has lied to you that just because you read this or you have this, you cannot be great in life? Who told you you cannot contend for a position of influence? You go to bed in the night and see a massive crusade. You get up and say, no, no, it's Reinhard Bunker's crusade. God says, no, no, it's you. And while he's talking, he says, ah, God, when, when so, so, so man of God has not even done that, what is your business with the man of God's call? Ah, even so come, 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 Lord Jesus. That which you have revealed, let it come. When Koinonia was about to start, I was in a retreat and I saw the vision and I was sharing it with them. One of the things that I love, you hear me talk a lot about Ejimi, one of the things that I love about him is because he's always a victim of my revelations. When God shows me like this, I call him and just keep pounding it on him. And sometimes I honestly see that he, he wants to be honorable to say, Apostle, look, I don't doubt you, I'm a man of faith too, but ah, will it happen? You see why it's dangerous to be close to me? Because when you are listening, you can't say it won't happen. Because automatically you have become an antichrist. And any antichrist in my life must go. You are here right now. You trek from where you were here. But God has given you the name of your foundation. And God already told you that you will be spending as much as a billion dollars per year. And you are saying, God, please, 
I, I, I give that vision to Ejimi. And God says, why do you believe to me? Brothers and sisters, I bring before you an arrogant society that does not know the power of God. They don't know that God is the lifter of men. So when God shows you things, you go to them for accreditation. And they use their limitation to say, God has never moved it way. No. No. There is no way I cannot go to. No. There is, there is, there is, there is, and, and, and I'm not just saying this just because God has brought some measure of results. It's been like that. Those who know me from day one, it's not boasting. I'm not talking of vain arrogance. That's not what I'm talking about. A settled confidence. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, persuaded that one day I will not beg for bread. That one day the nations will gather together. Right from those days when we were sitting on the ground, I used to describe the international headquarters of this ministry that I saw about 47 flags of nations. I used to say it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it and hear sarcastic people speak. You, God said you will marry a pastor. God doesn't have any woman to give his son. And he will come and give a village girl like you. And God says, that's right. His village as I want. So that the excellence of power may be of God and not of men. Can you pray in tongues just for one minute? And say, Lord... I, I reject any belief system that is not consistent with your ways and your word. Yes, you are able to take me high. Yes, you are able to lead me to the place of destiny. Pray. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Great things have I spoken of you, O Zion. Lord, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Brothers and sisters, when you find your destiny through the word, then the first limitation, listen, sit down, sit down, sit down. The first thing to change in your life is not your shoe. The first thing to change in your life is not your, uh, what they call this thing, your hair. The first thing to change in your life is not your toothpaste. The first thing to change in your life is not your room. The first thing to change, second only to your encounter with the Spirit, is your mind. Remain with the dirty clothes and let your mind keep changing. And see whether your mind will not buy new clothes and change that body. We, we spend time trying to live a fake life, buying every other thing and starving our minds. There are pastors who start ministry. They know nothing about church growth, no anointing, no nothing. They buy the most expensive suits, expensive watches, expensive chair and room, and they preach to themselves. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb! Glory to the Father! He was seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the 
Father, you are seated on the throne. That's the song you will be singing when your mind causes your life to change. Let me tell you this. Quit this pressure of living a fake life. If all you have is Gary, take it with honor. Whoever has gone ahead of you, those who go ahead of you have a funny way of turning back to make you look like, oh, just to let you know I just had talking. God bless you with your talking. My talk is here. I am patient enough to let it come. The creative power, the superior power, there is no demon that can stand the transform mind. I tell you this. Your mind is a gift. Let it grow right where you are. You are a man of God, but no one is placing a demand yet on your grace and ministry. Don't start moving around with cars and getting angry and say, Is it that you didn't know God called me? Can't you invite me for the prayer meeting? It's a sign you are not growing. Remain in the wilderness and continue to build your mind. When your season of appearing comes, brothers and sisters, you will sit down and wonder and say, You mean life can be this true? I'm not in a hurry to go where God has not taken me to. I would rather get there here and be patient. But when I do get there, you will know He took me there. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Contending for kingdom relevance, the power of transformation. You are global in your approach. No one intimidating you, only inspiring you. Don't gather people in your life to intimidate you. Gather them to inspire you, to provoke you to godliness. If my life is intimidating you, I'm destructive to your destiny. I was almost saying verse 3. Number 3. Jesus. Mm. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will all know ourselves. It's true. What you are receiving is like an infection. You will never be able to undo it. It's true. It's like you gave somebody chloroquine huh? and then you tell the person to remove out the chloroquine again. How are you going to do it? It's already there. Just be patient. If it's an itch, enjoy it for, I don't know how long it happens, three to five days. That's how your destiny is. What is entering your spirit and your mind cannot be brought out again. There's only entrance. There's no exit. Once it gets there, by yourself, you will turn and see your life changing. And you say, God, what is, what is going on? Then you will sing this song by yourself. Not as a special number, but a testimony. And they glorify God in me. Number three, let's hurry up. The third key in contending for kingdom relevance is that you must be extremely valuable. Write it down. Key number three, extreme value. Those who will be representatives of the purposes of God for their generation, please write it down, are not only men and women who will know God. They are not only men and women who will be transformed. Your transformation affects you alone. It is your value that affects others. Your value is proof that you have been transformed. Your transformation blesses you alone. It is your value that now extends to others. And that's when your life begins to be rewarded. When you are valuable. The law of value is a powerful key. That your similarities decide your comfort. 
it is your difference that decides your reward. When you are similar with people in many respects, you are able to stay together. It creates a system of accommodation. But for your rewards in life, it is your value and your difference. Whether it is in ministry, whether it is in business, in career, those who are extremely valuable, valuable beyond ignoring, they are the ones who will command influence into this world. Is God speaking to us? Extreme value. Extreme value. Years ago, my dear mentor, blessed memory, Dr. Miles Munro, while he was mentoring me in the area of purpose and value, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me that when you are so valuable, Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. But today I see it. The proof that you are valuable is that men are speaking for you. If no one is looking for you, it's a message from your future to your today. Upgrade. Be valuable. All men speak for you. Not just to the degree to which you love God, but to the degree to which you have represented value to them. And they will not seek for you empty-handed. They will seek for you with their gold and their silver. They will seek for you with gold. They will seek for you with frankincense. They will seek for you with man. They will never come empty-handed. Your generation is too scarce of value to ignore you when you are valuable. The greed of men cannot stop your reward system when you are valuable. Extremely valuable. When I talk to people and I tell them, what can you do? And they say, I can do this. My next question is, how good are you? They say, no, God is helping us. That is a religious talk by lazy people. Are we together? It's an excuse. It's proof that they have pegged themselves at a level and would not want to rise higher. No problem, here and there. No. Oh, you are, you, are, you are a music minister. How good are you? Well, I'm, I'm trying. Trying like what? We live in a world where value is so scarce when it is fully seen, it is thought immediately. Immediately. I was blessed when my dear brother, the pastor there, sent me a text. You can imagine that he just came here and a woman calls him. To give him all of that. Imagine that someone tells him now, that ma this man of God is a herbalist. He says he's a good herbalist. I, I want that kind of herbalist. <laughs> Hallelujah. The reason why the excuses they bring in your life is valued is because your value is lower than the excuses. When your value rises higher than any excuse that can be brought against you, people will ignore even what is obvious to speak you. You go to buy suya and you stand and the smoke is all over your face and your clothes. But the value is too important for the smoke to deter you. Are we together? You stand there salivating patiently. Two people in front of you and you are not complaining. Your dignity notwithstanding. If you can make the meat go home. It's as simple as that. And the person making it is not in a hurry. It's not in a hurry. If you have a yardin force you, you can and you stand, you complain but remain. You insult but remain. This will be my last time, but remain. It's your lifetime until after three days when you are hungry again and you go back. When your enemies join to seek you, you are valuable. They start around for alternatives and don't find and say, look, we have to just make do with what is available. When God wants to honor a man, he puts something in your life that is not available anywhere. At least not in that fashion. A few years ago, a man was praying for me, a great man of God. I went to see him and stole into his life. And then he looked at me and just laid his hands on, on my head and said, Oh God, create a problem around his region that only him can solve. I said, what kind of prayer is this? Just slap my head and say, <laughs> If that prayer is answered for your business, you will be afraid. That's the kind of answer to prayers that make people angry. They say, this mama must be using a charm. 
One of our mothers here gave a testimony recently. When, I, when she, she was telling me about the testimony, I will not mention the details, but it's a breakthrough that God gave her. That it, these are the kind of breakthroughs that if God gives you, you have reached December. Even though you are in April, you have reached December, you can start laughing. Seeth thou a man, any man, seeth thou a man diligent in his business, there is a promise that he shall stand before the great, he shall not stand before mean men. Let me tell you why you are standing before mean men. It's not because there are powers fighting you alone. There may be an element of that, but let me tell you, your, your mediocrity has authorized a life of average to remain with you. Whether as a man of God, I've challenged you, I've challenged all the people here, the leaders here, and you're a man of God here, I'm challenging you. Don't just stop at the level of sharing and say, oh, the power of God is moving, it's moving. Then one lady now starts rolling around. That, 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 you won't go far that way. You get to a church where it's the ushers that are producing that kind of result. They can't invite you. You must stay with him. Let something from heaven that cannot be faked come upon your life. Remember my teaching on two riches. That, that you have two riches. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. That means you don't have anything to tell Bill Gates. That means you don't have anything to tell Dangote. If God plans a meeting for me with Angote now. What do I have to tell him? God will give you breakthrough. He will look at you and say, what are you saying? There are churches I have gone to, brothers and sisters, with all humility. You will know that the least person in that church is still rich. There are churches I have gone to. You say, may God bless you. They don't say amen because they don't, they, 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 God, they, that prayer has been answered. They are looking for something more. What will a king be looking for? What was Sheba looking for when she came to Solomon? Was it what money could buy? This did not come with this that money could buy. I, I pray for you. May God put something on your life that money cannot buy. I say it again. In the name that is above all names. May my God put something upon your life that will make you extremely valuable. Please sit down. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let me show you how people defy being ignored. My house is full of wrappers for my mother. My dear wonderful mother, partaker of value. Are we together now? These guys, a year ago, were student doctors. Nobody was paying them. But because they had been valuable intellectually now, they received salaries. Someone has been complaining that they fired him from railway corporation since 1996. Till tomorrow, he didn't reinvent himself to be relevant to a world. It's not enough to be a graduate. You must be available and you must be usable. Many graduates are not valuable. They are just educated. To be educated and to be valuable are two different things. To be valuable means to be needed and useful. To be valuable means to not be easily replaceable. I can cook. Like who? I like my food. Are you the only one who will eat it? I can preach. I'm a man of God. I can sing. You mean you can sing? Yes. God gave me songs. Okay, sing something less here. And you stand and you are twisting your tongue around and the, the preacher sings more than you. Why should he invite you when he can sing too? I listened to a particular gospel artist. Um, I think he was yesterday night while I was about to sleep and I was so blessed I said Kai this man is anointed I truly see why people speak for him 
value. You see, if I were not anointed the way God anointed me, you will think I'm teaching you value simply as a way of excusing the need for anointing. Because that's what many spiritual people, those, especially those of us who are called into the ministry of signs and wonders, we place very little value on these matters. We think they are lesser matters. And so we are the ones who keep rising alone. Whereas those who are, you see, I, I, I fear God and I have conscience. If I'm the only one rising in this ministry, I am failing. No. Your rising is proof that I am rising. If someone gives me 10 naira today for being valuable, I turn and look at you. Have they given you one naira? If they've given you one naira, we rejoice together. That the sower and the reaper rejoice together. But where I'm collecting 200 naira and you are there saying, to Apostle, this thing you are teaching, it means something is wrong. Either with me or with my doctrine. Are we together? The worship team, for years, I didn't allow them to go and have external ministrations. Many of them didn't understand them. They would say, ah, we have been invited somewhere. I say, you are not going anywhere. Not with what you did on Friday. You are not going anywhere. You do that kind of thing, it's only in Zaria they will invite you. You will never go outside Zaria. Stay. But today, by the grace of God, God has worked on them. And these gentlemen are singing songs that people are singing, not only in other parts of this nation, but even outside this nation. It's called value. When you decide to be small in life, you are going to be angry. Because most of the people who will write will be people you know. You will be very, very angry. There are many angry people. There are people who used to know me years ago. Just like my dear brother would say. You know, most people, I, I returned back from Kano yesterday. Very tired, very this, but most people say, ah, Apostle, I call, is it that you don't know me? I know you, but... The way life has presented itself is it's such that you have to just be patient with me. Apostle, before, in 2000, one dial and you will pick. Abba. For 18 years, I wasn't doing anything with my life. Value. When you see me settling down to study, you will not know that I'm a man of God. I, Daniel, understood by books. Sit down and study. Sit down and learn. The average sermon as a man of God takes serious time. I preach an average of two to three sermons every week. You think it just drops from heaven just because I told God gave me the topic. He didn't teach me what to say. What gives you topic and gives you wisdom? You go and sit down and research and learn. Are you valuable enough? Listen very carefully. I want you to ask yourself that question honestly. I'm not saying are you valuable. You are. But are you valuable enough to bring to your life the kind of influence? Are you valuable enough worth following? Can someone follow you and know that I'm following something superior? The guy who sang this song, E. Daniels, the blind guy, I didn't even know he was blind, went to minister somewhere with him. Blind gentleman. And my goodness, when this guy climbed the stage and held on to his guitar, with my two eyes, I still cannot play what that guy was playing. Songs from the Spirit, backed up by extreme skill. This guy was playing and playing, and I said, what is this? We are on our way to Kano. We are just listening to songs. And when it got to his song, I just kept quiet. The whole car was just filled with the presence of God. Right. But someone whose eyes, are, whose eyes can see and will not do anything and is waiting for God to do this. Let me tell you this. If you are a parent here, let me advise you. Especially for your male, your, your sons. Start training them to be responsible early in life. Sometimes this dashing, excessive dashing of money and things is why many young men are lazy. Pain is a language that can teach people. Money is not the only thing you should give people. You can give them advice. 
They don't like advice. They don't like counseling. But they like something they can hold and exchange immediately. Be valuable. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, every area that God would have me function in, I will be extremely valuable. Average is terrible because you are neither here nor there. I'd like you to enter a covenant with yourself that whatever I know there is grace for me to do, I will be, I will be the best and I will not rest. If you tell me you want to go into the academia and you just stop at MSc or BSc, I know that you are not going to have a voice. There are people here who are lecturers in the academia. Pastor Alpha, I think he just, he just did his, his externals and all of that. And a number of people here. You shouldn't stop till you become a professor. I'm not called into the academia. So you find the professor version of what God called you to do. That's the thing I like with house people. Even if you tell them to peel orange, they become so professional when they stand and they are peeling that orange. They peel it in a way and manner that wants you to go back to them. Mastery. Rewards are for masters. Entry level in life is how you suffer. You never make any relevance being at entry level. A time will come where everybody around you is great. May the great call you great. When the great call you great, you are great indeed. But you must walk. Write it on your notes. I receive grace to be diligent. The anointing does not cover for the place of hard work. See, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm using myself and it looks like pride. Forgive me. But if at this level I'm still working hard and you are sleeping, you are joking. Let me inspire you. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm being careful to use myself so you don't think that if at this level I've not gone to bed and at the level you are, you are sleeping, it's a sign that you are far from influence. I have food to eat. I can eat whatever I want to eat. But then you are still awake. Sakatos, kabarakatos. New dimensions, oh God. New levels, oh God. I come back from a meeting. I came back from police academy. They gave me this their police, uh, this uh, police thing. Two of it. That thing that they wear. I told them I'm an affiliate policeman. You can have that and hang it and start sleeping and remain there until the world moves ahead of you. And then you wonder, why don't people listen to me again? They say, because you stop being relevant. You see, let me tell you this. As we are sitting now, if someone starts shouting under the anointing, you won't be impressed. Because you have already seen that standard in me. There will be an appetite in you for what more. When that happens in another meeting, you will be surprised. But what will bless, it will only bless visitors. But you who is in Koinonia here now, once someone starts shouting under the anointing and moving around, you don't turn and say, hey, what is happening? No. When you have hit a standard, that standard, people get used to it and that's all. You must try for something more. That's why when they say, holy, 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 when they lift their face, they see another dimension of God. Who was, who is, and who is to come. If you are who was, you are in trouble. If you are who is, you will soon be in trouble. There must also be something to come. That what is and is to come dimension must work in your life. If I only know he who was. Businessman who was. Apostle who was. What are you doing now? Relative to what God is doing. And what are you doing tomorrow? Will our little children need you? Or will you be so irrelevant? They say, I don't know why you people like this man. I'm, I'm telling you things that many of you will not hear easily. Value. I will be wicked to not teach you this. This is what I'm doing in my own life. I have reaped the fruits of value in a way that if God never blesses me again, I am grateful. Sometimes I find myself in circles and places and I just nod my head. I said, ah, who dash monkey banana? If not because of the blessings of value. You will be so valuable when you get to the corridors of power, you will stand and wonder 
and say, Lord, is this what you can do? They will come and find you with a big bed, but you are crying on the ground. And they say, sir, you should be lying down on this bed. He say, no, don't worry. I'm lying down on the ground because what God has done for me. Too much, oh, too much, oh. Too much, no oh, excess love, oh. What's the song again? Too much, oh. Listen, this is what many of us are going to use to break the barriers that are in our families. Some of you, your family has not risen anywhere and all of you are educated. You see, let me tell you this. I want to tell you something that is very uncomfortable. There is no such thing as being educated in our world today. You are either learning or you are out. Educated in terms of formal education is wonderful. But educated to mean I have gathered enough information to make the world hear me is pride. You are joking. If a professor is still reading, writing articles, doing researches, and you just come out, a, a degree right now is almost like, I, I told you about a place that I went to, that the receptionist had two MSCs. Abroad, receptionist. Gone are the days where you brag and say, Look, I have a degree in A, I have another degree in B. And someone will come who is 18 years and say, I have four degrees. And you stand there feeling foolish. But there is something you can have in both your mind and your spirit that can give you a place, that can take away shame, brothers and sisters. Shame and reproach can leave a man. When you stay with God that he puts something upon your life, financial shame can leave your life. Sociological shame can leave your life. You never go somewhere and they look at you and say you are not fine. Let your mind add to your beauty. Let your value add to your beauty. Oh, you are too short. You are too tall. You are too fat. You are too slim. Value can make you fit for everything. A door that will not open because they will say you are too tall, value will reduce you to enter. A door that will say you are too short, value will make you taller to enter. You have taken all my shame. You have taken all my soul. You have taken all the sorrow. You have taken all the pain. You have made them yours. I pray to the King. You have taken all my tears. You have taken all lamentation. You have taken all the sorrow. You have taken all the weakness. You have made them yours. I pray to the King. God wants to make this song someone's reality. That you turn and say, Lord, look at how you took away shame from my family. Lord, look at the embarrassment. I'm a man of God. I am called into ministry, but it's like I am not called. But look what you have put upon my life today. I have become Beulah and Hephzibah, the desire of nations. Look what you have done with my family. My mother that was nothing, my brother that was nothing. They kept saying, can anything good come out of my family? But Lord, look what you have done. You have taken me from a donkey. Family. Sit down. Let me give you four, four things that you should cry for. There are seven of them, but I'll give you four. <laughs> they are called the two riches of the kingdom. I want to teach you what buys money, what buys influence. Influence is a product. It is bought with something. I want to show you the capital that buys influence. Ready? Number one. The capital of light. Light is capital. Illumination. Revelation. We use light to buy money as a product. We use light to buy influence. 
For it is the light that shineth in darkness. Light is capital. Whoever has light can buy anything money can buy. Are we blessed? Number two. The second capital that you need that can buy other things. Listen very carefully and never forget this. I'm only going to give you four. The second, that light, understanding. Write it down. Understanding. The comprehension of the systems of the kingdom. When you have this, you have something money cannot buy. Are we together? Are you ready for the third capital? The third capital is the ability to hear God. If anybody ever told you the ability to hear God is not value, he lied to you. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind thee saying, 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 this is the way. People prosper in life because the Lord is their shepherd. And if the sheep cannot hear the voice, you will go where the lion is. The forest is a place that is open for every other animal, not just the sheep. It's the shepherd that guides them in the path of righteousness. Otherwise, the sheep can veer off a land that you go and meet a prey that eats you up. The ability to hear the voice of God correctly is value. Let me give you the fourth one. I have a theory, that's why I'm not giving you all of it. There's a theory, two riches. Before the end of the year, we will teach it. So that you will stop chasing money, you will chase what buys money. I taught you last week. Please come, sir. Give me this water. Come here, Jimmy. Look at this. If this is, I, I have, let, let me bring out some money. This is a product called a bottle of water. Is that true? I don't know how much they sell this, but you just hold it. Now, if a Jimmy wants this, he needs to have something that can buy it. So if I give you money, you have bought this product. But when you want this, what buys it? If this is the product you want, what buys it? A job? <laughs> Business? No. True riches. Is the name of the money that buys money. Are we together? Whoever possesses light must possess this. Whoever possesses understanding. He said, with me are riches, wealth and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Business or job are simply physical platforms to give the two riches you possess an avenue for expression and a coordinated system for being rewarded. That's all they are. So if all you have and all you are looking for is this, you are going to be a slave to your destiny forever. That's what is happening to many of us now. Anywhere money is, is where you are running to. The money itself is running somewhere. Find out where it is running to. Don't just follow money. Follow where money is going. This money that is running away is going somewhere. Where is it going? It's going to those who possess true riches. Either gotten by occultic powers or gotten from the secret place. When God wants to prosper men, He doesn't give them money. It's an insult if God gives you money. Why will He God give you money? God gives you true riches and compels a territory to identify with that. And you will have this and not know what to do with it. And find out that this is the least of your concerns. He will give you influence that will make people think you have a charm. Why do people want to hear you? It's because there is something in your life that cannot be bought in the supermarket. Value. Are we together now? Thank you. You drop it in the offering basket. Also. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. The last of them is the anointing. Let me tell you this. The highest manifestation of true riches on earth is the anointing. The highest. Higher than all others that have called. The anointing is the highest 
spiritual commodity available for purchase and use on the earth. In heaven, the anointing is not the highest. Because we see in the throne room, all the people in the throne room, we don't hear the mention of anointing. So there are things higher than the anointing in heaven. But on earth, the anointing, the valued cherub and the rest, all of them, they don't live in the throne room. They visit the presence of God with the anointing. That means there is something those 24 elders have. There is something those four living creatures have that is not anointing. We will find out. But for now, as given to us, it says the yoke, it shall come to pass in that day. Listen carefully. That the yoke shall be taken from off your shoulder and the burden from your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. When God wants to use men on earth, He gives them the highest value, the anointing. He can give them in the secret place and they come out in the open and life starts following them. Where did this shepherd boy, David, smelling sheep but with the anointing? Don't ever ignore a man who has the anointing. He has two riches. It may not look like it. That's why those who seek God, people will say, don't see God, don't see God. Balance. What they mean balance is leave God. Don't leave God, oh. You leave the anointing, you stop by this life. Take the anointing. The rich are oppressed too. The poor are oppressed. Money cannot buy that. Money can't buy the salvation of your soul. Money can buy Panadol. But it cannot cast away demons. So whoever has that ability. Ah. You have taken all my strength. You have taken all my song. You have taken all my pain. You have taken all limitations. You have made them yours. I praise to the King. Koinonia, listen to me. Do you know what you are receiving every week you come and sit down here? You are not just receiving information. There is a transfer, like you do internet transfer. Something is coming on your life. You see, as you keep receiving that, a time will come, you will come out. My brother, my sister, regardless of all other limitations in your life, you will stand in shock when you see those waiting to see you. And you look at their chariots full of gold and silver. And they say, let it be a privilege. Someone's prayer point of 10 years. Your, your savings plan of 20 years. The anointing brings it in one day. Let me tell you something that you don't hear me say all the time. And I say this with due respect and honor. Over 70% of those who partner with this ministry are not here. I don't know them. Are we together? Our ministry is full of, a lot of young people. And God is helping you all. You are rising. But many of us are not yet there. It will be a terrible thing to begin to yoke you with the bills that run this ministry. When the finance department brings me the bills and I look at it, sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, what? This is what one department is spending per month? But by the finger of God, when he gives you two riches, it's like a charm. Look at Elisha. Now man, what are you doing in front of my house? How about Elisha, come out, respect me. He said, who is leprous? Me or you? Go and bath seven times. He said, respect it while he's talking that jagger. You can choose to remain. Ah, when you have two riches, you command life at your terms. You see, when we talk like this, many young people think it's because we are lucky to have been anointed. No, sir. The anointing is a stream of income. Whoever told you the anointing is not important. Whoever mocked and scorned at the anointing. The Bible says those, those that do wickedly against the covenant, God will corrupt with flattery. They look at these ordinances and say, don't worry, it doesn't matter. When people talk, look at their results first. 
before you believe them. Don't be a victim of someone's learning process. Then when he corrects himself, you have swallowed up his error and there is no room to correct yourself. Are we together? Value. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey. Yahweh. I've given you one, you must know God. Two, be transformed. Three, be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. You want to contend for kingdom influence, you must master relationships. Not just have relationships, you must master relationships. Everything in the kingdom reproduces on the basis of relationships. If you do not understand relationships, you are not going far in life. What are relationships? I've taught you. They are advantageous connections. Listen very carefully. We call a human being an organism because there is a relationship between every organ, every system, every tissue, every cell. They are connected in some way and they form an organism. Split all of them and keep them around. The bones in the valley of Ezekiel were not an army, although the bones were there. They had to be connected to be an army. Are we together now? If you do not know how to master relationships, then you will never rise to certain levels of influence in business, in ministry, etc. Relationships. Write, please. Let me give you a few things to write and then we'll pray. Is God challenging us tonight? Please be challenged, though. Please be challenged. Relationships are advantageous connections. Write it down, please. I've taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. Just like the anointing, relationships are a stream of income. Relationships can bless you. When you are connected to the right people, you can live off that relationship. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for it too. But there is a price. There is a price for mastering relationships. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, can two walk together? Two anything, two people to even anything, can, can your systems work together except they agree? If the mouth is opening and the legs say, I must move too, there will be trouble somewhere. There is a system of coordination in your body. Right? Can two work together except they be agreed? Many of us have not mastered valuable relationships and that's why we never rise. We are born again were anointed, but the system for multiplication in our life is not there. So we are just seeds. We never become a harvest because we are not connected. It is the relationship between a man and his wife that produces another being. There must be a relationship between your seed and something else to produce more of what you want. You alone carrying the seed of greatness within you cannot make a forest of greatness. You will need another entity that the seed will cause another multiplication. Plants know this. Animals know this. But we don't know this with respect to a life of great influence. Are we together? Relationships. You saw the wife of my dear friend, Pastor Petrock, when she came in here, I took out time to appreciate her. Do you know why? Because it's my friend and I love him. Because she's my friend and I love her.
They're wonderful people. They host me so well every time I have the opportunity to be in Mina. And they give me their very best. They have honored me so much. And I reciprocate it. It's the relationship that we maintain. Are you seeing that now? The, the pastor said when he came here, he saw the workers walking. Do you know because there is a relationship? I love the workers. I don't use them. I love them. And they know I love them. The person who should bless and lift your life, do you have a relationship with him? It's amazing how people just want the anointing to come to them. Who do you think you are? No. Without venison between Jacob and Isaac, there is no blessing. Venison there doesn't mean food or money. Venison is a system of honor. He said, I want to bless you, but as you are now, I'm going to waste my time. Do something. Create a system of honor between me and you, and you are going to receive something on me. Relationships are powerful. You must learn to master relationships. Relationships don't maintain themselves. I've told you this here, but write it again. All the parties involved must be committed to maintaining themselves. Last year during my birthday, my pastor friend in Lagos, Pastor Stola, they brought a big cake and kept it in front of a big church as if they are idolizing a man. And we're singing happy birthday. I'm here in Zaria and a church in Lagos keeps a big cake to celebrate a man. I don't know how many of my friends have called me and said, Apostle, come to our region and we want to celebrate your birthday. I said, no, 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 please. I, I have phobia for celebrations and all of this. I'm just, just pray for me and eat the cake on my behalf. Relationship. I can tell you why there's nobody to help you when there's trouble. Because you don't care about anybody. You care about yourself through people. Listen carefully. You care about who? Yourself. Only that you route it through people. When you love people genuinely and you care for them and you show them love, you will see how they will kill themselves to defend what you represent. Are we together? Many anointed people are lonely. There's nobody to speak for them and say, there is a man of God we know here. The hand of God is upon his life. He can be invited here. Who are you connected to? Enough to help you rise. Is God speaking to us? A tree only grows because it's connected to the earth. Fruits only remain because they are connected to the branches that are connected to the vine, that is connected to the root, that is connected to the ground. When your mouth throws food, if other systems don't cooperate with it, you can die. I'm not a doctor, but I'm smart enough to know. Are we together? Look at how the systems play. They patiently wait for the mouth to receive the food. Then other systems start playing. Life is systemic. Never forget this. A human being with no respiratory system is almost not a human being. He's dead. There are people that can have one part of their body working and another part not. You see the limitation in their lives. Are we together? Do you have valuable relationships today? If someone decides to come and oppress you, is there a voice that can speak for you? If the devil tries to oppress you, is there somebody you are connected to that you can say, in the name of Jesus, this will rise for me? Oh. I saw one of our dear babies. I can't wait for the service to finish. Let me give her a very big hug. I was in school of ministry when they brought her. She was so sick. When I saw that dear lady, I saw her adorable baby. The way I hugged her, I prayed for her. I said, Pastor Alpha, please immediately take her to the hospital. They took her there, treated her and all of that. What if I did not know Pastor Alpha? What if we did not know someone in the hospital? What if that girl just dies like that? Then we say, how can I leave Syria? No relationships. Is there somebody you know that you can actually go to now and he will give you money? Not borrowing. Not borrowing. Not everybody is greedy. Sir, I stand before you. I'm trusting God. This is it. My child's school fees. And it says, take because we are related. Look, if you don't have these help structures in your life, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. Are we together? 
And if your friends are only Christians, you are still in trouble. Because you live in a heterogeneous world where many Christians, their hands cannot reach the table of influence that you need help from. So you will need to be especially good to those of the household of faith, but be good to all men. The people that transport you here, I don't know how many Christians they are from them. We have never had an occasion to fight. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, they are Muslims, but we love them. We always do things for them. That's why they can come, sometimes they may be here by now, and wait for over 30 minutes, one hour, and they pick you. Relationships. Are we together? Who you are related, let me tell you this. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you matters. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you in this kingdom. I told you that there are men who you cannot cast out of your life. If God wants to bless you, he will make them like you. But for as long as they don't give you access, you are not going anywhere. They are gates. When God wants to prosper you and the work of your hand, you don't fight them. God touches their hearts to like you. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. If you want to enter Aso Rock now, whether you like Buhari or not, you are, you are not going to enter out Aso Rock without him. So if God wants you to enter Aso Rock, he will make him like you. Then you enter Aso Rock. Not everything is bindable. That's why there is favor. So that the ones that can be bound, favor will maneuver away in flow. You must write, if you treat everybody the same in your life, the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. Everybody cannot be the same in your life. Some of us have this socialist view about life. Everybody is the same. The one who pays your school fees and the one who greets you in the morning, they are the same. The one who prays for you, the one who fasts for you, they are all... In your world, there is no stratification based on value and honor. No. Jesus had three. He had twelve. He had seventy-two. He had five thousand. He had all kinds. Don't give everybody equal access to your life. Let them qualify for access through their participation over your success. I love everybody, but not everybody is at the level, uh, same level of relationship. Is God helping us and are we learning? Please say amen. amen. Some of you are praying right now. The answer to your prayers is in a relationship. Oh God, when will this rent go? And God is saying, you better take the law of honor seriously. The law of honor can pay you a rent for 10 years. The law of honor can buy you a car. The law of honor can bring an anointing to your life. You don't insult a man and when you see him, you just say, Sean, sir, sorry, I was just thinking before you pass, you just quickly impart my head. It doesn't work like that, sir. Your sarcasm is already a witness before the justice system of God as to why that anointing should not flow to your life. It doesn't matter whether the man of God lays hands on you or not. There are men of God... In my life, I will never be offended. If I hear today that they said Joshua Selman is a devil, Joshua Selman is this, I will still love them and honor them. Your connection is how you rise. Learn this. Learn this. I told you Bishop Oedipo's advice that he gave the young minister when he was starting, Pastor Corridor, he said, never fight alone. Many of us are fighting alone. No. There must be an alliance in your life for you to prosper. That's why we have something called United Nations. That's why we have something called African Union. Is that true? It's a coalition of people. What relationship is in your life today? I shared this with us already, but let me just run through it. How to maintain relationships. Let me give you seven points very quickly in succession. Number one, avoid competitive jealousy. Sorry I'm rushing. There's already a series on mastering relationships. Get it. You can never relate with people when there is competitive jealousy. You bought this, I must buy too. You have this, I must have too. You are anointed. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Number two, avoid gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. 
you never connect with people when you walk in gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. Never practice that. Number three, very quickly, avoid offense. Offense is the ease with which you get irritated. Offense is the ease with which you get angry. Offense is the ease with which you get resentful. Settle it once and for all that everyone you relate with is not perfect, just like you. So settle it once and for all that imperfection will be featured once and again in your relationship. But let that be too small a reason to cause you to lose the precious things that are associated with relationships. Are we together? Avoid offense. Four, practice forgiveness. It's not enough to not be offended. You must practice forgiveness. Any kind of relationship thrives on forgiveness. There are times you just need to let go and ignore what they thought, what they said, what they did. Just, just let it go. Are we together? Number five, be tolerant. Have a high degree of tolerance. You want to maintain relationships, you must be tolerant. Let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness may be an error or a mistake or a weakness that you hope will not happen again. Tolerance is a weakness enshrined in that person that is, is bound to happen again. <laughs> you know, when people are going to get married, a guy loves a lady and he offends her and she says, promise me you will never do it. And the foolish guy has the effort to promise that he will never do it again. Whoever told you you would never do it again? You started at me. I don't like it. I'm sorry. This is the last time. I don't know what came over me. You plan to live for 50 years? <laughs> you shouted at your mother. You shouted at your father. You shouted at God. God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And you are here lying just because you want to stand at the altar with a lie. I will never shall you fight it from... No, no, no. I'm not saying be angry and be foolish. That's, it's not an endorsement for being foolish. I hope you, you understand the balance. But that the wise wife or the business partner or whoever must know that there is a propensity for this. So I must create a system of accommodation. It's called tolerance. Thank you. Tolerance. There are people I already know that certain things are ever present with them. I've already factored in it. Are we together? Some friends, some different people. I already know that some things will never change. There are people connected to me. I know I will continue giving money all the time. I will never even bother doing any lecture on finance. It's a total waste of time. Some of us, they are our relatives. You know it. You, you, there's no point saying, look, everybody be empowered. You are wasting your time. Just trust God to be empowered very well. And create a system around your life that helps them. You will buy a sewing machine today. You will buy a bicycle tomorrow. You will buy uh, two cows, male and female. The person will sell the other one before six months. There are people who you can't do anything. You need them. They are just careless. You can advise them. They sit down. They are writing. They stand up by next week. They've done exactly what you said they shouldn't do. So you don't forgive. You tolerate. That's not forgiveness. Is God speaking to us? Practice tolerance. Number six. Be a contributor to the growth of the relationship. This is the key one. Very soft what I'm teaching tonight, but it's important. No relationship grows in, indefinitely without a very significant contribution from the parties involved. You cannot continue to be a parasite indefinitely. No. It is not only financial or material things you can give. You can give prayer. You can give a good word. You can do something with your skill. Are we together? You can't be in a relationship with come David Dam. You can't be in a relationship with David Dam and every time you are saying, Ah, David Dam, you are going for ministration. Remember me. Oh, if they give you your God, I beg, leave her for me. It can't be indefinite like that. One day David Dam will say, Look, the level of of intimacy you want requires definition of what you are bringing to the table. Because the level of intimacy you require is not the general, well-meaning. You want me to remember you while away. What are you bringing? And then you say, okay, I know that you usually get thirsty, so I found where to fetch water for you. You see that? I know that demons attack you frequently, so I've said I pray one hour for you every day. That's a contribution. 
Listen, let me advise, especially couples, whether you are about to marry or you are married. Insist that you must know what you are bringing to the table. Don't generalize because the husband or the wife is nice. Children, you too. Don't just say you gave birth to me. You have to. When you get to a certain age, you should be a contributor. Even if it's not financed, if you can clean the chair, you can weed the grass. There's nobody under my roof who will not do anything. No. You can't sleep and wake up and eat and sleep and wake up. If you don't pray, you will clean something. If you don't clean something, you must dress something. If you don't dress, you must go on errand. There is nothing that is neutral. Are we together? Any cloth in your life that is not serving you, give it away. Any book you are not reading and you are not going to read, give it away. Let everything in your life be based on contribution. And you will see how your life will rise. Even in your relationship with God, He spelled the terms. He told you the things you will get. I will manifest myself to you. He will anoint you. He will bless you. When they give you a job, they give you your letter of employment. Therein He spells the terms of your relationship. We do that for every other thing except relationships. Why should Pastor Alpha continue to love Pastor Femi? Why should Pastor Femi continue to love Pastor Alpha? Why should I continue to love you? I've noticed that people don't like me. Have you noticed it too? I noticed people don't like you. It's a message. One, you may not be valuable, but two, you want relationships that you are largely making parasitic. You are not contributing. I had a headache, you didn't call me. When I had my own, did you call me? No. Are we together? Someone has to go out of his way to make relationships work. Be a contributor to the growth of the other party. And then seven, the last one, and we'll stop there. I never knew we'd have to get part three for this. Um, but then practice genuine love. Practice genuine love. Let me tell you this. One of the most painful things in a relationship is to discover, for someone to discover, come promise. If I love promise, and promise eventually finds out that all the while I really didn't love him. I just had somewhere to go, and I found out that he can help me get there. So I was nice to him within the period of getting there. Is one of the ways great relationships die. I've seen this happen with pastors. I've seen this happen with business people. Ah, hey, Jimmy, I love you. Morning, he's calling a Jimmy. Night, he's calling a Jimmy. Next week, he's calling a Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, will I see you next week? And then a door just opens. And there's no a Jimmy again. Because it was never about a Jimmy. It was about me through you. Is your friendship genuine? Or are you just looking for something through people? Is God speaking to us now? Yes. Do I love you so much? I know how much I love you by how much I can be willing to stay even when nothing is coming from you. There are ladies who started relationships with men just because they are looking for daily bread. And the day the guy just said, Kai, this bread that I sell, something thief just came and carried one whole bag of the flour of this. You call again and it's, it's number busy because you want to prosper through a man. What of brothers that is just food they are looking for because you don't cook? You found out that a sister's hand has been blessed. And all of a sudden, how are you? It's two days, I've not seen you. Abba. And uh, she said, In fact, I was even thinking of bringing her. And now you are talking. And then the day she tells you that, Look, um, sorry, the money to cook is not there. Say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing into God. I'm busy. I don't have time for things of the world again. Our world is such a selfish place. Listen, if you ever want to rise through influence, there must be a track record of your genuine love for people. I love Pastor Peter genuinely. I love his wife genuinely. I love all my pastor friends genuinely. Just like many of them love me genuinely. I know you love me genuinely, some of you. Many of you, but not all of you. It can't be all of you. I'll be 
fooling myself but i know that at least you love me genuinely you can be sure that i love you genuinely i know jesus loves me genuinely is that true at least it's, i know satan doesn't love me but i know jesus loves me i know my little children here love me they love me more than you by far let me tell you your relationship life is intact when children love you i've told you this if children run away from you it's a sign that there is a presence your understanding is creating because children are too innocent to run away from you i love jesus not just because the bible tells me so i love him because he has proven it again and again and he's for that same love i love you with all my heart do you look at all the relationships in your life today which one are you using and which one is real hello we are going to pray i want you to look at all the relationships in your life today which one do you know from beginning that is just a means to an end not an end in itself this guy is a prayer warrior let me just use him to scatter this because on my own i won't reach that gate i've already seen the giant that stands so let me partner with him let me use his voice to open that gate that's why many of us are not there for those we claim to love when they are down it's so painful for people to claim to love you and when you are down there's nobody there for you there are many of our people who are getting married here and there there are people who say they love them and never bring five naira I promise you are getting married take ten naira and may the lord honor you you know this god that we talk about you don't love when you love you give you don't give money alone you give any and everything hallelujah it's true one of my greatest prayers is for god to help me to continue to love people is one of the keys i have found to the anointing remaining and multiplying upon my life you can be dissipating spiritual energy in prayer and word study and not have love the bible says you are an empty symbol you must genuinely have love not just for god but for me i love god genuinely ask him he will tell you i don't love god because i'm looking for tea i don't love god because i'm looking for bread i don't relate with him just because i want him to meet my needs if i were doing that then there are many things i will not maybe i will just be praying once a week on friday lord bless koinonia thank you thank you because there's already rice on my table for monday and tuesday and wednesday bless koinonia but i love him i still go back to his presence and say lord i've come again you are my desire you are my pursuit you are my everything many of you your relationship with god that went sour that made everything in your life to go sour the first relationship to be restored is your relationship with god then your relationship with those that god has ever used to bless you if god used them once he can use them again do all you can to preserve the relationship do all you can there are times i send many people text messages just like you don't get replies from me sometimes i don't get replies from them but i'm not offended because i know they are busy the most important thing is that i play my own part to make sure the relationships are there maintaining relationship is costly maintaining relationship with great men is costlier maintaining a relationship with god is the costliest of them all because it can cost you your life you can even die you will lose a lot of things relating with god but you will gain a lot of things you want to relate with people and not lose anything you are selfish you must lose something to stay what are you willing to lose you must lose your time to gain something you must lose your time with god to gain the anointing you must lose your time there are times that you will have to lose your ego to sit down before an uncommon mentor and hear him talk to you there are times you will need to lose your appetite you are hungry but the person talking to you has not finished you must sit down there and sit down for as long as he's talking relationships god has used relationships to lift me today 
I can't tell you, you know, sometimes I, I don't even want to share. I like being myself, but I don't want to share testimonies because they are very touching. I'm being very sober with you tonight because I want you to know this is how we gain influence. Relationships. Somebody told somebody about a message that blessed you. Somebody met somebody and gave him a koinonia message that brought you. Even to Jesus, somebody told you about Jesus. Even if it's an angel, he came as Angelus, a messenger, to connect you. Let's finish it. Give me five minutes. Let's not allow it go to part three. Number five. And we end for tonight. You want to contend for kingdom relevance. You must be unusually anointed. The last key, you must be unusually anointed. If you are just anointed, you will not do much. You must be unusually anointed to such a degree and such a level that you can do many things for the kingdom through the anointing that is upon your life. Listen, brothers and sisters, those who are generalists in the anointing, generalists, will not do anything much. You will keep competing one result today, no result tomorrow, one this today, no. Every time they invite me to go for ministrations, I am very happy because I know what the anointing is going to do to the people. It's going to change their lives. Those of you who are first timers who have come here now, I'm happy because while you are sitting, something is happening to you. You will get up and go back and wonder. It will look like a dream, the way God will turn your life around. Nothing just happens. Koinonia, I will drum this into your life. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. It first starts from what is in you, then it comes to what is upon you, then it brings things around you. If there is nothing upon you, creation will be so harsh to you, you will feel like dying. Is that true? Unusual anointing. The difference between any two people is not the God they believe in. The difference between any two people may not even be the revelation they are sharing. The difference between their results, hence their influence, will almost always be the level of grace. When you see what I am doing and you see what Benihin is doing, it's not like he's using a different Bible from me. The difference is the level of anointing. The difference may not even be the dimension of the anointing. It's just the level of it. The difference between 1,000 Naira and 10,000 Naira is 9 more 1,000. Is that true? Sometimes what you need is just more of the same thing. You may not need anything new. Unusually anointed. Unusually anointed. And it will take you places you never dreamt you will go to. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, beloved in the Lord. I bring you the keys for transgenerational relevance. The highest of them is to be unusually anointed. When you are unusually anointed, then you are a blessing. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. When I say anointing, I don't just mean people falling on the floor shouting, ah, 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 ah. That, that's not anointing. Resolve. The ability to manipulate realities over people. Create a spiritual climate over a man that turns his life around. The anointing. I say to one, go and he goeth. I say to another, come and he comes. Immediately after the grace, there will be several people lining up here to see me. And many of them have issues. Whether I'm able to solve those problems is a different thing. How many people have come to you and you could not do anything about their situation? It's not like you are not anointed, but you need to operate at a higher level. A higher level. A higher level. That must be your cry. A higher level. Thank God for where he has brought you. But my brother, my sister, at this level of anointing, the nations will not demand your grace. At this level, it's your local environment that will demand your grace. 
at this level of the anointing. You need a level of anointing that will cause all men to seek for you. As it is now, all men cannot seek for you. But all men seek for you. We are going to pray. I want you to be relevant. I have taught you the key. Number one, you must know God. Number two, you must contend for transformation. Number three, you must be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. Even beginning from here, there are people you need in life and destiny. Swallow your pride. Bury your ego and maintain the requisite relationships it will take. So that when you are great and when they are great, even if you are not there, they will pick you through their greatness. Number five, be unusually anointed. The highest of the two riches. When it comes upon your life, then you will find out that principalities and powers will bow. You will find out that all men will seek for you. They will seek for the deposit of his grace that is upon your life. At that point, you will never beg for bread again. At that point, your voice cannot be silenced again. There is no cost and no yoke that will ever silence your voice. Are you ready to pray tonight? We are going to take five minutes. The prayer points are all that I mentioned. I'm just going to allow you with God for the next five minutes exactly. I want you to cry your heart in prayer and say, Lord, I want you to lift me. I want to begin to operate and activate these systems of the kingdom. Lord, I do not know you. Lord, I am not transformed. My limitation has pegged my growth to a point that I'm not able to do much. Lord, I confess that I am not valuable enough. I have flattered myself and gathered around psychophants in my life who have made me feel I'm more valuable than I really am. Lord, I have ignored relationships. I'm a man of God, but I've ignored valuable relationships. I've let my pride get in the way. I've let offense get in the way. And then, Lord, I'm anointed, but I'm not unusually anointed. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. You activate these five things. You have closed the door of mediocrity in your life forever. Doesn't matter what background you come from. Lord, I now see why poverty seems to trace and fail my life. Lord, I now see why no one is willing to listen to me. I now see why no one is willing to invest in your hand upon my life. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of my Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of my Speak with all your heart. Take over, take over, I have come to the end of my self. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my day. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I have come to the end of my day. I like you to pray. Let me give you one more prayer point and say, Lord, I will never be small. Let it be a vow you make with yourself. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it's a determination. The Bible says, I will multiply them. They will not be few. I will glorify them. They will not be small. 
Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I make a determination in the name of Jesus Christ that I will never, never be small. There is much to do for the kingdom. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I declare the seed of greatness for the kingdom is within me. And I declare that God you have given me will not be small. That business you have given me, that anointing, that grace, that career, multiply my influence. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Would you mind me giving you one last one? I want you to mention all the five points one by one. Especially for the areas where you know you are lacking. Some of you, you don't have a problem with knowing God, but your mind, your mind, there's something in your mind that is authorizing darkness to prevail over your life. Some of us who are not exceptionally valuable, for some of us we have ignored relationships. Open your mouth and mention them one by one. Grace, O oh God. Grace from heaven. Grace to press into the things of God. Grace to know you more. Grace to know you more in prayer, in fasting, in the study of the word, in corporate fellowship. Please make sure you are praying. Love your destiny enough to pray. Love your children enough to pray. Love your generation enough to pray. Lord, I cry for transformation. Something about my background, something about my culture, something about my sociological perspective is affecting my life, affecting my growth, affecting my influence. I cry to you, O oh God of heaven, alter my mind, alter my thinking, alter my paradigm, alter my perspective, change my perception. Lord, I receive grace to be so valuable, to be needed and useful, valuable in ministry, valuable in business, valuable in my career, valuable in my profession, valuable as a man of God, valuable as a woman of God. I obtain that grace in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive grace for strategic relationships. Send to my life men and women that are gates to my next level. Grant me the fortitude to maintain those relationships. Grant me the wisdom to maintain those relationships. Last me cry for the anointing. Father, send more fire, greater fire, fresh fire, new dimensions of the anointing. New dimensions of the anointing. Expand my spiritual horizon. Let your hand rest upon me in a way that the nations will know that your hand is upon my life. Let your hand rest upon Koinonia. Greater resolve, greater skies, greater wonders, greater dimensions of the operation of the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Our time is. This is how people become relevant from absolutely nothing. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. The grace that it takes to know God, to be and stay transformed, to be exceptionally valuable, to master relationships, and to knock on the gate of heaven until new dimensions come to you. I pray that that grace be released upon your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to you that where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every force that is fighting your influence, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
and I command that those powers leave your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I spoke to you about two riches. Whichever you do not have in your life, I command a supply of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as a corporate people, we decree and declare that you are increasing our greatness. And you are comforting us on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I call you not just a person but a voice. I declare from today be a voice. In your career become a voice. In ministry become a voice. In healing become a voice. In the prophetic become a voice. In business become a voice. In the academics become a voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that no one will be able to silence your voice. What has not been done by your loved ones, by your father, your mother, I empower you by influence to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Still, Father, every single petition, every single need, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that they are turned to testimonies tonight. Shabado katu sada brani gede balada bush. Rekete paroda sada balada balakata frada skele barya kata. Shekotos kabarunda skabarya kata frada balada bush. We receive by faith. We receive by faith. We receive by faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is a God that doeth wonders and He will do mighty things in our midst tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you prophesy to two or three people that God is about to do mighty things in your life? Mean it from your heart. God is about to do mighty things in your life. Don't be surprised when you see your life changing. Don't be surprised when you see doors opening. Don't be surprised when you encounter new anointings. God bless you. Please be seated. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. This is our first miracle service for 2018. Hallelujah. We're going to put our hands together again. Let the devils know we're back again. Back again. Back again. Miracles back again. Breakthroughs back again. Signs and wonders back again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. I'm excited in my spirit because I know that God will change someone's life. It never tires me to hear the testimonies of the hand of God over the lives of people. Sometimes it's just like day and night. And God did it. And God wiped my tears. And God took away cancer. And God took away this infirmity. And God forced a wicked man to respond to me. And God did this and that. The God that doeth wonders. A wonder is a miracle with a message in it. You see that? Yes. When your miracle does not have a message, it's not a wonder. There must be a message in it. It's a statement. Like Julius Berger built a house and writes there, B. When you see it, you are not confused. You see the level of the architecture. Then they tell you they are the one. So God does certain things in your life. And puts his signature. And says, I am the God that doeth wonders. That's what will happen to you tonight. In the name of Jesus. There's a lot to do tonight. I will just admonish us very quickly. I'm not really preaching. I just want to communicate a few things that the Lord put in my spirit. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25 The more I seek to understand God The more I align to understand His ways 
I'm amazed at the things that I discover about God alongside the reasons why we seldom see magnificent dimensions of his power and his grace and i am humbled and forced to admit that god is a good god and there is something really wrong with our understanding of him hallelujah and this is one of the keys that i want to share with us there's a separate series coming that will deal with this but then the Lord just has one question for us tonight written in our requests written upon the tablets of our hearts are several needs and miracles that we trust the Lord to bring some of us healing miracles some of us are here to encounter higher levels of grace some of us are trusting God for influence prosperity access to revelation breakthroughs all kinds of things and there's a very simple question can god trust you this is my admonishment tonight can god trust you it looks like a very simple statement very basic but this is the reason why many people may never be granted access to the deep things of god can god trust you matthew 25 Let's read from verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his ability, and straightway he took his journey. And he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two but he that received one went and dug in the earth and hid the lord's money after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold i have gained besides them five talents more and his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make thee a ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the lord same thing happened with the second person and then let's go to 24 then he that had received the one talent came and said lord i know thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not spread and i was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there thou hast what is thine his lord answered and said unto him thou wicked and slothful or other versions say unfaithful servant thou knowest that i reap where i sweat not and gather where i have not sown or spread thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming i should have received my own with interest take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him that had ten talents the last verse for unto every one that hath shall be given and he that have abundance and he shall have abundance but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he had. There is so much I believe with all my heart that in this season the Lord wants to reveal and commit to his body. Please listen. The Lord wants to commit new and greater dimensions of the anointing. The Lord wants to commit higher and superior levels of influence. The Lord wants to commit access. The Lord wants to commit prosperity like never before. But there is one question. Can God trust me? Can God trust you? It's always been a question of trust. Not his ability. Trust. Can God trust you with the anointing that you seek? Can God trust you with the level of increase and access? Can God trust you with classified spiritual information?
can you be a faithful steward of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together can god trust you with the children you are trusting that he gives you can god trust you with the ministry that you desire that he gives you can god trust you with the increase you know many times we don't think about these things all we want is god give me lord you have to answer me wipe my tears change my story you see a lot of people saying lord give me money give me prosperity and i can imagine the lord looking from heaven can i trust you are we together God never trusts people he has not tested. God does not trust you by faith. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Notice that in this parable, the Bible says, when you read from verse 14, it says that there was a man. That man was obviously a wealthy man. And the man had assets, had possessions, etc. And then the Bible says that he had three servants, three workers notice now the bible does not give us the details of how he recruited them but it was very clear from the context of this scripture that he had been watching them is that true and the bible says that on the strength of his his observation he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one two talents he gave unto one one talent Notice how correct he was by the results that were produced. He had been watching them. There was a day he gave them certain things and he observed their stewardship. And he now gave one five talents, two talents, and did not supervise them. He left. And then the Bible says, after a long time, he came back to find out which of them still had a sense of stewardship. And the Bible says two out of the three One had multiplied and kept good stewardship of what he was given Same thing with the other And there was an angry, greedy, jealous and unserious one Who really deserved one In fact deserved none True? He was waiting in anger for the master to come Observe many things wrong with this guy He was irresponsible he was not willing to learn because the other two were his colleagues he would have easily met them and said what did you do with the five and two he had access to people who had results are we together so you wouldn't say that the mentor was not there but they were people all of them were trained by the same person meaning he was not a listener there was something about his arrogance that was becoming glaring i'm sure he was offended for being committed one you see that and then when the master came he said mr five talent what have you done he said this is what i've done i have multiplied your estate i've multiplied your assets the other person with the two the same thing and then he said how about you say i've been waiting for you now you will hear from me i know you are a hard man I know it from the lecture I know it from the way you don't like me I know it from the way you shut me down when I try to interrupt you as you talk and so I thought that it would be a waste of time to pay attention to you anyway just to let you know I didn't lose anything here's what you gave me you sow seeds not talents you see that and he dug it in the earth and gave the man and the man said you are a wicked an unprofitable servant he said at least if you could not produce the results yourself why don't you give those who can produce it are you seeing you did not your problem was not your inability to produce results it was your pride you would have handed it to someone who could produce the result and i would have credited it that you were a humble person though ignorant you were both ignorant and arrogant are we together trust there are so many people listen you know we live in a society where we admire results and results are wonderful but if you've been in this house for a long time you know that god has taught us to observe how results come not just to celebrate the appearance of results there are men of god who want the anointing there are so many people who want i think one of the major problems of people now is this money thing prosperity finances money 
Oh God, arise. Oh God, give money. Oh God, wipe our tears. And God says, look, it, there is nothing wrong with my abundance. You have a problem with your country, not me. You see that? And then God is asking a question to everyone listening. Can I trust you? Can I trust you to be a faithful steward with my people? There are men of God who want crowds. We celebrate crowds. We want God to... Can I trust you to burden yourself and meet them at the point of their needs? I want expansion in ministry. Can I trust you to sustain capacity enough to deliver at all times? Lord, connect me to great people. Can I trust you with access to their information? Listen, this is a very powerful message. Very powerful. Can God trust you with money? Can God trust you with men? Can God trust you with influence? Can God trust you with the anointing? These are the priceless commodities that make for great men. Can God trust you? God has tested people with the anointing and they made a mess, a mess of it. God trusted people with money, they made a mess of it. God trusted people with information, they made a mess of it. There are many destinies today. Some of our loved ones, sadly, who would never be where they were if they knew how to be trusted with information. God brought them to men and women of influence and they abused the privilege of access and did not know how to keep information. Other people anointings. God brought them the anointing and they did not find out how the anointing remains. They were more passionate about... Let me tell you something. Success, just like the anointing and any other thing, the easiest part of it is the arrival. The maintenance of anything given by God is harder than the reception. Are we together? The hardest part of, the easiest part of prosperity is the arrival of resources. Maintaining it takes a lot of discipline. Maintaining the anointing, the glory of God upon your life. Maintaining influence. Maintaining relationships. All of these priceless things. The simple question God is asking us tonight is, can I trust you? Can I trust you with the answers to your requests? Can I trust you? Lord, I want admission. Can I trust your heart when you get admission? Lord, I want a job. The brother came and shared about his job. And when he mentioned the amount, people were clapping. Can God trust you? I must be a millionaire. That's not the issue. Can God trust you? God gave you 30,000. You struggled for one month to pay your tithe. And God says, you see this? I love you too much to increase you. So that it does not destroy you. Are we together? I shared it, I think it was last week. That it, it, was, it was a statement I heard from a man of God. And the Lord reminded me again in my place of retreat. That there are certain people who cannot be trusted with deep spiritual things. Because they have not built capacity to manage the, the contentions in the spirit that come along with that level. There are levels of prosperity that when God gives you the kinds of attack that comes. Your prayer life, your word life and your spiritual stability cannot accommodate that level of lifting. So God's withdrawal of it is an act of his love for you. Are we together? The Bible says an heir, as long as he's a child, he said, differeth not from a slave. There is no difference, but he's under tutors and governors who mentor him until the time appointed for him to come into the fullness of sonship. So the question is, I watch people, and truly speaking, sometimes I, I, can, feel, I can feel the burden of God's frustration, if I use that word. While I minister to people. Because I know that their desires will not be answered. It's a very difficult thing as a man of God to pray for someone. You already know the prayer will not be answered. And yet you cannot tell the person because of this key. That the individuals have not sustained the ability to be trusted with that level of grace. 
there are men of God who desire superior levels of the anointing almost every week you see me leave this place maybe past 12 I've had a week long of activities just returning um, to Mzari and right here have another conference you know and all of that can you be that much of a servant when God gives you the anointing or will you now begin to merchandise the anointing and say you know that I'm busy and all of that those who have money join this queue those who are still trusting God join the other one can God trust you is God speaking to anyone man of God I want to be able to see in the spirit and hear in the spirit and then do what with the information that's my question what happens when God grants you access to the deep secrets of people? Do you have the psychological stability to sit under such classified information and be quiet? I want to become a great man of God. What do you do as you counsel people? As they open up their life, deep secrets that sometimes even as couples they do not know even as family members informations that only the individual and God and you being the next do you have the fortitude to be silent in the midst of plenty are we together let's be honest with ourselves and not turn God into a fool this trust is one of the greatest keys to seeing the outstretched arm of God there are people who cannot be trusted with certain levels of revelation. Can you be trusted with such depth of the prophetic and be in a meeting and you are seeing everything and then they give you a mic and then you can just come up and pray for one minute and regardless of what you are seeing, you drop the mic back and sit down. There is always that itch. I, I want to sit down but look, uh, I, Kai, I'm seeing something. Now, we will now add that carelessness to the revelation and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that is controlling all. The only thing he's sponsoring is the revelation. It is your flesh that is adding the lack of stability. But because you are flowing in the Spirit supposedly, everybody thinks it's the Holy Spirit that is responsible for all of the outcome. Can you be trusted? We need the anointing. But can you be trusted? Lord, I want my own house. I'm tired of rent. Can you be trusted with maintaining it as God's house? Lord, I want to be a kingdom financier. And then God says, you have 110,000. Empty it. And you say, I cast that voice. It can't be God. Abba. Something that I've said for how many months? And God says, and you, you are mentioning 100 million with no respect. You want to die? It's amazing how we do not think about the cost dimensions of the things we desire from God. We want it. Do you know why we want it? Because we hope that by acquiring things, it will change people's perceptions about us. So you are wearing a nice suit, we are wearing a nice this, so it will make someone look at you and respect you. No. Things were never supposed to be the basis of our confidence. Let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, not the value in his bank account, not the hair, not the shoe, not the clothes. My simple question before we begin to pray is, can God trust you? If you cannot answer this question tonight, then you deserve to go on a retreat. Hallelujah. There are so many families in need of children. The man is praying that God will give him a child. And you watch the way he's managing his wife. You watch the way he's managing the car. That's how you are going to manage a baby sent from heaven. And God says, no way. Can I trust you? You saw somebody's child and slapped the child as if just because the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It should not surprise you when a child is foolish. And you beat someone's child as if you are beating your age mate. And say, God, I'm waiting for my own. God says, no way. This is not how things come from heaven. You must be proven. Are we together?
you are staying in another man's rented apartment the water is leaking you don't care because you say it's not my apartment is that true everything is spoiling and you don't care i won't waste my money and then the lord is watching you and you are there prophesying and making a fool of yourself and saying one day i'll have my own and i will have tenants do you not know you are programming a harvest and god says for the sake of my mercy i will keep you at this level until you qualify by being trustworthy i have watched specific people enter certain dimensions they were not praying for simply because of trust i repeat myself brothers and sisters can god trust you with the anointing he got you filled with the holy spirit you are wasting the ministry of the holy spirit already and you want more power you are not utilizing the person of the holy spirit so what do you need the anointing for can you keep and maintain the anointing let me tell you this anointing you've heard me say it. the anointing is like a knife there is a way you hold it it can kill you the holder of it are we together have you seen people use a knife and injure themselves by mistake it wasn't the knife's fault it was something about the way you held it we desire the anointing and god wants to commit it but the question is can we be trusted can you be sleeping and god wakes you and says intercede for a b c for the next three hours and your own prayer request is not there can you carry out the anointing and have several challenges yourself and god does not even allow you to pray for them you are there praying for others do you have the fortitude to survive that hallelujah we need the anointing in our lives but can god trust us how about influence there are some of us who have lost precious people in our lives not physical death we've lost certain levels of influence because we could not manage it the bible says listen carefully it says that joseph when joseph was granted access to become the prime minister right paraphrasing that he was wise in his dealings he understood that he was not an egyptian and he made sure he kept attracting the favor of pharaoh to the point that pharaoh gave gifts and said go and give your father ask them to come hallelujah there are many people who pray for favor the man of god prophesies favor to your life and then um let me have someone come this brother is praying for favor are we together now please come pastor femi and he's praying lord give me access to pastor femi please stand here and this is this guy's prayer and he's just praying then a man of god standing representing the presence and the power of god prophesies may you find favor and the holy spirit plays his own role by bringing you to a place of influence see that and now this man is discussing with his fellows and just because you have access to favor to listen to their conversations you do not have the ability to keep yourself psychologically sound you go around and say these men are discussing one billion five billion and somebody says which one let me go and beg him let me tell you what the foolish beggar would do he says sir don't be offended you see that man he was discussing something that was attractive me my own is just rent of 120 and he said who told you and he points that he will give him the 120 and drive you that beggar has replaced your position because of foolishness the holy spirit answered your prayer lack of wisdom took you back to egypt are we together now there are people who sit among great people come as an act of favor and they hear people talking discussing politics god is blessing you instead of you to behave yourself wisely i'm showing you how not trustworthy many people are you listen to their conversations and later on you now run your mouth and say sorry sir i don't know who you are but sorry this thing you are saying 
the news i don't know which newspaper you follow but the one ah no now was it not efcc that did this thing and you are talking even hitting the person on the chest and then later they will tell you that person is the manager of what your father is looking for a job he's looking for a contract there and the person say who brought this small boy into this place they say drive him and let him never come again prayer answered foolishness reverses us back i really really want god to bless us are we together i won't lie to you if you are not trustworthy there are certain things that will be far from you anointing prosperity relationships influence i have seen men of god who go to the churches of other people and just because they have the anointing they do not have that ability to maintain trust you just move around and start speaking to everyone and say stand up you don't know which man of god is which stand up and say, stand up what am i seeing you are this uh, are you this and that and then you find out that this is an overseer somewhere probably they were considering inviting you and your foolishness locks a door that would have granted you access to meet your destiny helpers you must know how to behave yourself wisely signs and wonders is not just a charm that happens to people anyhow there is a protocol there is a system hallelujah praise the lord can you be trusted with relationships can you be trusted with valuable relationships advantageous connections can god bring people of influence in your life and then you don't become a parasite and a nuisance to them are we together now yes i've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy and blessed people god is my witness i never if we are in a restaurant with them i pay for it both myself and them i will fight to make sure that i don't allow that let me tell you what many of us will do we finish and say sahaba you that uh, you have this in me that so your boys are struggling and the man looks at you and says this guy is not an advantage to me go you see demons don't just walk anyhow they observe your weakness and build a fortification around it if your weakness is lack of wisdom that becomes their access point you can be delivered you can fall and rise our hearts are full of faith but many believers our heads are empty there's no strategy there is no wisdom so we are full of faith but we never rise strategically or we cannot maintain our lifting can god trust you with relationships are we together can god trust you with influence influence the ability to compel loyalty from people is a dangerous thing to be influential you know there's a statement on easy lies the head that wears the crown listen very carefully it's a miracle service the miracle has already happened are we together this that i'm giving you maybe second to salvation is one of the greatest miracles that is happening in this place this night then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture the system of god is something that we must study otherwise we will keep mocking and flattering ourselves with one testimony today never to have another one tomorrow and you see when your life is void of predictable results you will be angry you will be resentful you will begin to hate people you will look exactly like the man with one talent can god trust you with influence you have access to people you can say pastor femi go and remove this tie and bring it and he says yes sir take gentleman remove this your watch and give me god said it and he believes in the word of god upon you can you have the discipline to be shown his bank account and see one million and keep quiet not to say sir now that i've i've encouraged you please encourage me too and the man said i don't have anything he says it's not true you have five hundred and seventy eight thousand eighty nine kobo and they say it's true now that was not the holy ghost 
the gift was from God the use was from a mindset that has not been well constructed by God are we together he gave unto them five two one according to their abilities then he collected from one that had one I thought he would keep it to himself the goal was never to keep it to himself he gave the guy that now had ten to have eleven sometimes depletion in your life is not a message from Satan depletion in your life is a message from God to you that your stewardship is under attack are we together when resources begin to deplete mysteriously when relationships begin to deplete mysteriously when influence begins to deplete mysteriously it's not just a call to go and pray and bind it's the time to pray inquiry prayers lord what is going on why is it that i could call this woman yesterday and she would pick but now i am calling her and she's saying sorry i'm in a meeting why am i i mean the top five people who were channels of favor in my life are now too busy for me it's a message it's not just something no there must be a spirit oh, oh god i write a prayer point number one prayer point number two no let's be intelligent in our approach it is a message from god to you that you are something is wrong with your stewardship all of a sudden you go for a meeting and the power the grace and the glory of god does not flow you find out that there is a struggle with revelation it happens in one meeting you give an excuse that the people didn't fast it happens in another meeting you give an excuse that the sound was not very nice after five meetings go for a retreat quickly depletion is proof that your stewardship is being questioned from the realm of the spirit because the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter are we together i'm teaching you the systems of the kingdom when you see things that used to work in your life and all of a sudden in a succession not just one area of your life in a succession doors begin to close could it be that you are becoming the man with one talent This is the miracle that some of us need right now. I know some of us came believing that, look, it, it can't be. I was a millionaire 2004 and then now I'm going down and right now I don't even have up to 100,000 in my account. There must be a spirit. I know that apostle is going to speak one word. When I fall under the anointing and rise, that will be over. Listen, I don't want you to be frustrated. It could be that that withdrawal is God's mercy to you. He pegged you at a level. He rated you and saw the highest level where your stewardship was at his best and kept you there. Notice that there are certain blessings that come to us. No matter how much it reduces to reach a threshold and remains there. There are some people, let me use finances as an instance. They never cross 200,000. Give them 5 million. Something will happen but when it's now within the range of 200,000, it will remain in the account. It is the level you have been pegged in the spirit. As the level that will allow you become most faithful over God's resources. Are we together? Lord, I want to marry a man of God. And God says, can I trust you with the assignment I have given him? Not the influence he has. The assignment. Can you stand the persecution? Everybody calling you a witch, stupid woman. She's eating church money to buy shoe and still keep quiet and say, Lord, bless these members. Or will you be the reason members will leave the man of God's church and say, I love this man, but his wife is a stranger. Can you sit in the midst of great power and still go down on your knees before God? Or you will be conscious, ah, let me not kneel down before all these more children. Let them not think I'm... <clears throat> David danced before God. Danced before God. And the daughter of Saul, his wife, said, Abba, oh king, have you forgotten you are royalty? Don't, you are falling your hand. David said, I'm dancing before the God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave to me. While that discussion was going, God was listening. And she died not having a child. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Listen, I believe that one of the signs that God wants to produce in this ministry is a combination of strange levels of the anointing and strange levels of prosperity. These two dimensions, I really believe that God wants to bring it in a superior dimension in this house. But the question is, can God trust you? There are people who will stop going to church Stop going to the house of God If they have a house A car And maybe some, a few millions in the account Do you know That there are certain levels of increase Truly speaking That when you get to You will not have any personal prayer request again Really So what will you do with your prayer time What will the five hours in his presence Be spent for because now there seem to be legitimate reasons You can take every prayer request One one hour and before you know it is five hours Your pain keeps you there But what if the pain is taken away May God never give me anything He cannot take back It's my miracle service prayer for myself May God never give me any influence Any anointing Any access you know how children behave That you give them something and say give me back And they refuse That's how many of us are It belongs to him And any day and any time He makes demand of it Let it go in a heartbeat Abraham Take now thy son Thy only son Don't try to tell me he's the only one I know And I know you love him Rise up the mountain The Bible said Abraham got up early in the morning Carried Isaac and was on his way to go. Today we say Abraham's blessings are ours. And Jesus said, If ye be the children of Abraham, then you will do the works of Abraham. Sacrifice, death, it belongs to him. That if God commits the anointing to you, you will not go back home and begin to merchandise. And then when you hear your pastor of your local assembly preaching, you now say, look at this man. Here the nonsense is preaching. Misguided revelation, no power. What am I doing in this church? Open to the book of First ah! Kings chapter 4. That's where he's going. And you become like the man with the one talent. And then you find out the last meeting you went to is the last. Do you think you are anointed? Door suddenly close. Not all closed doors are demonic. God closes doors. He can shut it and no man can open, including a man of God. He shuts it to keep you. It is his way of bringing preservation so that you will not be lost. Hallelujah. Increase can bring pride. Money can bring pride. Anointing can bring pride You see, I've had the privilege of hosting God's anointing to a measure And I know what the anointing can do The anointing can turn you to become like a God Human beings can worship you if necessary It is up to you to not be foolish and rent your garment if need be And say, look, I know I'm divine but don't forget I'm human My dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion there are many of us who will not look for honor But when you get it and it's rising beyond the level you know should be You won't stop it It's still sin I know how far God has taken me And when I see human beings about to dehumanize themselves In the name of honoring the grace of God upon my life I must behave myself wisely to say no no You have honored me enough I get the message Don't go beyond this And God says I can trust you with more I was at Benny Hinn's meeting last week and while I sat down and I was just watching the man of God minister the grace, the power, the presence I said what level of trust did this man show God that granted him this level of grace with a single word brothers and sisters miracles were happening as though it was a charm 
rising from wheelchairs as if people as if they said everybody stand up casually and it was not an issue to him all the honor and the glamour there it didn't concern him at all when he got up and took the mic he was you could see his heart crying in the presence of god i said that's it that's a man who has met presidents he does not meet a president a president meets him and calls it a privilege and yet he can kneel down before god and roll like a child please let's learn a lesson tonight there is something about our understanding that is making our prayers look like it is not answered especially for those of us here who have come to receive the impartation you will get it this is not a thing of age this is not a thing of level it's a thing of alignment through knowledge hallelujah i have watched people with little honor and i've seen the way they have misused the grace of god given to them and this is the message god put in my heart to share with us shortly we are going to rise and we are going to be celebrating the hand of god here some of you who are coming here for the first time i'm sure you have followed online you have followed the teachings or you have heard testimonies of what god is doing with the man of god this is the man of god this is all of me so take now that you have seen me take your eyes away and trust the god of heaven to surprise you this is all Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. your place in my life not power not money not anointing not miracles not influence let me tell you if you can pass this test tonight then there is no limit to what god can do in your heart lift your voice and pray passionately to god thank you go ahead mm -hmm. 
Lord, I can't be trustworthy. Go ahead and pray. Walk on my heart. Walk on my tendencies. Walk on my heart. Walk on pride. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Pray from the depth of your heart. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Let it be your prayer. The miracle is already happening to you. Sing you out Capture My heart Come to My heart with your love It's the secret of the mighty hand of God upon a man You have And I, if I be lifted up If I be lifted up Not if Joshua Selman Not if Koinonia Thank God for the honor but if I be lifted up, then I will draw beyond revelation, beyond gimmicks. I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray and cry to God. Father, mercy upon my tendencies. My tendencies with money. My tendencies with pride. I cry. This is the miracle service happening to us already. Lift your voice and pray. Leave the issue of house and sickness. Pray. 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 <laughs> Forget about your business. Forget about ministry. Forget about all of these things. Just focus on yourself. Lord, make me trustworthy. Make me trustworthy. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? The next prayer point. Lord, every idol in my heart. Listen, allow me to say it first before you pray. Do you know what an idol is? It's something you cannot live without. Something that assumes the place of God. A job can be an idol. A wife can be an idol. A husband can be an idol. A boyfriend, a girlfriend, an uncle can be an idol. The government can be an idol. Revelation can be an idol. Bible study can be an idol. Even prayer can be an idol. When your attention leaves Jesus to prayer, idolatry is happening there subtly. You are more concerned about the motions than the contact with a real person. It's idolatry. Are we together? God wants to bless us. I came to pour my heart because I really want God to help us. Father, there are things in my life that it looks like I cannot do without them. Destroy that tendency in me. Whoever told you until your account is fat, you cannot sleep well. Who lied to you? Who made money such an idol? There are some of us, whether or not you need money, once there is nothing in your account, you can't sleep. Abba. Some of us will not be able to sleep because of marriage. When will the man come? When will the woman come? It's idolatry. I know you need a miracle in that regard. God will give it, but it's still idolatry. Lord, when will the ministry come? When will I start having ushers and peers around? And God says, I watch your heart. Idolatry. 
Lord, when will the anointing on apostle come upon my life so that I will also make a name so that this will happen? And God says, No way. You must be emptied of yourself. For the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Sing, Lord, I will bow. I will bow to you, to no other God but you, Lord. Lord, I will worship you. Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands have made. Nothing hands have made but you, Lord. I will lay down my idols. Come on, sing with me. And I will lay down my idols and props I have made and all that has taken my heart. Sing, Lord, I will bow. Lord, I will bow to you, to no other God. But you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Blessed is the man that God can find trustworthy. Hmm. Blessed is the woman. I'm telling you, you have not seen what God can do in your life till He finds you worthy of trust. You have not seen the kind of husband God can give until he finds you trustworthy you have not seen the kind of wife god can give until he finds you trustworthy you have not seen money you've not seen nothing i'm not talking business you have not seen sovereign wealth until god can trust your heart you've not seen influence and anointing you've not seen revelations yet until he can trust your heart we are praying don't mind the time God wants to deal with our life specifically. Please pray. Leave the miracles. They will happen in a moment. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all use all of me, keep all, all of me, you have my everything, anoint my everything, take my everything, I release my everything, you have everything, say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, take all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, all of me, use all of me, Lord. You have my everything. One more prayer and then I'll begin to minister. One last prayer from the depth of your heart. Lord, dethrone everything that is above you in my life. No matter what it is. I dare you to pray that prayer. Dethrone it. Whatever has found its way to rise above you. Dethrone it in my life. The quest for success. The appetite for influence. The pride of life. Vain glory in accomplishments. Dethrone it. 
that you be the Lord seated above and alone in a place guarded in my life by your jealousy. It's all of me. It's all of me. Take all of me, use all of me. Take all of me. Shalakata prakata selega de balada balada bo. Shaka ka paraka to sada brande gala kavya takosi ada bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that we have done the first things first, you can now pray and say, Father, now that I've given you my heart, let everything that mocks you in my life bow to your name tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Everything. If it's sickness, let it go. Please pray. Lord, I have come tonight. Take a take a lebakaria takata. Rakata Barun Beskalabaria Kata Broska de Belekata. Every oppression of darkness, let it be way right. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I'll be ministering will be very fast very fast it is very easy for the Holy Spirit to bring healing miracles deliverances to a life that is surrendered the problem is usually our hardness our hardness of heart makes it difficult difficult for God to find expression there are people gathered here under all kinds of strange influences carrying all kinds of devils one word i tell you is enough to set you free provided your heart is open it's not in the motions it's authority authority keep your hands lifted please just keep your hands lifted i'm just acting as the lord is leading me the anointing of the spirits upon my life now now the lord is asking me to count five at the fifth count please bring all the people under the anointing at the fifth count at the fifth count jesus i give you praise one two my goodness three four get ready now five i stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, there is a reason why I ask you to bring them out. The Lord is bringing strange miracles to people right now. Overflow one outside. I see mighty angelic activities there. Shabraketo salabariakata. Mamre eteke deko salaba subrega de galabala na bush shakatos kaparanda skakaprakatosia the authority of the king is in this place kalabaros sada barakatos shagres elekete bros kada barakata barosia na bala na ba asha barakatos sabria na bala na bala na ba there is an anointing that is coming on these people. This set of people, this is not deliverance. This is a there is an anointing, there is a kind of wine, there is a kind of oil that I'm seeing that is coming on this specific group of people. It's a strange level of grace and wine. You reign, you ancient Zion king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion King, Kadosh, Kadosh, my tree on your throne. Break forth, down fountains of the deep, 
and we've got all. You are mighty on your throne. Please lift your hands. I'm seeing written in the air revelation. The spirit of revelation. I don't know why God is starting this way. But I'm stretching my hands. There are people that are receiving a baptism of the spirit of revelation. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. At the count of three, let it be yours. One, two, three. Take it, it's yours. The spirit of revelation. Granted access to the deep things of the spirit. Access, access. Receive it, the gate is open. The gate is open in the spirit. Access, access. Access to the depths of the spirit. I give you eyes that see and ears that hear. Access to the deep things of the spirit. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. He is mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. Hallelujah. Now listen. The Lord is bringing deliverance to families. And hear me. This is the sign. I'm seeing people burning physical fire on them. It's like altars on fire. But physical individuals are becoming representatives of it. In the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands right now. That fire that brings deliverance. At the count of three, in the name of Jesus, I release it all over this place. One, two, three. Let that fire fall right now. Let that fire fall right now. I challenge thrones, dominions, the walls of darkness. Hallelujah. I want to pray there are spirits that are behind the undoing of many families there are spirits that are behind many infirmities there are spirits that are behind many predictable patterns are you ready for for total freedom not partial freedom that you come back tomorrow lift your hands now you are ready to shout Jesus something is happening in this place Listen, at the count of three, I want you to shout at the top of your voice. And in the name of Jesus, as you shout at the top of your voice, this family is under strange attack. This family, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare the foundation of evil in this family comes under judgment right now. In the name of Jesus, bring her out. Are you ready to shout? It's not a careless shout. Shout it with your might and your heart. And you watch what happens to the gates of hell. Lord, I pray that the force is tying down families. Tying down destinies. Tying down breakthroughs. In this year of signs and wonders. I pray that you arise, O oh God of Jeshurun. In the shout of your people. Let there be total deliverance. Are you ready at the count of three? One, two, three. Let there be deliverance right now. I cause devils. I cause spirits. I cause enchantments. Divination. Operations of witchcraft. All the overflow, those following online, I place a sanction on the works of darkness. Please lift your hands and pray. You are here in this place, and all you have seen in your life is closed doors. Closed doors closed doors. I'm about to speak to you by the Spirit. Closed doors. The anointing for open doors is about to be released on certain people now. Lord, where are they? In the name that is above all names. Anyone here under the influence of any closed door, I stretch my hands now. Take that grace. Take that
that grace for open doors. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Please help them. Take that grace. I open the doors. Doors of breakthrough. Doors of breakthrough. Doors of breakthrough. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to end. Please listen. We are flowing very fast for the sake of time. Listen for when your word comes. There are families that are tied with patterns. The same thing happens to everybody. Regardless of what geographic region they are. Almost graduating, they catch you from malpractice. Then something else happens to someone. Then something else happens. Someone wants to get married. After introduction, there is a problem. Another person has the same thing. They are called patterns. They are programmed by a covenant. But tonight, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, get set because fire is about to fall to break all kinds of patterns. Are you ready now? At the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above all names. And at the shout of that name, every pattern in every family both for you and your loved ones connecting by faith that there be liberty are you ready one two three i break patterns be broken now patterns be broken now ordinances that cause repetition be broken now open up the gates Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up, say, open up the gate? We are making a decree in the realm of the spirit. Open up the door. Will you open up the cage? Open up the cage. The cage. Open up the door. Hallelujah. Goodness. Bring that lady. This lady you are holding. Come. Hold on, don't worry, just keep her, I'll come down. As I stood there, I saw a very strange kind of oppression in this lady's family. And if we leave her to sit down there, you will think she's free, but it's not over. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.